Yo, 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 once again, we back. This with just a Messengers podcast. I'm Mo. I'm Mike. You know, once again, Do Work Media Mondays. We're just a Messengers Mondays. Got my dog Drew Money on the boards. Ah, 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 ah. How y'all feeling? Feeling great, feeling great, man. We, we, got, here, some, man. we got some special guests in the building, Long man. overdue, man. Well, hey, got my guys in here, man. man. Yeah, 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 oh, man. God, you know man. what it is, man. It's your boy, TC, one half of Holy City. What's up, people? It's Chris, man, one half of Holy City. Happy For to sure. be here. It's been a long time coming, so we finally got the chance. You know what I'm saying? We was running a few minutes late, but we made it. <laughs> That's all I love, man. That's all I love. Yeah, you feel me? So we had to pull up and make sure we definitely pulled up and show love to the people yeah sure. man it's been a, it's been a long time coming for this collab man um my niggas brought hats yeah they got they got hats yeah yeah yeah, 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 sir, yeah yes, man, sir. appreciate that from y'all man Had appreciate to, that it, man. yeah man sure. so um just just let the people know man what, what y'all doing how y'all you know come up and shit like that well you know um like i said we are holy city the brand holy city holy city shop on all social medias um just a brand outside of uh charleston south carolina um, we started about 2017, um, just grinding. First, it was just like a group of friends, just you know, moving together, draw, uh, you know, being fresh, getting clothes, mo no, uh, getting sneakers, just being around the city. You <laughs> know, what I'm saying go just back yeah, yeah, go back, just trying to stay fly. Um, after 2017, we kind of like, yo, we can make shirts, make a brand, just trying to expand the whole, you know, like I said, the brand outside of Charleston. Um, we was fortunate to move to Atlanta, um, start work, start school. And you know, get some good relationships in Atlanta and just build the network between the whole southeast. So just grinding, it's been a long time coming. Um, we got the clothes, the brand, the media on the way. Um, so it's gonna be a lot of content on the way. All right, so uh I'm gonna reiterate on that a little bit. He actually pushed the timeline up, but I'm gonna push it back a little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> okay, okay. what a lot of people don't know is, yeah, what a lot of people don't know is, man, our, our brand started off as Fly Die Nation. Fly Die. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I didn't off, even know that. Yeah, it started off as Fly Die Nation, but this is in the time of like the era of like, you know, like fly society and you know, everything was every, people were everything, everything was fly. fly. Everything you know was fly. So, yeah, shout so, out JT. Yeah, you feel yeah. what I'm saying? So <laughs> blog era type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So at that point in time, bro, it was more so like people were using planes and things like that for, you know what I'm saying, for everything fly. So we sat down and we tried to figure out like, yo, what could we use versus like using planes or like something that just significantly means fly. So we came up with the feather. So uh, originally it was our FODN logo and we had the feathers crossing, which a lot of people see. And um, it came to the point to where like, like he said, like 2016, 2017, where, you know, people asking what your clothing brand is, like Fly Die Nation is too many words. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we put out this Holy City design and people gravitated towards it. And it just came to the point to like people just started calling our brand Holy City. So he's like, you know what? Like, let's just drop the Fly Die Nation and just rock out with the Holy City joint. And from there, we started pushing out. So before, like he said, uh, it was Fly Die Nation. Um, it started off as just like, the homies, we just was getting fly. We was like, yo, we want to do something, you know what I'm saying, and, and put everybody in it. So it started off as that. We started getting some tees printed, and it kind of took off from there, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. So when y'all started, and you know, because they usually always say the first year is kind of like, or the first two or three, what was that timeline for y'all as being, you know, um, like, yeah, man, this shit, this shit tough, but... Y'all had that moment where the breakthrough, like where in that timeline was, or how long was that timeline period to the breakthrough? Man, if I'm really being honest, we still ain't breakthrough yet. Okay. If I, okay. If I have to really be honest, right, you right. feel what I'm saying? But as far as like us first starting out, man, <clears throat> uh, there was so much time, energy, and money wasted. Well, I can't necessarily say wasted because we still was trying to figure out things, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But there definitely was a lot of steps that we took that we probably shouldn't have took and money that we spent that we probably didn't have to spend on, you know what I'm saying, excess materials. Yeah. Uh, and this is kind of era when cut and sew was kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. cut and sew was expensive, you know what I'm saying? That's like fuck. you paying like, <laughs> I can't really remember what it was, but like yeah, cut and sew with months. the sublimation, bro. Like I remember we had a Next Level t-shirt and... um Bro, I think that shirt might have almost cost us like. Like that one shirt was like costing us almost five hundred to make. Literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. like literally Just to make like twenty four, yeah. twenty five. You know what I'm saying? So like we had to get down to like what was cost effective for us and what people really liked. Yeah. So like I said, when that Holy City design came out, we figured out like, yo, that's what people really like. So we can kind of just not fall back on our other designs, but 
let's focus on that and get the brand. Just scale it down. Yeah, yeah, literally scaling it it's down. All get to a it's get to a consistency basis. Yeah, basically. so I'm gonna say, man, it, it kind of started turning around like 2017, 2018, and this is when we dropped our uh, our Holy City snapbacks. Mm -hmm. This is in the snapback era, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So like, people started grabbing the Holy City snapbacks, and that kind of like what uh, pushed our brand to the forefront versus like the shirts, like. People love the shirts, but people love the hats. You know what I'm saying? So we just been moving like that. So I definitely say our breakthrough was like 2017, 2018, but then definitely within like really in the pandemic, man, like shit picked up. Like I guess people was just in the crib. We had like sweatsuits and things like that that people could be comfortable in. So people started rocking with us more then. Um, and then also working out of the studio in Atlanta. Um, TC is the manager of Mean Streets. If y'all ever in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? This is the boss holla at him. But uh, we pretty much get all, our all of our merch out of there, man, between, like, artists that come through there, um, producers, managers, label mates, anybody come through there. So right. that's mainly um, how we get our clothes and things out now versus hand-to-hand -hand versus online sales. Like, a lot of people, they're big on online sales. Like, our online sales are, are small, but hand-to-hand -hand sales and people seeing our yeah. things – they want it, man. So. I would assume that's a, that transaction got to feel different versus, you know, of course, you want the online sales too, but actually having that. Because you could build a, a relationship through the hand-to-hand -hand transaction. Absolutely. Yeah, me that's personally, man, like I always feel, uh, uh, me personally always feel like um, as far as getting to speak with somebody face-to-face -face and speaking to them about our brand, it gives them a better sense of awareness and, and like once they yeah. really understand it's what it is coming experience. out of your mouth, you yeah. know what I'm saying, versus just seeing it and, and speaking about it, but actually telling someone your story, they like, okay, I really rock out with this. So, mm -hmm. now nah, first it was, um, you know, we try to establish a strong online presence first, but just like how people are coming out the pandemic now, it's so important to be that hand to hand contact. It's so important just to build a brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, like. I used to be like, oh, we online only, don't want to do pop-ups. But once we did a few pop-ups, we like, the effectiveness of the hand-to-hand -hand and really touching the people and people understanding the story, it goes, it, it goes, it stretched out way further than the online presence. It's good to have an online presence, but that hand-to-hand -hand is nothing matched to that. You know what I'm saying? Just um, just to tell an old story, like he said, just coming up, um, it started off uh, FODN, and it was like the whole blog and Tumblr era. So the Tumblr, our Tumblr became yeah. a little bit popular. That's what really got us in motion because first it was just like we a group and then our Tumblr kind of built a brand of like that's Fly the Nation. People started to check in. I actually uh, ended up getting a relationship with ASAP Yams because of Tumblr. People, that's yeah, that's yeah. like a story people don't know. Um, end up having a little relationship with him, just being cool. That's my 40 ounce Vans and um, Ounce bounce and yeah. ounce bands had the snap, everything the on, had it on like, yeah, lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. was like, oh man, how we get it? Like that's how how we get a piece of this. So that's like a little story that kind of helped this transition too. Um, and then, like you said, Mean Street Studios, we got a relationship with. Um, we was fortunate. I started off interning at Mean Streets under DJ Drama, interning for a long time. Um, we had FODN, and then that's when uh, we ended up getting a relationship with Nipsey because Nipsey used to record at DJ Drama Studio. Right. And we were still FODN. We was like, man, we we wasn't really doing nothing with it. But then that's when the whole the marathon came and everything like that. So that's where our relationship with Nipsey coming because he kind of like helped us continue. We was like, man, we don't know what to do. But he had the Crenshaw shirts. And then that's kind of inspired us to make Holy City shirts um, based out the city. Because, you know, Charleston, the nickname is Holy City, if you didn't know. Mm -hmm. right, you know right. what I'm saying? So we wanted to show love with that everywhere we go. People can rap Holy City. You know what I'm saying? I just want just want to get this on the record, man. You know what I'm saying? People may not know, but prior to my knowledge of us putting out the Holy City shirt, I had maybe only heard somebody say Holy City, you know what I'm saying, a couple times. But at this point in time, Mo, you know this. I feel like my star colors were shit. Mo, it was Port City, bro. It was Port City. People was calling the Port City. And you know, like, I wasn't born here, but shit, I'm raised here. You feel what I'm saying? Like, all my family is here, so, you know, I rep this but I do want to go on record and say I didn't see nothing Holy City prior to us, bro. Like now, you ride around the city, it's Holy City pressure washing, it's Holy yeah. City painting. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot. It's of Holy like, City yeah. ducks, it's Holy City flowers. They got like, Holy City donuts. To shop Holy City yeah, donuts, yeah, yeah. bro. It's everything. I mean, and that's love. But I look at it like, yo, like I also look at it like we kind of missed the wave. 
but we also missed the way because we didn't live here anymore. You know what I'm saying? I also feel like we would have been more grounded and rooted in the city if we lived here. When did y'all when did y'all move? Man, so we've me personally, I've moved to Atlanta three different times. I literally originally moved there in 09. I came back in 2012 and I came back in 2014 and I've been there since then. Um I think your first time moving was out there in 2010. 2010. Yeah, same thing. So, like, um, that was another thing, too, bro. So, like, we've been kind of like, um, how, can I, how can I say this? Uh, like, spreading ourselves because um, we're in Atlanta and people love the Holy Spirit right. in Atlanta. And they don't even necessarily know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then once we explain it to them, people, oh, they're like, damn, I fuck with it. And then what you find out, too, having a conversation with people about our clothing brand is... A lot of people have family from South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Like lot, not, and not just it's a, a lot, lot of roots. A lot of yes, roots here. Bro, like, yeah. Yes, bro. Yeah. Like yes, and not just South Carolina. Like I met somebody maybe like a week ago, and they family was from Sumter, and I'm like, damn, like small as hell. Small world. Small mm. world, bro. I'm really say like within the past like two years, I've literally met so many people that I know about Charleston, have yeah. family from Charleston, or either come to Charleston yeah. and you travel. You really be surprised how yeah. many people roots for trace real, back to real, South bro. Carolina. For real, bro. Real. I don't know if y'all remember um, a few episodes back I had spoke about um, finding out that my great, great, great grandfather was a slave down here actually on one of the plantations. Yeah. Uh, Man, my, uh, bro, my grandmother, my grandfather picked cotton, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah and, they, and they 70 something years old. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So we not far from that shit at all. No, like, we not. We just said, did we say that last bro, week? Literally, like yeah. my great grandmother, bro. Like she. Some people are like a couple generations from it. Like, bro, listen, yeah. like my they great grandmother. They were still picking, they were still picking cotton like sometime after that, bro. Hell yeah, That was bro. still a thing. Hell yeah, bro. Definitely. Like I said, my grandmother lived on, um, like lived on this white man's land and that's how, they, that's what they did. Like they okay. picked cotton and that's how they survived. Like they lived on his land and shit like that. So we're not far from right. that, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like once our grandparents' generation passed, maybe that shit would kind of fall off. But other than that, bro, like that shit still instilled in me. Like, so I know what's going on. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? So, that's what's yeah. up. That's what's up. So, as far as the branding itself, you know, y'all, the origin, of course, as far as the product is hats, correct? Mm -hmm. And then y'all make t-shirts as well. Correct, correct. And then, so are y'all even looking to um, expand even more or like what, what's the what's the next vision? Yeah, we've definitely been looking into expanding, man. Um, and more so to even just not just be t-shirt brace band. Like we want to brand everything when it comes to TC's working on production um, we actually working on getting some sports teams under our belts. Um, That's what's up, man. Yeah, man. I'm trying to get into the basketball. I got a couple homies that are uh, that are coaches. Um, some are, are doing everything, man. So we trying to just spread the line and do everything. Like last year, we had a uh, we had a Holy City yeah, um, basketball team with um, High Star. Was it High Star? Or, um, it was uh, the 2020 league. The 2020, 2020 league. league. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. yeah, shout yeah. out to 2020 league, man. They gave us the opportunity to. Uh, be able to sponsor something last year. We missed it this year, but yeah, man, we just trying to really just uh just put it just put it out there to the forefront, man. Um, like we getting older now, so it's more so we're doing everything um black and white instead of just you know what I'm saying just being out here just like yo let's do this let's do this let's do this. We're trying yeah, you going to it with a plan exactly yeah. exactly. So um, I kind of I kind of look at it like. Anything else, like whether it be cash money or quality control, like they started off as this was their foundation music, mm -hmm. and then you know they got they got uh, football players, basketball mm -hmm. players, and shit exactly. like that. Y'all very well could do something like that as Literally, well, man. Bro. It's all about having. I'm all about some. I'm all about people having the biggest confidence in themselves, man, and believing that you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to, dog. Like if you if you want to, nobody people will probably be like, damn, like I remember when them dudes was just making hats. Mm -hmm. Now nah, they got like a whole Amazon type shit going on. Sure, they, got, sure. they got a whole That's type of shit. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And coming back here, man, it always puts the battery in my back because as soon as we come back, like I said, like most of our, our stuff is hand to hand sales. So a lot of people in Charleston don't get our stuff. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's like through one of our homies or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, ship me this. So a lot of people don't really get our stuff in Charleston unless it's hand to hand sales versus us being in Atlanta. So when we come back to Charleston, like, I got family that live in Myrtle Beach. I got family, like, I was just in Harleyville last night at my grandmother's crib. Like, I got people down there, like, yo, where the clothes at? Like, da 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 I'm like, bro, I got y'all, but it'd be so different being in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, like a lot of people down here, like, they don't want to buy stuff online. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they like, yo, I want to, 
I want to buy my joint in person. For, like, for, as pull big up. As, for as big as online shopping is right now, you'd be surprised how many people still prefer like the you know the hand to hand. Literally, bro. bro. Literally, bro. So it's still a it's still a work in progress for certain. Yeah, areas. like you you run into people you're like yo, I don't have a debit card. Like yo, how you don't have a debit card to yeah, buy something online? You feel what I'm saying? But, that, but yeah. you feel what I'm saying? So that's why I'm like yo. We but if we had uh like TC's been out here for like the past month and stuff dealing with situation and everything. You know what I'm saying? So. Our sales is boosted because he's been out here. So we mm-hmm. like, yo, we may need to even come out here once a month or or throw a pop up shop here. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like every quarter to to really like put the put the put our feet on the ground here versus it just being in Atlanta and just coming back every now and then. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's up, man. So I wanna I wanna ask y'all in terms of um, as you continue to grow and like y'all have those, you know, you talk about the hand to hand transactions. Has there been any artists? That y'all came across that um basically just ripped your brand or just you know gave y'all words of encouragement. And of course, everybody has that moment throughout their timeline where they come across a you know a, a figure or somebody who was um motivational. Correct. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, definitely. Like I said earlier, Nipsey was definitely one of our huge uh, inspiration. He just said, "Keep going." He don't want to establish the that marathon. marathon theme. That marathon theme is real. Like if yeah. you don't quit, keep working. Like. That's why I tell everybody out here, everybody that got brands or doing anything, keep working because that door is going to open up. Like, like y'all guys, it's been a marathon. People know. It's a yeah, lot of yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. a lot of episodes. People put in that work. So just continuing working, doing things is really helping. Um, Nipsey was like an inspiration. Drama, of course, is an inspiration. Saying keep going. Um, what it was is we had to, I kind of just fell back and kind of just put my head down and work in this music thing because the music shit is crazy. Yeah, no, it is. I've seen you, though. You be moving. Man, <laughs> this music thing is crazy, so I had to figure that out first before anything and lock that in so it can help us get bigger and better. So once I got that established, like I said, it's crazy. I had to lock and make sure my ten toes down and I had to press people like, yo, I'm here to stay. And once I locked that in, we here. So there's a lot of artists that coming in now recognizing like, oh, this your hat? Oh, that's your shirt? Oh, let me get that. I'm messing with you. Got the young cats. Got like little Tyler rocking with us. Yeah. Um, he's somebody that's came in right now. Of course, I know Uzi. Uzi crazy. He just a crazy person. So, you know, what I'm saying him get, just getting love behind the scenes is cool. Yeah, he done brought y'all shit a few times. Yeah, early though. Yeah, early. early, like early, I got, early. I got, early. Like, I got like baby Uzi yeah, in the pick. Early. Yeah, yeah. Fact. <laughs> so early, like, yeah, yeah. fact. So like, that's the little bro for real. So just meeting people out there and just learning from them how they go hard. Like a lot of people don't know these artists do go hard in the studio, do certain things to get with them. They crazy. But they do work hard, so a lot of people don't. Uh, if a lot of people don't understand that, though, for sure. Yeah, that's what's up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so one other thing I just wanted. So TC works in the studio, man. You know, he's there eighty percent of his his day. I don't necessarily do anything around music. Like I have my own things going on. So, um, we meet different types of people in different lanes. So like, uh, just for since like a uh, little homie from BMF, um, Jason. He lives in my building, so I ran into him a couple times. And I'm like, yo, I know you from somewhere. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm from BMF. I'm like, yo. So I gave him some hats, man, and I literally just saw him the other day. He's like, bro, I need more. I love these shits. He's yeah. like, bro, like, That's what's everywhere up. I go, I love these shits. Like, I walk into the club one night, and he's in the section with the hat on. You know what I'm saying? So it's to the point to where, like, P- TC knows people that I don't know. I know people that he doesn't know. So, like, we could be randomly around the city, and I'll see somebody with my hat on. And I'd be like, <laughs> I send a pic like, yo, you know who this is? Yeah. Or like somebody hit us like, yo, you see it? Or like, even like, uh, like it just be weird, man. I'd be like, nah, I don't know who it is. Oh, or like, they probably know TC. So it worked out like that, man. So yeah, recently I just got a text like, yo, he's like, yo, my, my homegirl that worked with Julio Jones, he's like, yo, he can't stop wearing the hat. He need more. Like this is like two days ago. So people starting to really like, he's like, yo, th- all he do is wear that hat. It don't matter what he wearing, he putting on the hat. So that feeling just feels good and just reassurance that people really rocking with the brand don't got to know who it is. If it's a good product, a good look, people going to really rock with it. That's what, like, I'll be trying to tell people that want to start clothing brands and do little things. Make sure the quality is there. Make sure the design is A1. Because you can do whatever you want to do. If it, the quality, quality is there. Quality can't be sacrificed. 
And if the look is there, it's gonna run, bro. You don't gotta do much. Once it, you know, like I say, it's like crack. If it's good, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if it's gas, you get the gas. Man, show you the gas, man. Yeah. Yeah. It look like the gas. You, like, yeah. listen, that's yeah. the side. I'm getting the side. I don't want no med, man. Yeah. You know Drew, what I'm saying? Drew, so, you got yeah. Yeah. so, word. So that's been the, the really what's been going on right now. But it's a lot of pop ups on the way in Charleston. A lot of movements on the way in Charleston. And then, like he said, man, we expand into the studios. I got a lot of content coming on the way. Just establishing, like, how y'all got kind of like a production team and everything on my side. I got that. I've been kind of on behind the scenes a little bit, but it's time for TC to pop out a little bit this year in the following years for sure. Hell yeah, yeah. nigga. Um, so I just want to say, like, big up to both of y'all, boy, because I've I known you for a very long time <laughs> in the club. club <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Club day, club history, yeah. I ain't lying. <laughs> but it's, it's just good to see, you know, you guys really doing this thing and and well not even that having the belief in yourselves and believing in your dreams and pursuing your dreams so with that being said what is it like one thing that you will say um you would tell your younger self like those club days and stuff like that what would you tell yourself um you know to really uplift yourself like take us back to that time of like because this is it you had to look at it to be like, yo, I got to get out of Charleston to really expand because some people don't really see that. Like, you get you get stuck in that motion of everyday life, and then it's like, fuck, what do I do? You feel stuck. So then, you know, so let's let's take us down that road if you don't mind. Yeah, no, nah, facts, man. Listen, it's tough. I'll be trying to, um, one, I would say it's a marathon, of mm -hmm. course. Be patient and don't, don't beat yourself up because there's a lot of days where I was like, man, I don't even know if this even matters no more. I don't know if I should do it. Um, it's tough. It's like I should just focus on one thing, get my, like, forget a dream, what I want to do. Let me just focus on this to make sure my life is what I want to be. But listen, it's, it takes sacrifice. That's one thing. You got to sacrifice. Do it early. Take a risk. It don't got to be a street risk. It don't got to be, you know what I mean, drug risk. It got to be certain risks, but take that risk. And then um, second is just um, – as far as leaving Charleston, I'm half and half on that. I, a long time, I didn't want to leave Charleston. That was the one thing. I didn't want to leave Charleston. I was like, yo, we got to do it here, got to do it here. But you got to recognize where you at and how you can help. Sometimes you got to leave, come back, get stronger, then come help the people. So, you know, Atlanta's right there four hours away. You know what I'm saying? If you can't get to New York or L.A., it's a good place to go, establish relationships, boss up, get your money, and come back and help the community here because, you know, the community here needs to grow, so it's gonna take a whole community effort to get it where it needs to be. Right. That's why I like what's going on right now. People are working hard, brands, media, and everything, trying to tap in. If everybody work together, it's gonna to be a media outlet. Um, we were just talking like everybody roots. A lot of people roots. I mean, cause going to Atlanta, other places. A lot of people roots are from South Carolina. They might not want to say it. They might not. They probably held that's it in. That's facts. That's facts. I'm like, so you originally from Carolina? Everybody, I'm like, you originally from Carolina? People are like, yo, yo. And I say I'm from like Carolina. They be like, "Yo, me too." Uh, uh. It's a lot of producers. Now it's cool to say from. Now it's cool yeah, yeah. to say from Carolina. Yeah. People was hiding like people was really hiding <laughs> the fact. People are not from Atlanta. I get their background. They're from Columbia. They're from uh, Sumter. They're from Greenville. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, I see what's going on now. But like, Carolina strong. We from Carolina, so it's a beautiful thing that's happening. If we keep pushing, it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be. Listen, the next four or five years, we got actors, you got rappers, you got producers, you got. A, we keep. We keep sending niggas to the NFL. Listen, like, that's, or that's, now that's sports become like a, a regular thing now. Like in about sure. next two years, we are gonna talk about that sports. Who dominating sports? The Carolina boys. Nah, There's a lot of rings coming to the city, but we are gonna talk about that later. <laughs> you pretty. You pretty much got it off, bro. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He pretty much got everything off, man. But uh, like he said, it's a marathon, bro. Um, I would have never even moved to Atlanta if it wasn't for TC. He probably don't realize that, or a lot of people don't know that, man. 2009, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. All of them was at Trident, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People had them went to school, we was real all schools and shit like that. So I'm in limbo, bro. Like, I'm in high school thinking sports is going to take me there, you feel what I'm saying? But I ain't have my head right as far as my grades. So they in Trident, I'm going to work. I'm like, yo, I got to figure out something to do. He like, bro, what you want to do? I'm like. I want to do something with clothes, bro, but I don't know what I want to do. He's like, yo, look into the Art Institute. Boom, I got signed up for the Art Institute, went to the Art Institute, and that's how the clothing brand shit really started. Like, mm -hmm. The clothing brand shit was originally my dream, mm -hmm. and my guy, my best friend, he hopped on and piggybacked, and, we, and you know, we took that shit to the moon. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but like I said, it's, 
it's definitely a marathon, man. Um, we've had times to where like we was like, man, fuck this shit, be just because life was lifing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. yeah. life was lifing, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we in the middle of our life trying to just figure out. We like, yeah. man, nigga, we trying to survive. We trying to eat. Like right. Right. this clothing brand shit is not what it is. And then you'll have somebody call you like, bro, I need some shirts or something. You'd be like, damn, like it's to the point to where we can't stop yeah. now because. Can't stop. <laughs> People's always looking for it, and I literally, I literally can't come to South Carolina, bro, without somebody asking me about you that. Got shit. You, you got to, got to, like, literally, like. And so my cousins, I have a joke. Be like, yeah, man, I still ain't got that shirt yet, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like shit, I have to hit TC. You got people that be like, bro, I tried to hit TC, and then they'll hit me. So it's kind of like, but for the people out there, man, I just want to say, like, yo, we're gonna get on our ground and, and be better at this, and, and really do our thing, and really push it to the max to what people know what we can do and see the potential that we have in ourselves and really get on it and big really up. take this shit to the moon. Hell yeah. Wow. Big up, big yeah, up. Yeah, you never know. You, oh, Drew, my bad. You yeah, I was just about to say, um, how big is it on, on as your uh, company, to get clothing to people who order online? How, like, how fast shipping is? Because shipping is a big thing. I feel like everybody wants their stuff. As soon as you buy it, they really want it right then. <laughs> That's the Amazon effect. Right. <laughs> right. So, I'm a, so I'm going to be completely real. Be completely real about this. We're bad at it. I wouldn't okay. even lie to you. Okay. But we're getting better at it. I'm, we're getting better at okay. it. You know what I'm saying? Respect. Like, Y'all, y'all give me my ski mask quick as hell, though. I ain't All right, so, I'm, oh, no, so what I'm saying is it's not everything. <laughs> yeah. It's not everything. It's not, it's, yeah, but we have, saying, though, you know what I'm saying? We have had some problems with people, you know what I'm saying? Like, because a lot of times, like, by the time you order it, bro, so our hand-to-hand sales go faster. So if somebody wants it right then and there and we got it, we're getting it off. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And then we might see that online sell. Another thing is, too, we don't we don't flood ourselves with products. Like, right. we may do a run of 24 to 48 products sell them joints off and then yeah, get some up. more you know what i'm saying yeah. just because in the beginning of this we spent so much money and wasted so much money like yo let's get 100 pieces yeah. mm-hmm. get 100 pieces for what now for real you gotta scale yeah. to what, what you but I'm you're saying? being realistic with yourself being and that's yeah with like you like, just get 100 pieces yeah. for what yeah. like we sit in there and we move in 12 13 and we got all of these other sizes and then another thing too we had to figure out to what our target audience was as far as like what's the sizes that the size that matters the most so like our top selling size now is small medium large it ain't really too many people buying xls you know what i'm saying like we got homies be like yo bro i need a 3x or a 2x i'm like like yo we could get that shit made for you but just off the riff we not making it because it's not priority size niggas not buying two three xts off rip you know what i'm saying so just to piggyback off him and just uh I try to tell people, listen, man, you for that that Yeezy, for that Hellstar, for that Palm Angels, you waiting, right? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm, and I know you waiting. I, I I know you waiting, two weeks, three weeks, even longer to get your stuff. A lot of things like how Yeezy be be pre orders or made to order. I like to try to tell people if I can, or on the website, I like to tell people at least give me three to five days just to ship it. That way, it can give me some production time. If it's a big order, like he said, it might take a while. So. It, it's the Amazon effect. Some people want it next day. Mm-hmm. People gotta be realistic with the clothes. It's never gonna be next day or mm-hmm. ASAP unless it's Sheen or we or, or fast, or fast, fast, shit, or fast shit. fashion. Shit, even mental on this. I get, I got, I got next day one time. Right, yeah. that shit came two days later. Yeah. Like, right. I'm, not, I'm not doing this next day air option. It's still gonna be so. I just all the customers, everybody, all the fans, be patient. It's gonna come to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, we got to scale it to... Sometimes we post something online, we might have 50 or 100 pieces, and it goes. We like, oh, shit, I didn't know it was going to hit like that. Yeah. So you're like, oh, it's sold out. we like, oh, we got to make a new order, and it takes two weeks to get the order in production. Yeah. So that's why... It might be a little a week, or uh, might be a week or a couple of days before you get your stuff, but it's on the way. And I'm glad, I'm glad you got that mindset of um, y'all wait for Yeezy or you wait for Nike or you wait for Adidas. Because like, facts. Don't don't dumb yourself down because of these other big brands. Because eventually, like you see yourself at that level one day. So yeah. people got to understand, like bro, like I treat this shit just like how I would treat Nike or how I treat Adidas. Yeah, you're holy city, but it's a respect thing. And you got to see yourself like that because if you don't see yourself like that, you'll just let that go by the wayside. And then every time you order, people will be like, well, you know, I could get on them about it because, no, you got to tell them, like, hey, bro, like, you will wait for them slides or you will wait for that. You see what I'm saying? But uh, that also comes, like I was saying, we had to scale ourselves back because we was having so much product 
and we're just sitting on stuff. So he's like, bro, we're not going to be, because this is our money that's coming out yeah. of pocket. We ain't take out no loan. We don't got nobody giving us the bread. So it's literally our money that's going into this. So when we buy in 100 pieces and 20 of them sell, we sitting on 80 yeah. pieces, you know what I'm saying? And that's bread that we could have kept in our pocket to pay our bills and stuff like that. For so sure. versus, so I just want people to just, you know, kind of, kind of take that into into uh into consideration for us like we're not a big major brand to where like yo we have a warehouse to where like soon as you order this shit we could push Boom, that shit out push it right out yeah, yeah so yeah. we still building so i just ask people to you know what i'm saying just give us some time and, and work with us and we res- thank y'all for y'all business man and give niggas the same grace y'all give palm yeah, angels for sure yeah, that's for sure, all sure. For sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. i think the biggest thing i think about i like about you guys right here is y'all keeping this shit 1000 for the listeners and I appreciate that because some people will sit here and be like man yeah we we the fastest niggas we get it to you right then two days three days you don't gotta worry yeah. about that but realistically these guys are out here and putting in the work and you see it right here you see the names that are rocking with them in general but that's just because that's coming from a, a loving heart and you this is your baby you know what I mean like y'all really want to see this grow into something beautiful but TC for you you know that's a lot of shoes to fill you know what I mean production and clothing company and sound like me over here you know what i mean like it sounds a lot like me a lot of shoes to fill but yeah for sure man and so when do you find time for yourself and what is something that you do like when you when you take time for yourself what's something that you enjoy doing man i had to i had to learn to take time for myself when i take time for myself i'm don't i'll be by myself i distance myself from everybody people be like yo you're weird sometimes but i just need some alone time because you know I help people too, so like my role in the um, studio and then generation now, I help. I'm a creative director over there, but and studio manager, but I help people a lot. I help people get their studio sessions. I help people get what they need for the studios, engineers, uh, producers. I just help people get they everything right so they can have calmness in the studio. So a lot of times I'm helping people. So when I want my alone time, it's my alone time. You yeah. feel me? So you I'm like, man, listen, because I get calls every day. Yeah. Gotta reset. My phone. So I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, yo, let me just fall back, have my own time. I like to be each other, crib, play video games, the whole night. But um, like you said, it's a lot of hats. So I'm getting better. I have some interns now. We're getting our production a little bit better. Um, Like he said, like it'd be me. Somebody order something, I'm folding it up. Um, I'm putting a sticker on it. I'm making cars in it, and I'm taking it to the UPS or, or or wherever I need to ship. So it's been a one man, a whole like not one man, excuse me, a whole team, just us two. We got like two other people that help us. Um, but we grown. We got I got interns right now helping. So that's why the production's getting better. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. that's one thing. But like you said, it's just it's been tough. But I learned these past few years just to get time for myself. And breathe and just have time for my friends, you know what I'm saying? Um, my little nephew and all that. Just to take time, man. You really got to have that time because that burnout is real. Oh, sure. I almost yeah, experienced that. That burnout is real. So breathe a little bit. Have your peace. Don't have no girls barking on you one day at a time. Just chill, you know? Facts. Yeah, facts. 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 For sure. for real. And for you? Nah, he definitely burnt himself out, bro. <laughs> Not even gonna lie. <laughs> this man burns himself out, right? Like, <laughs> this man burns himself out, bro. Like, and I'm like, I'm a type of person like, bro, like when I call, pick up the phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm not just calling for no reason. Right, cause right. I feel if niggas call me, I'm picking up the phone. Facts. Yeah. I'll be on this nigga ass, like, bro, you acting like a weirdo right now. Why you not picking up the phone? <laughs> he be like, bro, I just was at the studio for three days, bro. I just in the crib chilling. I'd be like, all right, but I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Three days straight. And I understand you feel what I'm saying? Literally, bro, like, you call him, three o'clock in the morning, he's at the studio. I wake up 7 a.m. every day, you know what I'm saying? I'm up with my son, so, like, I know not to hit him until, like, 10, 11 o'clock, and then that may. So, like I said, yeah. calling him today at 9 o'clock was a stretch. I'm like, bro, I'm blowing him up. Like, <laughs> I'm blowing him up. I'm telling him, like, yo, I just called him. Like, hopefully we can get there, man. But, um, like, this man, he definitely does everything he says he does, bro. And uh, he definitely doesn't get the praise that he should for the things that he does do. Um, he's he's a jack of all trades, man. Um, music production and versatile with it. Versatile with it, man. And like he said, nine times out of ten, he's he's actually probably helping someone else versus doing something for himself. Mm. So it's different when you burning yourself out doing something for yourself, mm-hmm. and then burning yourself out doing yourself for, for someone else. So right. he had to kind of figure out that balance of all right, I can't give myself to everybody pause you know what i'm saying 
and kind of like scale myself down. So I, I definitely saw a change in him within the past couple months about as far as like getting on this Holy City shit versus, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's, it's real life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody's dealing with real life. Um, I got a kid, you know what I'm saying? A family. Shit, he got a family and things he's dealing with. So like as we're getting older, the clothing brand kind of like came down the the totem, the totem pole a little bit as far as like, you know what I'm saying? Like things that we have to like do. Priorities. Like priorities. Priorities, mm-hmm. you feel what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I guess that's, we're getting better at it, man. So like I said, I don't want to just keep rainy rain on, but we no, definitely I'm... getting better at our production. We're definitely mm-hmm. getting better. So within the next year or two, like I definitely hope people to, to see our brand and to see like, yo, they, they did what they said they was going to do. And you know what I'm saying? And just have all positive talk. Um, I don't really, I don't never hear anything bad about us, you know what I'm saying, or as far as bad as about our brand. Like I said, the only thing I did hear bad is our shipping times, and I'll be 100 with you, and we done got on each other about that. I'm like, bro, somebody in the DMs, bro, like he's saying, yeah. and he's like, yo, he's hitting us about it. So, like, mm-hmm. we done had a couple of growing pains. Yeah, yeah, it's growing pains, you know what I'm saying? It's all about balance. It's more so staying on top of each other as well, too, versus just being like, bro, when you going to ship them hats out? I'm being like, bro. You gotta go ship those hats out today. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like them joints gotta go. So we definitely been on it better, man. Um, yeah, bro. That that was gonna be my next question. So how are those in course in business? You're gonna have that that moment where y'all gotta have that sit down and talk to each other. Like mm-hmm. you know, friendship aside, mm-hmm. business, and you're like very firm, stern, hot. Mm-hmm. What was that moment for both of y'all that you know what, bro? We gonna have to have this face to face. We gonna have to have this conversation. And how did it help y'all grow? Uh, um, if I had to look, bro, I'm going to say, I'm going to say like 2019, 2020, because, uh, um, just separately, both of our lives were in a position to where kind of like we were, we weren't stable. You know what I'm saying? Like our lives weren't stable. So we kind of had to have a talk with each other. Like, listen, bro, like if we want to get to this next level, like we got to sturdy up. You know what I'm saying? We also got to get our ducks in a row. We got to get, like, we can't get our brand in line until we have ourselves in line. Just like they tell you on an airplane, like, put your oxygen mask on before you put the next person before, in oxygen Before you help somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you can't help your brand. We can't help each other until we get ourselves focused on. So within the past three years, man, we've definitely worked on ourselves and gotten better and as men as business partners as friends so all of that's come into a line even to to getting our business right you know what i'm saying so we more focused now on getting this thing right um and just trying to just just trying to just have something for our family and friends to be proud of us you know what i'm saying that's the biggest part about me to like have our family and friends to be able to speak proudly about us and something that we do you know what right. i'm saying like yeah that's my cousin clothing brand or that's my brother clothing brand or like that's my homie shit like oh i see that on tv like oh that's lit you know what i'm saying so that's the biggest part to me man you know what i'm saying Word. Nah, just to piggyback off that um just like you said we friends so we can have those real conversations it might be tough but we actually know each other from like on, like sandbox for real so it's tough then like he said like even he I get like might get my bag where I'm just focused on myself, music stuff, just doing what I'm doing, trying to survive, and he be out trying to survive on his end, just you know getting to it, um, and we just come like, yo, this ain't working out, bro. What's up with you? And he be like, what's up with you? You being a weirdo, bro. You ain't doing like what you supposed to be doing. I'm like, what's up with you? You ain't working like you supposed to be working. And those conversations kind of just made us be like, all right, we gotta get focused. We gotta get our ducks in a row. We gotta get this parallel to each other so we can grow it with each other. And then like we in a major city where you know we meet a lot of people, but like like I said just now, I actually know, bro. So it's not a lot of people out there. The industry weird, music stuff mm-hmm. weird, it's fake. Y'all know each other, like you said, since the sandbox. Since yeah. the sandbox. So I'm like, yo, you're not doing what you wanted to do. Your mom would be mad. He just saying nothing like, yo, you're tripping. Your family would be mad. Your mom would be tripping. And, and you know that, you know. So it is coming to that space. And then we come back here. We visit our family. And we not like where we at want to be in Atlanta. We just feel bad. And we just talking like, man, we got to get in order. People expect certain things out of us. And we bullshit. 
So it's just those real conversations you should be able to have. They say don't go business with your friends, but I think it's the best thing when you can have those real conversations. You know what I'm saying? I feel the same way, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mo, you want to uh, ask something? No, you can. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, man, I just feel like um, a lot of times, because, you know, that's the most common thing that people say, oh, don't do business family. Don't do business with friends. Yeah, you have some of those instances, but if the vision is aligned, I say all those conversations should be, um, exactly. should be had. Because if, if y'all have the same vision, anything could be worked out. We all, we both, okay, we want to get to this destination. All right, yeah, we're going to have bumps in the road, but I should be able to come to you and vice versa. You see what I'm saying? Like, even with us, Mo has come to me about some shit. I have come to him about some shit, but we both know that our vision for this is the same. Okay, yeah, we're not always going to get along. Exactly. We might have those. I mean, we, we said it on the show before. Some of the arguments we might have had, y'all might have had seen them on air one time, and then, you know, off camera. He was like, man, that shit was some dumb shit, man. Yeah, it be it be because y'all 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 locked in like that though. You know what I'm saying? You can always bounce back from anything. Like it's not about end of the day, bro. It's about division. Like Mike say, bro. Like it's it's always that's gonna be the bigger picture. So exactly. and, I, and I never wanted even for y'all. I never want to see something great fall to the wayside because of shit that couldn't be worked out. Like we seen it. I don't know if y'all watch podcasts. Like we spoke about it before. Mm -hmm. uh, like when Joe Budden and them broke up. Exactly. I felt yeah. like that could have been something that could have been worked man. out if men. And I think us as men, our ego sometimes, it's easy to say, yeah, we can talk it out, talk it out. But when you actually get in the moment, you let your actions take over. That might yeah. be giving your man a cold shoulder or yeah. saying slick shit yeah. or saying, but like, bro, that ain't really dog character. Let me see, like, instead of saying, like, let me see what's going on. And yeah. then I think that'll push y'all through a threshold of being so much better so you don't have breakups or you don't, everybody in your shit yeah. know what the fuck is going on it'd because... Be, it'd be simple conversation. Yeah, because regardless of nothing, so. anything that me and Mo go through, the public ain't gonna know about. You see exactly, what I'm saying? And it's exactly. nothing to die. It's just like, those personal conversations ain't never gonna hit the airways. Right. Or in a tweet, or right. in, or so, it's not gonna get to a point where people are looking at like, bro, like you them know they get, they, they got something going. You, right you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. it'll never get it. Yeah. Keep it in house first, man. Try to figure in out the family, man, first before all the internet. That's the one thing I try to teach everybody around me right now. That social media, once you once it hits social media, it's, it's a, a point. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a point of no return. People seeing it, you put people real in your hard business. Really, then from there, man. It really, mm -hmm. be, yeah. I think that vision. If you got the vision and just be able to uh, have respect for your fellow man, I think that goes a long way. If the vision is similar and parallel to each other, I think it can work. And then if you just got respect for your man, your homie, your friend, you'll be able to talk it out. Now, it might grow and the vision get different. That's when that conversation needs to happen. But if the vision is the same, it'll always work out. How do y'all feel about um, collaborations, like with major corporations? Just say, hypothetically speaking, like a, a, a Nike or something wanted to collab. How do y'all approach that in terms of like the ownership aspect and making sure the creative direction is going if the opportunity it, it don't got to be Nike it could be anybody of a of a major that's the one thing we had to learn early it was like people it was certain people that try to come at us with the brand like want to do collabs but um one ownership is a big thing but I also learned that you don't have to have all the whole percentage so having 51 percent of your brand is just as good as anything um, is having a hundred percent. So just that part and knowing what your brand is and who you should align to. Um, uh, we with collabs, we with any type of collab if it's like parallel to our brand. We're not gonna do it. It gotta make sense. It gotta make sense. Yeah. It gotta be a brand that we feel like is with ours and have the good uh, structure as ours. So it's not just anybody, but you know we with that for sure. Got you, got you. Is there any? Um have y'all had those like talks dream wise of like, damn, bro, like we can get with such and such one day or, you know, this. I mean, if y'all want to share it, you know. Nah, facts. So um, at the beginning, man, like this shit was my baby. So I'm like, yo, like I'm not letting I'm not doing no collabs. None of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like this is my <laughs> yeah. baby. And then as I got older, I'm like, yo, like collabs, like even to the point to like, bro, like. So we've had this conversation to where like, yo, if this shit gets big enough and. A corporation wants to come in and buy that shit. We letting that shit go, right? Mm. Because if we know we can do it once, we can do it again. You feel what I'm saying? So the brand that's just you know that's that's one of our kids. You got to let the kids go. You got to let them get older. You got to let them grow. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to have another one, you can have another one. So always looked at it like yo, like this is uh like this is just our breakthrough brand you know what i'm saying like i definitely feel like we've talked about 
doing another brand for years. Like, and okay, okay. we still may do it, but the next brand that we do do, it's not, it's going to be faceless. No one's not going to know who mm -hmm. runs it. You know what I'm saying? And we got ideas and designs for everything like that. And we've literally studied down to a science of how we're going to do it. Just don't know when we're going to do it. Um, but just to, just to, I don't kind of, no, no, you're good. You're good, bro. But um, to say that about brands too, like your brand depends on a lot of people rocking with you or not. Mm -hmm. Some people will not wear your brand if they don't rock with you. Right. So that's where it comes to get to as, as far as like you you having like a face for your brand or faces for your brand. You know what I'm saying? Versus to you going online, we don't know who runs Hellstar. Well, I mean, after Hellstar got popping, you, you could go and see I who still runs. Don't know who run Hellstar. But yeah, bro, you yeah. could go and run and see who runs Hellstar now. You know what I'm saying? Like Trap Star and all of these yeah. brands. But like a lot of these people, like it's not a direct face behind it. You know what I'm saying? So that's more so a thing to where I was I kind of used to think like, you know, maybe people not really rocking with our stuff because of us. But then it's like, I know people that are wearing our stuff just because they rock with us. You right. know what I'm saying? So I guess that's kind of like the, the funny thing about it in a sense too. Now you if, at, funny actually because um I seen you even diversity wise you never know who rocking your shit I seen an Asian dude who worked with me rocking y'all hats one day you see what I'm saying then I see a white dude rocking y'all hats so you just never know, never know you could be know. anywhere in the world and somebody's rocking the holy city hat you know what's so crazy what you say about the holy city is because when I found out the origin of the name they said it was based off a of, uh, geographical uh like the degree angle and shit like that location <laughs> yeah. like it's act that's how it got yeah. its name so I think it's it's significant. It's a significant name for one. And then also, like like I said, I've seen, I just haven't seen white people, I mean, black people rock y'all hats. I've seen white people rock sure, y'all hats. Sure, man. Yeah, like, man. One of so our homies was in, uh, he was in Panama, bro, like six months ago. And um, it's one of our older homies. And he got like, he got like all the OG shirts. You know what I'm saying? He got shirts that we wouldn't even remember. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. He was like, bro, I was in Panama. He was like, a nigga ran down on me like, yo. You know Christian TC? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, bro, I'm, all, I'm in Panama, bro. And the nigga ran down on me. He was like, yeah, that's my own. He was like, bro, that's crazy. That's like, That's fine. You know that what I'm saying? Fire, it's, in other instances, too, like my mom works at Boeing, bro. So, like, people have come in. Like, at this point in time, we got people that went to school with us that that go there. So, like, she was like, yo, I seen somebody coming in with your hat or your shirt. Or, and they'll be like, you Chris mom? And she'll be like, yeah. So, like. There's definitely not no age demographic to people that wear our brand. Like, yeah, of course. We got kids and we got older people wearing our thing. So, like, That's a plan, that man. was always the plan. Like, we didn't want to be like, oh, we just have teenagers wearing our shit because we know, like, a fad. Once a fad is out, niggas is yeah, getting see? rid of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, we didn't necessarily want our shit to be, like, a fad brand. It's just something that you could always put on. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what you're wearing. Some T-shirts. If you want to go out and get fresh. If you chilling in some basketball shorts, if you want to go hoop, like anything, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's more so how we always looked at it. We didn't look at it to where like, yo, we we wanted us wearing it. You know what I'm saying? Like it was more so like anybody. Anybody. What, what's a, uh, I think I remember yours, Chris. I remember we talked about this a while ago, but what's what's like a brand that you saw and you was like, damn, I can do this just, just off me rocking this right here. like Man, so, you know, back in the... <laughs> Let's say the sneaker era, you know, foams and yeah. all of this shit, bro. Like, my favorite brands at that point in time was 10 Deep, yeah, Crooks and Castles. Yeah. Um, this is when Karma Loop was popping. Yeah. Like, a lot of niggas don't know about Karma Loop. That's 0809 yeah, yeah, right me? there. Yeah. Karma Loop right there. So, like, anything on Karma Loop, bro, like, Young and the Reckless, days. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is Snapback era, Tisa era, and all of this shit, bro. Mm -hmm. So, it was kind of like, man, like. I was like, bro, we can do this shit. Like, this shit's simple. Like, you had TK with Fly Society, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, bro, we can do this shit. Like, because we felt like we was cool enough. We had homies that was cool enough, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm like, bro, we could do this. Like, it's just it's just brand awareness. I felt like we had enough people rocking with us before we even had a brand. Like, we had Fly Dot Nation before we even had any clothes printed out. You know what I'm saying? So, like... People will be like, yo, fly, die, da, 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 da. So we like, bro, we got to put this shit on some T's. Like, we got to figure this shit out, man. So that, those were my favorite brands. I would say Crooks and Castles, 10 Deep was like my brands that I saw. And I'm That's like, open your eyes to this Open shit, my man. eyes. You know what I'm saying? Versus, you know, niggas was wearing polo and, you know, academics and all of this other shit. But like, as far as like t shirts and seeing because it was more so like yo the shirts to go with your kicks at that point in time mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying cargo you know yeah. what i'm saying camo shorts so you know what it was I mean, bro we, we go, we know, exactly we know. so you know yeah. exactly what yeah. it was so i'm just thinking i'm like bro like 
this shit ain't that hard, bro. Like as far as like putting these shit out there and getting that shit out there. So yeah, that was my thing, man. As far as like like with the designs and things, I'm like, bro, it's not that hard. Like it's not that hard. I'm gonna tell you another thing too. Um, uh, the Robin Big Show, Rob Deerdick, when he brought his cousin on there. And they oh, started the drama, Young and Reckless drama, shit. Yeah, I'm like, and, Reckless, yeah. and I'm literally that like, shit blew up like right. That shit blew up, bro. Yeah. It blew yeah. up, bro. Oh, it, right. yeah, it that's literally crazy. blew up. And that was at one point in time. I'm like, bro, like we could do this shit. But it also was, he had Rob Deirdre stamp mm-hmm. on the back, and Rob Deirdre was just he had the exposure. Yeah, like, go he had, he had the exposure, exposure bro. Yep. So I'm just like, bro, if we could figure it out. And at the point in time, like we started working for Drum, and. We around all these, all these artists, like a lot of people don't know, like, yo, like, Our Future, fucking ASAP Rocky, Kendrick and all these niggas, when they came to Atlanta, like, we set those interviews up for Drum to do those interviews with him. That's what's up, man. Yeah, like, yeah. nobody knew that. Like, ASAP Rocky and all those niggas first came to yeah, Atlanta. Fuck your like, shit, fuck your shit, we set that shit up. <laughs> This was like a uh, drum like the DJ, like Tom. This yeah. drum like the DJ? Okay, so we didn't talk about that. So, that's how we kind of got our foot in the door. Like, our homie D. Rich, he not here right now. He pretty much the third of Holy City. He started interning for Shout Drum. Out Rich, Shout, Shout out to D-Rich, man. Shout out to D-Rich, man. He started interning for Drum, and that's how we got our foot in the door, and it opened up in, like, we was talking about the blog era. So, it was <laughs> DramaLikeTheDJ.com. This is Rap Radar era, Hip Hop 1987. Um, all of this two shit. Two dope so, boys, all that. Two dope boys, yeah. like so. That's how. I want to say because y'all ain't bring up drama to DJ. Y'all like oh, damn, oh, like y'all niggas was up. That blog era documentary need to holler at me, low key. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> they did but, a whole podcast but, series. But listen, on listen. Jump yeah. our feature. Wiz Khalifa. Uh, key. Key. J. Cole, Kendrick, a lot of those artists that whole time. Damn, that's we, like the 09 11 time yeah, frame. We put together like, a lot yeah. of those interviews. We did the first ASAP Mob interview for Drama Lady DJ. That's what's up. That's me. That came to Atlanta. So it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of history. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. History, yeah. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but um, what I was getting into. But yeah, the Drama Like the DJ joint is how we got our foot in the door, and that's how we actually met a lot of people and a lot of artists. Like That was kind of like the beginning of us like building relationships with people. And, you know, we was young back then, so like we kind of like the little homies that's just, you know what I'm saying, like tagging behind Drama. We go to the shows and stuff like that. And, you know, we made our own name and built our own rapport with people and, and, and got our face out there. So that was a big thing too, man. That's what's up. What do you think is the biggest thing crossing over? Because I'm a, like all of us in here, we in our thirties. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think was the biggest? Uh, I would say flip versus you come like we all cross over into our thirties now versus mm-hmm. the twenties when you was in this business. Um, in the twenties, man. I mean, as far as I feel like we was just living, bro. Like it wasn't. We just was living, bro. Yeah. We we get in the car, bro. Let's go to Miami. Let's go to Charlotte for a week. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't a plan executed. It wasn't yeah. a plan executed. Like we we knew what we wanted to do, but bro, we really should have executed this plan eight years ago. Mm. Honestly, you know what I'm saying? And we probably could have been and sold this shit by now. It, it could be anywhere, but like I said, life happens. Um, but the biggest transition, I guess, is just just becoming a man, also, bro, and just shit that we didn't have to worry about being in our twenties. You know what I'm saying? parents getting older being trying to take care of friends around us take care of other family kids and things like that while so, get money put food on the while table getting money and, and putting food <laughs> on, on the, the table, table bro. Yep. so trying to week, think about and trying week. to like put your your money and your your time into something that's not necessarily bringing you money back but it's your dream you know what i'm saying it's something that you love it's your baby so that's kind of like the the back and forth with it yeah, no, nah, definitely facts. The one thing I was going to say, too, what kind of helped is, like, once you establish a fan base, so say you got a solid 50 people that you know is always going to buy your shirts, that's okay. You're not necessarily in a bad spot. You just got to cater to those 50 people. That's your fan base. Like, we know for sure if we drop our shirts, we know 50 of our, like, diehard fans is going to cop something or is going to cop something. So, late cop something later so we know that we're going to have a certain amount of dollars every time it's just about growing that we kind of got stat and like once we established our little our core fan base we kind of like just catered to that that's kind of like another thing that kept us like just chilling too now we're trying to scale to a bigger level that's why we putting in the, the whole work just um just learning from the 20s that's one of the things that we had to kind of figure out that's why it's a marathon like 
like we were saying, just learn those those growing pains and just wanting to have a hundred percent ownership and being stingy of people coming with us learning that it's okay to get ten percent to somebody that's gonna help you grow and get more of a fan base. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's more of what I'm learning now, just more the the entrepreneur brain and mindset of things, you know what I'm saying? As far as just scaling your own business, that's more of what I'm learning now in the thirties, more in the twenties, like you said, it was just fun in the twenties, just going out Going to Miami, going to New York, or going to Atlanta to party, trying to be rough shoulders with people so people know my name, know my face. Like Atlanta now, you know, there's a lot of face card stuff. Like we established that. Like I could go to Atlanta at certain spots and I'm good. Like I don't got to pay to go to a club. I don't got to go pay to an event. If it's an industry event, I know I can go, you know, say my name and go and meet people that I need to meet. You know, it took work. It took a lot of time and work on my end and our end to do that. And it was built genuine. You know, yeah. Well, like this is like like he said, we was interning, had to go home. We was under drama them. They'd be like, I right, take your ass home. Go ahead now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, all right, now. All right, you yeah. D Rich man. Oh, you just oh you just your crew? Okay, go ahead, go home. So it's like we had to put in that work. People were like it's a lot of work people don't know. Like Yeah, all they see is the success. And yeah. I was tell everybody all Output. the time, intern, bro. Is don't have don't have a big heart or big ego to intern. Intern put you at least parallel to people you want to meet or get you in that room with people you want to meet. So I've met a lot of people that are intern work that's starting to become bosses in the music industry. So I could call on them and make favors and stuff like that. They started those interns picking up trash. Now they're executives, they assistants to big name um, um, label heads and stuff like that. So it's all parallel. That's why I'm putting out work if you need to. Take the risk. Go to New York if you got an intern for three months somewhere. Learn. You know what I'm saying? If you got to be a production assistant somewhere, learn that joint, bro. I was a production assistant. When I first moved to Atlanta, even out here before I left, I was a production assistant. Um, um, Army Wives and little things, productions that was out here that I was um, shooting out here. I was being a PA, just soaking up the game, learning the boards. I went to school in China, learned the boards, learned how to do radio programming and stuff like that. Under drum, I was doing drum um, voice imaging. If you don't know what voice imaging is, like commercials and, and, and all the voices you hear on the radio kind of just edited and production-wise. So I've been doing that. Putting in a lot of work, bro. Don't be scared of putting in that work. It'll get you in a position you need to be or align you to the people where you can call for favors. You know what I'm saying? That's the main thing I'm learning. I wanted to be naive and be like, I was mad a lot of time. I'm like, yo, fuck that. I'm Holy City. I'm TC. I'm trying to, man, I'm my own boss. But I had to really just fall back and learn for it. Now, you can't, I, I've done seen everything you need to see. All the artist stuff, all the stuff you see on social media. I got hella stories. I got, I know everything. So, Running the business, I wouldn't have known any of that if I didn't intern. So that's the one thing I wanted to say, for sure, for sure. That's what's up. Is um are physical stores in the vision? And if so, if they are in the in the vision, um, having them in different cities across the nation. Yeah, it's definitely a vision. I definitely want to have a, a real, real solid one right now. We're looking at commercial properties out here in Charleston. I'm um, trying to figure out the right place to have one. Definitely want to have one here in Charleston. That's my main focus. Um, just to complete the mission, the marathon, the words nip. You know, he had a store in his location. I've been there a couple of times physically, you know what I'm saying? Seeing how he did it, seeing it come up. A lot of conversations with him, just how he did it and why he did it. You know what I'm saying? Just to have a, a heart where you know where you're from, people know you, just is always a good spot. I'm always, I'm more, I like online. I think the, the, the physical stores is kind of shaky right now, just in this element in the space. I'd rather just have pop-ups, but I'm definitely going to have one solid one here in Charleston for sure. Gotcha. Do you think the real estate in Charleston is extremely too high for, for like a store, considering like how online shopping is really a, a really a big thing? Um, if I had to be honest, bro, what we've looked at, hell no. Nah. No? Like, this shit cheap out here. Okay. Compared to in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, compared to out here, but... I just had to look at it like, yeah, we could go get that shit, bro, but are we wasting our money and are we wasting our time? All right. Like, are people actually going to, like, people are going to come, right? Yeah. But is it going to be enough for, like, us to be paying, you know what I'm saying, a year's worth worth of rent? Yeah. And are the products turning over? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, are we, like, yeah, we're going to be making money, but is it actually going to make sense? Yeah. I think. Versus to I, just us, because. If I just have to look at like our history, uh, every time we do a pop up shop, bro, we blow. Yeah. Every time we do a pop up shop, I think bro, the last one I seen was Couture Fest, the first one. Yeah, and that was like shit. Twenty nineteen. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, that's right yeah. before the pandemic, yeah. man. And before that, so we did, uh, we did the, so in Atlanta, they have Atlanta Streetwear Market. Mm. I think it's every six months. Yeah. Actually, okay. I think they do one every, so um, we didn't do one the last one, but we did one the one prior to that, bro, and we damn near sold out of our yeah. shit. So doing things like that lets us know, like, all right, people are fucking with a shit because it's not just people that we know. It's yeah. random people like, yo. I like this shit, you know what I'm saying? Versus to somebody just being your friend and yeah. wanting to wear this shit because they're your homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I had to look at it, like I remember I used to be like, bro, we need a store. We need a store because, you know, you look at the Supreme store. Um, that should be going Even crazy. Crooks and Castles Everything and all of these niggas had stores back yeah. then. I don't even know if Crooks and Castles still has a store. I think that shit. No. They, they had a store? No. Yeah, yeah, they, they had, they had, had a store. flagship store. Yeah. Oh, okay. And okay. All of these niggas had a store in Fairfax, bro. Yeah. Everyone had yeah. one on Fairfax. All those brands have an initial flagship. I know Huff got a, like a flagship. Literally. Like everyone got like a. So that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's Literally. So I'm looking like, like, I would love to have that one day, but is that going to work out for us? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that's just something we'll have to figure out. But. Um, for the past year, man, we keep saying like, yo, we need to do a pop-up shop in Charleston. We need to do a pop-up shop in Charleston. We need to do a pop-up shop in Charleston. Like we really have to do one because yeah. I mean, we still know everyone here and everyone here is doing some shit now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like people doing music, people doing production, people doing podcasts, um, people doing art, people doing poems, people making beats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just a mm -hmm. list of things. So I'm like, yo, if we know all of these people and do all of these things like people will come out to su support us you know what i'm saying even down to the local rappers that we know here now yeah. you know what i'm saying so i feel like uh like that's something we need to do before before even october like i'm saying like it's about to be august bro like even if we throw one in september like i think that's something we need to do like just to just to put our faces in front of people and then even from there we make it do one every you know what i'm saying every quarter yeah you know i say i'll say one thing I've started to notice with clothing brands that they're kind of doing the whole food truck thing essentially, but it's in a, a Sprinter van. Mm -hmm. So they, people who have clothing brands, they're doing renting, buying a Sprinter, wrapping it, and then boom, you got yeah, you drop now. You literally somebody can be at the light. Hey yo, mm -hmm. you got whoop the whoop. You see what I'm saying? Because they're gonna see you in the street, for and sure, so for it's sure. it's essentially you know it's a worth an investment. It's a shop on wheels, so you can really pull up. Mm -hmm. Wherever the fuck you really want, but I think if I was into clothing, I would look into that aspect of let me because if you're already limited with clothing, how you want to do production and you got it right here on the shop, like in your mobile shop, mm -hmm. it only makes sense. I can pull up anywhere and sell at least what 10, 20 items and boom, go to another location, another five, another 10. You see what I'm saying? Now you done sold out your day by just swinging blocks, exactly you know what I'm saying? Exactly so, right. nah, so um. I want to speak about, I got a homie named Trav, man. Shout out to my man, Trav. Um, he has a brand called A Millie Theater. Okay. I mean, not A Millie. I'm, excuse me, bro. Um, shout out to our boy, A Millie, man. Yeah, shout, shout, yeah, shout out to our boy, A Millie. Shout out Millie and shout out Charlie, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for oh, sure, yeah. for sure. Big up, big up, big up. Um, so my man, Trav in Atlanta, his his brand is called Millie Merch. Okay. So um, he has a different approach to this shit. Like, So he has four booths in our malls. Mm -hmm. So he has two in Perimeter Mall. Um, he has one in Cumberland. I think he has one in like Greenbrier Mall. And I literally can't go anywhere, bro, without seeing his shit. Yeah. Mm. Like, I came back from DR. I'm in the airport. I see a nigga with his beanie on. Mm. Like, so his tactic to his brand is, um, it's kind of it's kind of aggressive in a sense. Um, he has these booths and he has females working at his booths. You know what I'm saying? All the females look good, you know what I'm saying? But when you come through that mall, like, you're not walking by that booth without yeah. them saying something to you. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he has them on, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, nah, when you, yeah, like, they get a percentage of the sales. So, yeah, yeah. they going hard, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, that made me think, I even told my man, I was like, bro, like, we, we, we might need to get a booth in the mall, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and get these tactics going on because... He also has two other homies that have clothing brands that live in New York, and he's put them on these tactics, and they shit is selling. Like I've seen his numbers. Like he makes, like, bro, on a, like I've seen like on a top day he'd have made like five six racks a day, mm. like at one booth, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And he's not even there. Yeah. So that just I'm like, damn, like maybe this is a tactic we may need to. But then everything doesn't work for everyone. You oh, know what I'm sure. saying? So 
that's I guess that's the hardest part is just trying to figure out like what works for you like yeah. what's because what works for the next person won't work for you oh for you know sure what I'm saying? and then you look in our malls here in, in current Charleston is a shithole bro I so. just I literally I was in <laughs> Northwoods help man they need help <laughs> bro I was in Northwoods two days ago like we even looked at how much it costs to even yeah. get a whole yeah. full store in Northwoods but I'm like bro like I don't think that's right for us. Yeah, the foot traffic ain't gonna really. It's not gonna be right for us, bro. And it and it, and it kind of like to me that's dumbing down. That that would make me feel like we dumbing down our brand by having a whole store and people not really coming in there like that. You know what I'm saying? That kind of. Yeah. And that's why I like the hand to hand sales because it's like all right. People looking for the shit. People mm. want this shit versus to being like, oh, I could just go to the mall and go and grab go that grab shit. That, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, yeah. I looked at it like, like when we kind of made the Holy City Tea was kind of supposed to be like the I love, I love New York tea for Charleston. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't mind, like, having a having a, a booth or something in the mall with just literally just strictly our Holy City t-shirts and not anything else with our feather, just literally a Holy City t-shirts. I think that's something we may need to look into because, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, as far plan. as that, like, I don't really mind that. And like I said, it's still my baby, so I kind of don't want it hoard out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's how I feel. Like, I don't yeah. want to whore ourselves out, like, Cause you want it to be exclusive, exclusive. Yeah. And, and, and not necessarily exclusive because it's not it's not like our shit is fucking Prada or some shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I don't want it to be like where motherfucker could just be like, oh, I just want to go grab this shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I love that, but I don't. But see, hand in hand, it's, hand it's in, a balance. Yeah, it's a like, balance. if you got hand in hand, it's, it's a, essentially it's exclusive exclusivity when you have the hand in hand mm-hmm. transition. Then versus, oh, I can, I know I can go to the street and just go, go to the store to just yeah. grab a shirt just for the night. You see what I'm saying? Like if you know you just, oh, I'm going out tonight. Let me go grab a Holy City shirt right quick. You see what I'm saying? That's that's the bare minimum. Now, if you want the feather, if you want a, uh, the car. Um, that says Holy City on it with the you know the um the tie that look on it. Exactly. You, now now I have to come find y'all niggas. You see what I'm saying? So it does make sense in that aspect to have something that is for the masses, but also something that is more exclusive to the baby feel of exactly, okay the exactly. hand in hand transaction is what makes you feel good. Okay, well you could come holler at me to get so that you're gonna get something completely different than the next man. You see what I'm saying? No, that's 100. percent I think that's where we're going at right now. We kind of find that space, like he said. It'd be white people wearing it. It'd be Spanish people wearing it. It'd be uh, people you wouldn't expect Asians. wearing it. Asians wearing it. People you won't expect. So we know we had that demographic where, like he said, that was the main idea. Like the Crenshaw T and the I Love New York T. We wanted something that if you come to Charleston, you want this T-shirt. That was like one of our first thoughts. So. But then we got in a space where we want to be exclusive. So we kind of, and now we're a space where we can do both. But I think, like I said, moving forward in the next year or two, we're going to kind of have a spot where you can get that Holy City shirt, any color you need. Um, it'd be for the low country, be for the, uh, you know, people from the city, people that visit the city. And then if you want something exclusive, like we have the Rebirth launch uh, collection where, you know, it's the Rise Above collection. Um, those are the exclusive collections that we drop. Um, you got to come holler at us. You got to be online or it got to be hand-to-hand sale. I think we're going to be in that space for sure. But like he said, man, we've been trying to find a spot out here. It just got to be perfect timing. We've been, this whole month I was down here, I've been going to different spots, calling people, um, just looking for the right fit. So soon, we got to have a flagship here. I think we, we, we got to do the city justice with that. Um, once we get in a space where it don't even matter, as long as we got something here, if it, it turn profit, if we break even, that's fine, as long as it's in the city. Um, Cause we know what we could do outside the city too. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful right. that you want to bring home, come back home. You know what I mean? Essentially, have a place to call home. You know what I mean? That's a beautiful thing, bro. That's what's up. Uh, I want to transition into some music real quick. Um, so I want to ask y'all this. So being that you, you know, you're in um, basically in business with drama, you have a relationship with drama, mm-hmm. and just coming up with the brand as well. Have you come across any of uh, probably your favorite artists or artists you never? artists you thought you never would meet and like how is that interactment because we always we on the outside looking in we never know so what is it like actually coming across some of these artists and you know maybe even like kind of introducing yourself pitching them like and maybe even trying to like promote your brand and stuff like that (laughs) first of all anybody that come in mean streets they know who tc is any artist like any artist from 
fucking Rick Ross to Birdman to Young Thug to up, Rich Homie Quan. Like, if That's they walk up. in there, they got to know this nigga's name. You know what I'm saying? Like, even from, like, there's a new side of Mean Streets being built now. So, like, the old side was kind of like, you know, that was the Young Thug, Rich Homie era, you know what I'm saying? The Meek era when everybody was just running through that shit. You know what I'm saying? But now, if you come to the other side, he the boss, so you gotta talk to him. So it's nobody coming through there. So he definitely gets he's he's there. You know what I'm saying? I'm there maybe twenty percent of the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have a job with generation now. <laughs> Hopefully, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Royce drum, you know what I'm saying, Cannon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just need a little something, you know what I'm saying? Just just a little something. Little razzle you, know razzle so, too you know, I, I do my thing, but it's I don't necessarily have a job there, you know what I'm saying? Like so my guy has a job there, so I just wanted to get that out there before he before he, he get before he gave the humble answer, you know what I'm saying? Because he's real humble. I told him he need to pop his shit so we could be out here. Hey, don't don't I say that shit sometimes? Man, this nigga don't be popping this shit. I don't be understanding. I, I, it, man. Listen, I don't, listen, if y'all T C follow me. Yeah. So I get my shit off about it, the shit we do, bro. I, I don't be holding back. It's not. Yeah. It's, and some people may look at it as being you know, arrogant. And I know some people even like, nah, nah. I feel like when you put in cause People only see the output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my thing is, there's nothing wrong with celebrating your shit. Like, I sent Mo a, a screenshot the other day of like episode 65 through like 70. That was our first YouTube videos versus now. Yeah. And it's like, damn, bro. Like, we grew a lot. Bro. We grew a we fucking grew a lot. lot. And I just bro. be like, bro, I'm not going to be. I, I, I've never been like that because I'm a very. I, I believe to myself to be a very confident person. Mm -hmm. So, like, nobody's not going to tell me this shit not going to work. No, nobody's not going to tell me I don't put in work. And when I feel like we do some great shit, I'm gonna get my shit off. Nah, facts. <laughs> nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, honestly, I met probably every artist you could name right now, um, except like the new new guys right now. They coming in and out right now. But I done met everybody from Cardi B, Nicki, Meek, um, Drake a long time ago, Nip, um, DMX, and DMX. I was one of the last people to meet DMX. He came to the studio, had a conversation. That's with what's him. up. He passed the next week, which was crazy. Um, yeah, like I said, anybody really just artist relationships is what I pride myself on. Just knowing the artists and knowing how to deal with them. A lot of people don't know how to deal with artists. They be crazy. They have their own little quirks and stuff like that. But I pride myself is just knowing how to have them cool and calm and a temperament where they want to come back to our studio. So that was what I was proud of myself on. Like if you come to Mean Street Studio, you're gonna want to come back. It's a cool vibe. The manager TC cool. He can get you anything you want. Anything you want in Atlanta, you know, holler at me. You know what I'm saying? I get you right. Pause, you know what I'm saying? Depending what it is. You know what I mean? So um just that aspect is it is be it, it's surreal. It's kinda people be like, yo, you you um numb to the shit now. Like future walk in right now, I'm like, I to be regular, like People are, yo, yeah, it's just a regular you situation. You're not, you're not, you're not yeah, starstruck by yeah, that. I'm not, not starstruck by that. I was, I was starstruck by a couple of people. I'm not gonna lie, John caught me and everything. Who, who, who like, yo, like, 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 you like, like, what did you? Huh? He like, he, I was like, I was like, man, give me, give me three, just give me three. Fab, Cardi B, and um. I knew he was gonna say fab. Yeah, I yeah, yo, fab. yo, I, 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 I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I was like, yo, this is fab, fab, right? I was like, yo, that's how I need fab. I was like, yo, this is fat. I, Rick Ross, I was kind of like, I, was J. Cole, like right? I met J. Cole. J. Cole was just so cool. You feel like he a brother. Like, I wasn't even starstruck. I was just like, hey, this is a cool dude right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Quavo and all them. Migos, Offset. It's a lot of stories, man. Offset, you know what yeah. I mean? A lot of weird things happen in the studio. Lil Durk, um, when he was making his run, kind of Cardi B when she was pregnant and made um, Bodak um, Yellow. He recorded a lot of his shit there. <laughs> Doug, everything. Doug, shout out my boy Jeff, man. Free my boy. Really know him. It was at the point where Doug used to come to the studio, and at the time, literally, the studio was so new that it was just me and D. Rich there, so I had to do some runs. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm like, oh, I got to do a run. I don't want to be no runner. Ah, uh, ah, uh, You know, I was on my ego, like, bro, come on. I'm bossed up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. But I was like, I was like, <laughs> I, I, I was like, I wasn't no boss. I was like, I'm bossed up. But, you know, I kind of, like, you know, chill. I was like, let me do this run, make sure he good. And then I just established a relationship with him and his family. Then when I was bossing up, I started getting some people under me, like interns and stuff like that. And I'd be like, yo, go in there, make sure it's good. That's how you do it. It'd be the point where the artists don't even want nobody else. They want TC. I'd be like, damn, I'm trying to transition, bro. I'm trying to be like, I'm, trying, I'm not in this space no more. Where, like, Because I used to have things cool for him. He can want, we want Burger King. He want five Whoppers cutting in half, Junior. 
Cut in half with no mayo and a bag of candy. That should be at the studio. You feel me? You know what I mean? Make sure he got tea. Make sure he got runners. He's scared. He, he make sure he has multiple engineers because he might scare the engineer. You know, this is early. <laughs> this is early Thug days. You know, what yeah, I'm saying yeah, yeah. this is early when he was still getting to it. You know, what I'm saying he might scare the engineer. Might gotta replace the engineer. Um, the certain things, but I was on deck, so people just you know, remember that. So when they come to the studio, like boom. That's how the relationship with Nip. I used to run around, do things for Nip, make sure Nip was good in the city of Atlanta, get things for him when he didn't want to move, you know what I'm saying, certain things. Um, he established that relationship. He's like, yo, that's TC right there, so when I go to LA, I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just little things like that. But it's been, it's been it's been surreal a little bit, just shaking hands and shoulders with people that I used to see on TV and look up to. And like, and I know that I don't want to be a rapper. I know for sure that I don't want to be a rapper. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand the background and everything, but... um. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I done met every your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. I met him for yeah. sure. Let me ask you a question about Nip. Um, so I feel like towards the end of Nip's life, essentially, um, the way his the way that he was doing music and is more of like a uh, his music videos are more like a movie mm-hmm. versus just a music video, ass shaking and boop boop boop. It was more of like. Like it's telling a story. Yeah. Um, is that how he really was in the in the studio, like sitting down, chopping it with him? It's always like, let me take you back to this time, or really giving you like a, a different insight. Now he always like he like how he was in interviews is how he was, and just in person, just mm-hmm. always ready to give insight and tell a story about how he come up. He's really a humble, humble dude. When I first met him, I was like, yo, bro, you a superstar, bro. Like I like you, but like this is like one of my before he was he had bullets had no name, volume one or two. Yeah. Um and stuff like that. I think Victory Lap. I mean, um, the marathon. The was, marathon. Marathon continues. I think the marathon just came out when we first started interning for real. And I used to be like, bro, you are a superstar. You rapping like no one else. You you giving game. Like at that time, I really didn't feel like people was doing it. You had the backpack rappers still going on. J Cole's giving mm-hmm. game, mm-hmm. but Nipsey was like giving game to what I felt related to me. Like J Cole is one part of me, but also Nip was kind of like the street. He was like. A street hustler that wanted more so i felt and gravitated to that so everything all the words was like we could be in the street but we gotta figure out how to help the street as well mm-hmm. so i felt like he always praised that and he always he always was humble always talking about yo legacy what he always was used to talk about and just establishing the stuff um on his own and ownership so that's kind of like how that whole thing evolved and i'm like man you gotta keep rapping and preaching and teaching mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying if you keep doing that you're gonna be successful so it's just been, yeah, those stories really, he always tells stories, how to come up, how, just stay focused and just keep on pushing. Don't give up, for real, for real. Respect. That's what's up. That's what, How do y'all feel about the state of rap right now? Or who's some of y'all favorite projects of the year, if there's any? The, listen. I need my list. Listen. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> the state of rap right now is, is tough for me right now. I done seen a lot of good. It's just in a weird space right now. It's wide open. I should say for I, real. It's definitely wide open. This is definitely wide, wide open. Wide open. Wide open. Wide open. Wide open. Anybody, if you want to be a superstar, it's wide open for you to take it. Anything that you change the game is open right now. It's, it's tricky for me, but I'm getting to a space where I like my certain artists. I'm I'm hip to the new artists. I know what's going on. I got to be ear to the street. Trust me, I know every young artist out here. I run through it every day. Every day at the office, about two, three hours, he comes to the office. What we doing? Looking at YouTube videos with the other a and and stuff like that. And then let me say with him, he 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 just now he just be you know what I'm saying unofficially just now. But he be at the office. You know what I'm saying? You know. You feel me? So we always have battle, uh, rap discussions, and every day and YouTube looking at the new cats. But I like my I like Babyface Ray man. I like um, he one of my favorite artists. I just. Who else I really listen to, bro? That's all I really listen to right now, too. Yeah. A lot of Ray, a lot of Peasy. Yeah, Peasy, of- Ray, ESTG, yeah, you know, Uzi, G. Jack, you know, the whole team, you know, the squad, everybody on our squad. Um, That's who I listen to consistently. I like the new cast. I like Lil Tyler. Um, what do you think about Uzi's last project? Uzi last, I like Uzi's last project. It's better than his last project to me. It's more of what he wanted to do for a long time. Um, He wanted to experiment with the rock. He been... Kind of in that phase But mm-hmm. this one is kind of like He really got it off And him and Cannon Listen this this album He has 15 to 20,000 records He recorded Shout out to Ben Shout out to Cannon That he did um, 
Wait, you say Uzi got fifteen thousand records recorded? Bro, he has fifteen. He records. He records. Oh, he's. I know he's a workhorse, but fifteen thousand. That's crazy. You got because he was working for three years on it, and yeah. then prior to that, he had records that he had that's supposed to probably be on the red and uh the red and white tape that didn't make it. Those was more like a lot of the leaks, and then. I would have rock. It just was. It just was a little single. He was yeah, I remember that being a leak. That was yeah. a leak. Yeah. Think, bro, what, what came out before that? Exo tour life. Nah, he had nah, a um, Shagon um, Paradise joint and he yeah. had like, yeah. and like, stuff like all that. All this shit came out in between him putting out any projects. So. Mm-hmm. I just want to rock this one crazy. Then he had like the free Uzi freestyle and all yeah, that. Yeah, so shit he didn't have to do any of that, bro. But um, as far as like the music, bro, like I kind of listen to who I listen to, and I kind of give. I'm a I'm a hard critic when it comes to music because. Like, I really, I really love music, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it'd be kind of hard for me to listen to. It's kind of like, I'm going to say, like, it's kind of some bullshit rap I listen to, but I, I really like niggas that really rap. Like, one of the new niggas I'm kind of listening to right now is just like, I just like the vibe of the music. Just, I'm not really giving a fuck what he's saying. It's Lucky. No, I, I fuck with Lucky. Lucky shit lucky. is a vibe. Like, I, I fuck I heard with a his, few tracks from him. I fuck with his shit. His shit is a vibe. But, like, other than that, bro, I'm listening to, like, I like to listen to niggas that's like talking about getting money, yeah. elevating their life, taking care of the family. We're going to say fucking... Lifestyle rap. <laughs> Babyface Ray, Payroll, you know what I'm saying? I like, fuck with Payroll. Niggas like yeah. that, bro, that's yeah. actually talking about like... I actually got to open up my iTunes and literally see who I'm all listening to right now. Like Baby Money, I like Baby, Baby Money shit he putting hard, out. Yeah. Um, what y'all think of... Y'all, y'all listen to Travis Scott's new album? Bro, I listened to it I last night in the car. Yeah. I got to about track six and i was disappointed because mm. i'm like all travis Scott other albums by the time you get to track six like that's that's like yo the, speakers on yeah, fire by uh, this point in time you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so like i'm gonna I'm give it another run um i want to put y'all on my homie uh shout out to my man west side web bro um he from cali bro like he he next up i, think up, I like, seen him on one of y'all pages you might have seen yeah. me reposting him bro but like he's next like his his last his album last year bro was the top album played on my itunes last year okay. that's what's and, up and that's hard over a lot of music. And I'm not just saying that just because he my homie. I like, checked out some of his songs based on from seeing him on Like, like bro, he pages. really, like I said, he talking that getting money, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Take care of the family. Fly not, that shit, man. Not no <laughs> jumping outside with the switch and laying yeah. niggas down and all of that shit, bro. That because shit kind of get exhausting. Bro, it's, shit, it's not even, it's, it's, it's exhausting, bro. And it's fucking, it's giving us PTSD, bro. Like, listening to this shit every day. Like, you literally waking up in the morning, getting in your car. And you listen to niggas talk about spinning niggas. Mm-hmm. Like, that shit's fucking up your brain over time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas don't think of, like, bro, I get in the, mor- I get in the car in the morning, bro. I take my son to school, bro. I put on a Sade, Sade playlist. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. You feel me? Or, like, I was talking about my homie West Side Web. He don't really curse like that in his music. So, I play that around him. So, like, now it's kind of like, I'm in the car with my son a lot, so, and my girl. So, I'm playing music that, like, just vibe versus, vibe. To, like, it's just yeah. some hardcore rap shit you know what i'm saying and then i've just gotten older bro so like i listen to a lot of older music too like j cole mixtapes yeah. or the like fab mixtapes or jay you know what i'm saying like i'm a i'm a northerner at heart you know what i'm saying but we grew up in south carolina so like most of my favorite artists was you know what i'm saying up north niggas but this shit has kind of changed now because like south is kind of taking over you know what i'm saying so like yeah where I, you where you originate from i'm originally from maryland maryland okay mm-hmm. okay but i've been here since fifth sixth grade so that's when i met tc d rich shit Niggas that Mo know, yeah. like shit. I moved into Mo in the front of Windsor Hill at that point in time. So, yeah, man. But uh, like I think music. I think the rate that we're at music, bro. This shit gonna have to crash to build back up. Yeah, because, bro, like niggas is getting killed over music. Niggas is getting indicted over music. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So. It's that's kind of in a weird spot right now. I'm so if you look at it, bro, that's even kinda, with the lazy, I feel like the lazy laziness put towards the work, like. The sample shit again, mm-hmm. just with uh, who was that? Bro, sample? it's hot in here. I'm it's over this sample, sample was that shit, NLE man. Chopper? Yes, bro, sample? I'm over yeah. this shit. And that was That's another reason I'm like, bro. I, <laughs> it, I was like, if you watch it with no volume on, it look like a skit, kind of right. like. Bro. It don't even look real. And right. it's getting to the point, I'm like, damn, we Very get close. older because yeah. they sampling it. They, it's not even shit from the 90s. They sampling shit from the 2000s. 2000s. <laughs> do y'all think, do y'all think, like, uh, do y'all think, uh, before, before you get that, do y'all think, um, oh, shit. Like a lot of the OG selling their catalogs have something to do with it because a lot of those songs are those songs being sampled. Like, yeah, the well, that's one thing. That's another hustle right now selling that catalog. As far as these young cats, is 
I think the sampling is fine. It's just lazy sampling right yeah. now. Yeah, it's like that's back in the day, you used to be like, man. "Oh, you used to be like, hold on, if it's a sample, that's a sample." It hit. Yeah, yeah, like mm-hmm. undeniable. It was hit. underneath. I like, saw, I saw two girls rapping over the international players ball. Yeah, and I'm like, Bro, UGK. Yeah. yeah, no, it's two black. No, chicks. two black chicks. Those, those and somebody girls, else. That's, that's like, but like, absolutely horrible. Yeah, I, I think it's. It, just like TC said, it's a laziness. And like you said, when you heard a sample back then, even on the R&B side, you see what I'm saying? Like when, when Mary sampled uh, My Life, yeah. that's a prominent yeah. record back then. And her record is prominent on that album. Exactly. This is one of her biggest exactly. songs on the album. Exactly. It's just like, bro, like when you hear, um, uh, even when I was watching they clone Tyrone, what's the Diana Ross uh, record? That was playing. What's the name of that song? Uh, just Love it. Hang, yeah. Love Hangover, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. We've heard that record yeah. sample, and that's a prominent record. You get so I think it, a lot of it is the laziness, dog. It's, it's, it's a lazy, man. Man, and they don't really love it for real, life. bro. Even with uh, Burner Boy, Burner Boy is the biggest artist in the world right oh, now. Man, he be killing the samples, bro. bro. He be <laughs> killing us. I like, bro. But I'm gonna tell you, I saw something, bro. Maybe about a, a year or two ago, and if you look at his catalog, bro, seventy percent of his catalog. Is samples. Damn, I didn't know that. Seventy percent of Burner Boys. I, I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I'm not. A, I may be wrong. But sixty to seventy percent of his catalog is samples, bro. Most of his popping songs is samples. Like the shit he just had. That was uh. Sitting on top of the world. Sitting on top of the world. Sitting on top and of the world. Then, then he had the Tony Braxton. Uh, Tony, Bra- yeah. Tony Braxton one is the one that took her out of. You know yeah. how, bro? She probably ate so crazy off of that oh, shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sure. definitely. Oh, she did take a lot. And that's another thing too. These old niggas are yeah, they, taking. They splitting it up. Yeah. They taking a, a whole. So you think big part Tony got like the bigger percentage? Is what you're saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. It might have been sixty forty. Listen, listen, listen. Me behind the scenes, I know the paperwork, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know the paperwork for sure, man. One thing I know for sure is how to get a record out and do it the right way and with the splits are. That's one thing I learned. It took me a minute to learn, but I know how to this break down. It's, listen. Five percent of a, a of a million hundred million dollar record is fine, but it get it gets breaking down. You already know I could break it down to artists get fifty, producer get fifty, and it gets split like that. If the artist didn't clear it, they gotta get they percentage to the uh, artist and the producer gotta give a percentage. So it's a breakdown. So basically, that fifty get chopped down to twenty five. Twenty five already depends if they want to be okay. nice. If they, they want to be nice. Yeah, okay. If they want to yeah. get if Tony Braxton want to be like I give you twenty five. I don't gotta give you twenty five. I can give you five. And yeah. Woo! I keep when I you know when I when I hear about stuff like that, I always think back to uh, Sting and Puff Daddy with the missing you. Exactly. Because Sting said he done put like four of his grandkids through college off that one oh, song. One song and Puff almost messed up. Didn't get it clear. He almost didn't get clear. Sting yeah. is lucky he's just nice because Sting could have been a real dickhead. Like take the whole record, take it down, or like look, you're not getting no nothing off it. It's mine. I own it. Yeah. Like um, the Juice World. Hold on, the Juice World thing. You know what I'm saying? Lucid Dreams. It, um, that was a big sample. Um, I think oh, it was yeah, Sting. That one, that one, that I think one it was dummy. Sting too with that. But he took, I believe, most of the record. Juice World didn't even eat. I think he actually had like zero percent. But that's the record that got him successful. Yeah. So he kind of like tick for tack. But that's how it works. If that paperwork ain't right, it's gonna bite your ass. Yeah, I feel like it's all about a balance. Like we know Kanye West would be a great sampler, but he also has the other element, mm-hmm. like making original beats. Mm-hmm. And I think when you just get in that pocket of Sam, it's like, bro, y'all not really digging in the crates for real. Like it's it's. I looked up history on shit that Kanye has sampled. It's like, bro, I didn't even How know he, about this where, artist. Yeah, where he you know the, right. But that goes back. Right, right. right. like, you know? But I think I think it goes back to also those artists actually had to go to these like it could be like a flea market shops, type record, record shops, shops yeah. and yeah. actually yeah. dig, dig, real dig, dig. So uh, we got a producer homie Hollywood Cole, and he's a person. Heard that name. He's got. He's a person that make like reminds me that like he deals with a lot of old records and like, like he gives me Canon vibes. Like a lot of people don't know, like Canon's really yeah, Canon like that. He's like really a music scientist, bro. Like he oh, yeah, really, he really, so he'll really, dig in the crate too, for real, for real. Okay. Like even like all of them, bro. Like they those. I feel like those type of producers are different versus just sitting in front of NPC and just you know what I'm saying, like. I want to go get a sample and chop it up and take this little voice out of this shit and put this shit in there, like. So like that's I think that's where you that's where we get our soulful beats from. Like soon as a song come on, 
You hear that shit, that shit, you feel it in your soul. You're yeah. like, all right. And nine times out of ten, that's probably from a sample. You know what I'm saying? Even it's from the 50s, 60s, yeah. 70s. You know what I'm saying? And it hit different when it's handpicked like that. For real, for yeah. real. But yeah. why, is it, why is it that we have to sample so much shit? Like, is it really like... I think the, they scared to it, do original. No, nah, but it, is the niggas really just not making beats anymore? Because, like, I Listen. remember... A nigga couldn't get off Fruity Loose back in the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even so they were still chopping shit back then. I just feel like the quality, like like Chris was just saying, like the quality of actually going to a store and actually like going through records. Fix your mic, and, Mike. Fix your and mic. Actually going through records and you know finding that one that you know that hey this this is going to mean something mm-hmm. as opposed to like we just we just ran we just talked about a couple records. The sample was already done like eight times already. already. So it's lazy like, this. What 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 else can you pull from? We that? gotta get like just Drew. I think we might be uh, going on the same page with this one. The live instrumentation too, dog. Mm-hmm. Facts. That's like facts. like like yeah. playing instruments and making a beat from instruments playing. Like you have layers. Like we just talked about with Manny Fresh. Like mm-hmm. back that ass up has strings on it. Mm-hmm. So he can go to a tiny desk and have a real live a real violinist. A, a real violinist come and play. Juvenile's tiny desk was so good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, really, it's really honestly yeah, that's what I was just about to say, man. Niggas are really getting lazy, mm-hmm. but is it, let me ask you, TC, is it, do you think it's just rush projects that's making people lazy? Like, oh, I got to push this shit out very fast, or is it just really like, eh, they're just not taking the craft serious? I think it's a combination of everything that's going on right now. People, mm-hmm. artists are trying to push out a lot of songs at one time. Um, some of the producers being lazy, not making all of their beats, they getting loops and other stuff from c- certain people. Like, you do paperwork and it's a beat. An artist, you be like, a producer made a beat, like, cool, this one artist. Then, when the paperwork get down, you get to the lawyer, there's two other people on this beat. you like, how is this happening? There's two other people on this beat. When you thought it was one person, a person might have sent the loop. That's a lot of clearance. <laughs> It's a lot of clear, oh, bro. Shit. That's why. That's why you hear, like, <laughs> artists be like, yo, my, my album was pushed back. What's going on? They mad at the label. But, you, you just... You turned in your rec- your, your records late, and you want to get everything. I remember in two Fab weeks. used to speak about that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. not working. Like that. People really need to turn in their. This is it's not going to happen. But artists need to turn in their albums really two weeks to a month ahead, so all the clearances can get through. But artists want to drop it last minute, and drop so fast that it's hard to get the clearance to. That part, and then there's other people doing the beats. They are lazy making the beats. Like back in the day, you want to sample to try to make a different song. People are sampling and making the same song. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's kind of that weird. So it's like you said, like we fortunate to be around real people, like producers that really like, like Ken is the guru. He's like the sensei in this in the studio. Like I just get so many, I get so much game from him. He's like the creative genius. He like my Rick Rubin. You know what I'm saying. So I just talk to him about everything that's going on. He's like. The essence of that, and then like he said, I got Hollywood Cole is kind of like the kids of that, just you know keeping that forefront. But it's to make it different, not make it the same. So that's another thing that's going crazy too. So all that combined, people rushing, people not really making the beats themselves. So the feeling is weird. I get a loop from somebody that's in Australia, and I make the beat here in Charleston. It's not the vibe different, you know what I'm saying? Instead of making it in the room yeah. one time, you know what I mean? It's different things like that. Chris, you want to say something? Um, I think I was just kind of like piggybacking on like the percentages. So like, uh, we got a homie like he make beats and shit. But when he makes his beats, he's probably making the beats with like three or four other niggas. You know what I'm saying? So like, when he send his beats, I send the beats over to TC. TC like, damn, it's, it's eight niggas on this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when it comes to if that track does get picked, I feel like that kind of deterred niggas from using certain beats because like, all right, that's fucking up the percentages. Three niggas on this shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we already gotta pay the rapper, the producer, you know what I'm saying? Three other niggas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, I, fees, like, it'd be crazy, man. So, like, it's definitely, it's definitely. I think within the past like four years, there's been a rush of niggas that's jumped in the game to make beats, and I think that's why the quality of beat selection has went down. Got you, like, got you. My last thing was with that. A lot of artists now is rap hustling. And not rapping and in this music thing to be an artist, so that's kind of like messing up the the pot a little bit. A lot of people just make it like it's a trap. I want to get in, make a song. I'm gonna do shows. I'm gonna get this money. I don't want to be the best artist. Like even Jeezy, like I talk to Jeezy or I listen to Jeezy when he in the room speaking. He be like, I, at the end of the day, I still wanted to be an artist though. 
I wanted to get yeah. better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm talking to someone on the phone just now. It kind of made me happy because he's like, yo, I just want to be good. Like, he started off wanting just to be a trap rapper, but he's like, nah, I want to be good, bro. I want to learn. I want to try new things. And I should, it kind of made me happy. It kind of put me in a mindset like, okay, you could be something because you want to be more. A lot of these things, that's why a lot of people going to jail, dying, they treat me like a trap. And it's, this artist, this, this, this game is really delicate right now, but... If people get yeah, back to want to be an artist and separating that other side, like to get away from the street, people want to be rapping and still be in the street. Now that, yeah, it don't work like and that. Can't mix it too. It yeah. Like uh, TC, you had a chance to listen to uh, Travis' album? Oh, I did. I it's okay. I like it. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. It's not his best work though for me, but it's okay. What do you compare to his other? Hmm. He has so many good albums. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it's, is it like a bottom, like a bottom of the list type album? Yeah, it's a bottom of the list for me. It is bottom of the list. I'm not gonna lie, it's bottom of the list for me. I'm gonna give it some more listens. But as far as I know, Trav from his past and just working with him is kind of like his bottom tier album. I like I like all his other stuff too. That's why I'm a big fan. And I gotta critique him because he in the whole space with my guy Uzi and Cardi and stuff like that. So it's kind of in that space right now. You know, I'm gonna go hard with Uzi all the time. Pink Tank first. Um, there's a lot of couple records that Trav wanted. That record that's on Uzi joint, Trav wanted so bad, wanted so long, and was trying to not give it to Uzi, but we ended up getting it for Uzi album and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I, me personally, Mo, you had a chance to listen to? Yeah, I listened to, um, I listened to a good bit of it last night, and I listened to a good bit of it Friday when it came out. Um, it ain't like the the best Travis album to me, but it's cool. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, I actually, I, I actually thought it was. You know, I was gonna play it, and he's like, he's probably just gonna. I actually liked it a lot. Yeah. I think the production. I think the production was very, very good. Um, the features was. That's also another thing that I like that some artists may do when they drop an album. Now is like kind of like leave us in the. Like li- like oh yeah, find out who's he gonna be featured that, on shit. He been he been because I'm gonna tell you right now that. That Del Resto with Beyonce on it, mm-hmm. that shit fire. I fuck with it. And I think I think with this album, I was really surprised at how he was able to keep my attention on it. Cause Travis Scott is not your typical rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like he's more like a vibe type yeah. type artist. But I really enjoyed this project, man. I really did. I think he knocked the park out with the features. Um the track with Future and Scissor, that's probably my uh, telekinesis telekinesis, I think. That's probably my favorite. Um, the intro is very dope, and I I just think it, it 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 flowed very well for me. Me personally, I think it was real good. I'm not putting it up there with his best, but I also don't think it's yeah. bad at all. I think this is a very very good project. It got, for it him. got good moments on it now, like I ain't saying yeah. like you know, but yeah, so I didn't get that far through it. Um, yeah, you say you only got a, yeah, the six, so right? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there, Elliot Wilson. You stole this from me, and I know you did, because we was running <laughs> drama like the DJ at this point in time. But <laughs> I used to, and whenever album come out, bro, I would be on Twitter like, yo, I'm about to give it the car test. Right? Yeah. So I wouldn't rate an album until I can get in my car, ride around and blast that shit and actually mm-hmm. listen to it. You right. know what I'm saying? Get the vibe of it. So uh what's what's Elliot Wilson's name? What, Man's name. B Dot. B Dot used to be like it's bro, it's, it's on Twitter, bro. You can literally <laughs> go on my feed. Like B Dot used to be responding to yeah. like my car test shit, like, yo, how is it? Like da da da. You know they got the car test now. So like I I, I don't oh, wow. rate like I didn't know. Bro, this. real <laughs> shit, bro, real shit, real <laughs> shit. This ain't just this is Facts on Twitter, like I could go pull the tweets, uh-huh. up, like for real, for real. But um, I don't like to necessarily give a, a album a, a just. When I play an album, I let it run through, and my ears catch what songs that I gravitate towards. Facts, you know what I'm saying? So same. I'll go back, but like I said, I didn't get all the way through. I got to maybe like six, and sometimes like the album doesn't even get good until after like four or five yeah. you know what I'm saying? this is 19 tracks yeah, it's 19. so 19. and then even with that many records so i like i ain't i'm not gonna write it off yet because i've only gotten to six you know what i'm saying but it's I'm, like an hour long so like for yeah, real for real like got, i was only on like a 20 minute drive bro so like i just listened to what i listened to but i'm gonna definitely give it a run i like i said i know he got some shit on there i'm kind of funny because uh when an artist put an album out um I don't necessarily depends if it's like certain people, J. Cole, Fab, you know what I'm saying, niggas like that. But like I don't like every song from artists. You know what I'm saying? It's certain songs that like I like. Like Babyface Ray, like I don't like all his songs, but it's certain shit that like gravitate towards me. Like payroll is certain shit that gravitates toward me. Uh even new niggas, like I don't like all Uzi's songs, but he got certain mm-hmm. songs that you know what I'm saying, like I like. So 
it's just like for me, it's just like about certain shit that 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 catches my ear. Mm-hmm. Also, like I'll know if it's a good album overall, but I probably won't listen to the. I'm the type of person like if a whole album come out, I listen to it and the songs that I like, I'll snatch those songs off of there and put them on a playlist, and I probably won't even listen to the rest. Yeah, I think of the that's the anymore. access that we had to like music now. You could go and actually select single tracks to keep on an literally, album. Literally, bro, yeah. like that's what I literally do now. So like, if a new album come out, I'll take the songs off of that and add it to like the playlist of like the hot songs that I'm listening to at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So of course the biggest thing that came from this album dropping was the Meltdown record. Y'all any mm-hmm. y'all heard the Meltdown yeah, record yeah. with Drake? So um when I first heard it, I'm listening to it. I will say I like the record. Um I do felt like he got off on it, he did his thing. But of course everything surrounding was a diss yeah, and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like even with me liking the rapping aspect of it, I kinda felt like, bro, like it's been five years. You know what I'm saying? It's like we didn't get what we were supposed to get from it then. Like just kind of just leave that right. shit alone. You know what I'm saying? But I also feel like and this is I don't know why people didn't think about this at first. So, Cause you know, we just off the heels of the Jim Jones and Pusha shit. Right. I'm thinking to myself now, like, well shit, this is a perfect alley oop for Pusha if he wanted to to basically Pusha, do a Pusha, two birds, one stone type shit. Pusha still got his drama, his his gangster grills coming. Well, yeah, you, look at TC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> So I, I, that's that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, niggas like, don't think Push not about to let the rounds off I, on that I, shit. It's I, I about know to go it's coming. crazy, I know bro. It's coming. But and if we really if we really being honest, bro, Pusha T annihilated Wayne and Drake on the same song the on Exodus. Mm-hmm. Niggas don't talk about that song. That's a yeah. fact. That's, that's one of his best disses. Niggas don't talk about that. Wayne can fuck with that shit, bro. Yeah. His response was trash. Trash. But TC, it? before you go, uh, Mo, what is you? I want to get your thoughts on uh, the whole everything surrounding Meltdown record. Uh, I mean, I kind of like how you feel, man. It's been five years, bro. Like we, like you say, when it was time for you to, I've said this before multiple times here. When it was time for Buddy to really rap after the uh, uh, story of Adidon shit came out, you didn't do it. So. Right. Now it's just like you swinging that air now. So it's like, yeah. just let the shit go, bro. Like, you yeah, know? TC because even like when you dissing people now, like you're not even dissing. You ain't saying Pusha T name. You 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 taking shots at Pharrell more. Pusha T made Drake take care of his kid. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's crazy. Nah, so I think like he said, like it's been a long time. They've been going back and forth. Just keep it out, Pusha. I don't understand the, the Pharrell diss. That's my only grab yeah. about it. I don't understand why you had it. Like, you brought his chains for a reason. Like, he's one of those goats that you really don't say too much about. He's he's done everything. He's a humble guy. He's nice. I don't, like, unless it's some backstage or behind-the-scenes <laughs> thing that happened that made him do that, I think he just tried to... And you talk about burning down, like, some hip-hop artifacts at this yeah, point. Yeah, like, like, you bugging, like... <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's just kind of like, you catching strays because that's your big homie. I don't fuck with you, so shit. Your big homie about to catch I mean, these straights, too. I mean, he did it with too. Kanye, too. And it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. But bro, you got to like, look at it like, for a nigga to be like, yo, I'm about to go buy all his big homie chains just to put them bitches in a video and then melt them bitches down. Yeah, that don't make sense. Come on, man. Like, that's some... That don't make sense to me, you know, but... Like, that's some... But stay, stay tuned, man. It's a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> that's a, just stay tuned. All right. Just stay tuned, man. You know. And that's, that's all I wanted to hear. That's all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. You know. What was your reaction when you first heard it? Her what? Meltdown. Oh, when her meltdown, um, I was like another push of this. I was like just seeing how far or what he gonna do. I wasn't expecting the Pharrell thing. That's what caught me by surprise. I knew I was ready for a diss. I was ready for it because the anticipation with drum and um push at, uh gangster grills is is growing. So mm-hmm. with that already being circling around the internet, I knew Drake was gonna say something just to bring his first punch because Drake is a smart guy. He want to hit you and, and kill you first before anything. So I knew it was coming. He, he can't let it die. He is Scorpio. Like me, I know the vibes. Uh, that. But, I, but I also want to know when the song, it depends on how long ago the song was recorded as well, too. To my meltdown? Yeah. I, I do mean, you think that plays a factor? Well, it couldn't, because, been, it, it couldn't have been too long. It couldn't have been too long because, I mean, he only bought those that's chains. That's one thing I that always... Was the, yeah, when the Jumbotron it. shit video came yeah. out, Jumbotron right? came out so, November, December? That, that Jupiter auction ended like right before that, right before right. that shit, yeah. So, knowing Drake, bro, he probably calculated all this. Right? My thing is, too, I never always factor that into my, my analysis when I think about this record is about when it was recorded. And I, I don't know why it's just natural for me to not think about it, but you, yeah, that's a, mm-hmm. that's a good point. But This is my thing, though. And this is my thing when it comes to Drake, bro. If you're going to put your foot back in the ring again, 
and this man come back and dust your ass off again. Don't call Jay Prince. Don't call Jay Prince. <laughs> <laughs> because Listen, it's like, bro, what, what are we doing here? Because the first time you ain't even swing on the man. Now, I think I think that's what bothers me the most, Mo, is um the heighten the heightenness. Yeah. The, I see people trying to bring up the Jaw Rule Fifty Cent thing, but we didn't get the peak of okay. This response, okay. Where's your response? Mm-hmm. Like your response with, like it was a moment mm-hmm. that that those that, niggas was really that was a moment. Like, them no, niggas ran into real, each other in the and, street. And, it was real think, beef. That's real beef. And Pusha then, T and Drake is not running to each other. Yeah, they're not. They're not. Th- this was more for the sport, mm-hmm. and you didn't. You bowed out. And so but, my whole thing is like, bro, just just leave it. Like I said, I enjoyed. The re- I'm gonna listen to the record again, mm-hmm. but from a diss standpoint, it's like. I rather him had just left that alone. Yeah. Nah, for sure, for sure. Do you think like uh do you think you don't got a deep dive, but is there to you push a T is gonna have a response on the on the on the project with drama? For sure. Okay. For sure, for okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. He's gonna say something. He, he definitely gonna say something. I don't know how quite how he's gonna do it, but I see a situation where no, he, he T, come yeah. at both of them at the same time. Kinda it's a perfect too. play. Yeah. It's a perfect play. I mean, for anything, they kind of served it up to him. Like, yeah, my exactly, thing. Like, exactly. he served it. Like, Jim Jones. Especially with this verse right here. They kind of served it up to him. With yeah, Jim is, Jones yeah. dissing and him not saying, now Drake inserting himself in this. is like, bro, I think I y'all think, really fell into his trap. I think pushing more want to come at Jim Jones, though. Yeah. So? More I think right now, I think he, he got a feeling where he like, why Jim had to yeah, even say anything? Yeah. So now he like that. He Drake, he know... Or feel like he can handle Drake, but he like, yo, let me see what Jim doing. Drake is almost also dropping an album in two weeks too, mm-hmm. so we gotta know. Oh, the timing! Yeah. It's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of layers. It's a yeah, lot of, it's a lot of. <laughs> yo, niggas gotta know Drake is strategic, bro. He's on tour. Go ahead, go ahead. He's on tour, bro. He knew trash shit was coming out. Yeah. Drop the diss. He's telling he niggas. Tour, he's yeah. telling niggas, yo, I got the album coming in two, two weeks. weeks. Come on, man. But, but I think that's a, know, I think that's a trap though. We also know that boy from Virginia is, a, is an evil scientist too. So. Bro, listen, he's there's surgical. no doubt about it that Push not about to. He's surgical. He about to like, I, honestly, like I said, like you said, Drake bowed out. Mm-hmm. Like it's there's like to me, it's kind of like you picking and choosing who you want to fight. Exactly. That's like that's that like was me. My man, great with this whole thing. That's like me seeing both you, of y'all. You went, you went crazy. And on I'm me. like, shit. you go crazy with other people. I'm gonna fuck with you. But these others, you know, <laughs> like, but I ain't terrible. really fucking with him. Like, he tried to really close Meek out. Mm-hmm. He tried to end Meek, bro. Why it's not the same energy for Pusha T? I agree. You feel me? Like, because you know, when you get in a ring, bro, you know who your opponent is, right? He know Meek. Doing all this yelling, talking about this and this and this, such, such, such. It's only going to get but so far. Because he can kind of <clears throat> dumb it down and talk deep. And niggas that's really Drake fans going to be like, oh, this nigga Meek just screaming on yeah. tracks. Yeah. 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 You know it's so funny, bro, that you mentioned that. Or you talk about the Pusha fans and the Drake fans. Because just watching it. And I'm more of a Drake fan than I am a Pusha, mm-hmm. Pusha fan. I think we all are, for sure. I think when it comes. Because I'm listening to both of them when they mm-hmm. drop regardless. Mm-hmm. But just actually seeing the die hard pusher fans and the Drake fan, because Twitter is funny, y'all know this. Yeah, yeah. So I'll Twitter get on the hilarious. for you tab yeah. and I'll see a pusher, a pusher fan tweet, and then a Drake fan tweet, and they both presenting a case as to why yeah. this is acceptable. It, right. It's just funny. Right. So all of it in totality just goes back to I'm just ready to see how the timeline gonna react more than anything exactly. to to this pusher it's shit. Still a sport, man. It's still a good game that they doing. I like that. I like that as they rapping and it's still like uh the rap game, they're going back and forth. But after this, I mean, I don't want to. Hey, whoever win this, man, I don't want to hear nothing from the other side no more, man. See, me, it's, yeah, all I'm this time I think Pusha T's really going for the gusto this time. He kind of, like, he wanted yeah, yeah, yeah. to the first time. Like, he didn't talk about his, like, Drake didn't talk about his wife, you know what I'm saying? He didn't talk about his brother. He'd been sending shots his whole time. You know what I'm like, saying? So, and like I said, Pusha T made Drake take care of his kid. He, he put his baby moms out there. Niggas ain't really know who his baby moms was. I damn sure did. I went right to Instagram he that put, day. He put, the pro- <laughs> he put the problems out about Drake's dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, he telling niggas. He just his mom. Bro, he talking, about, uh, he talking about 40 being weak, yeah. not being able to really. You know what I'm saying? Like, he really doing his research versus. He, he, took, he hit every layer. He hit every layer. Like, bro, everything he. Like, he really threw jabs at him. Like, it wasn't like, no, just. Throwing and high in my hand type shit like nah, I can tell I can tell that like, it still this. bothers Drake because he's still on it five years later when essentially it ain't no real real beef. This was just some sport. Exactly. This is that this guy out slicked you and he hit it where it hurt. Like you know they would say like some jokes have some facts to it. Facts. And that's like yeah, push shit was witty, but a lot of that shit was true. Facts. And to be five years removed from that shit, it's like 
My nigga, when it's it was at the height, man. it's like Terrence, like for example, Terrence Crawford walking out the ring last night. Now you want to come fight, or Arrow walking out the Spence, you want to come fight five years later. Yeah. No, when you had the opportunity, you walked away, my nigga. Mm-hmm. Like you dropped the note in your. As a Drake fan, I was very disappointed in that shit. No, it was, I was. It's more. It's more of a psychological loss for Drake. Like it, it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Especially yeah. when you think you're the top yeah. nigga. Like for the top nigga to feel like, damn. That's like for for a nigga with all the money to get his his bitch taken. He's, that's he what like, it is. damn, I got all this yeah. bread and I still got my bitch taken. His public like, perception took a, a major blow. Hell yeah. So. But because he's Drake, it didn't write him off. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas was trying to write Meek off yeah. when Drake right. did that shit. You know what I'm saying? When he but, survived the blackface shit, that's when I knew he was like he's not he's not going nowhere. Facts. But the fact that it the fact that somebody was Witty enough to put it together and package it and Facts. really do damage to him. With like, the story of OJB. With the sto- yeah, with the that story. Was, that like, was nice. Like, See, that's the thing. Drake is scary and Push is scary, man. They both strategic individuals. So it's gonna be a good it's gonna be good because Drake got something in the chamber for sure. He know that push it coming. I don't think I, I, I don't think Drake. No, I don't know, man. Drake is scary because <laughs> if he room, opened bro. that door again, bro, he, I oh, don't. He, oh, he's opening a lot. He's opening. That's what again, I'm saying. Like, and then even with it, it's just so like the timing. I keep going back to the timing because I'm thinking Pusha was going to respond at the gym shit. Oh, yeah. now you want to hop back in this water. Yeah. So that's why I feel like it could be he also low, two birds one stone. He low key, low key dis, uh, gym on his last. If I'm push, catch it. if I'm push, I'm like yo, a tough for I need the illest beef from you. Yeah. And I'm gonna slaughter this nigga. I think you're gonna get them both at one time. It may be more towards Jim, but I think he might get them both at one time. Man, I he feel could. like he about to, he might to make Jim feel real small though. Yeah. He about to make Jim feel small. <laughs> even though I fuck with Jimmy. No, and even I like I like Jim, Jim response yeah, yeah. and everything. Cause yeah. you know, like they two different rappers, bro. Yeah. It's not even on the same lane. Like this nigga premiered the fucking song in Paris at Fashion Week. Yeah. You hopped on the block. And, Jim was on the block. I, I will say, say I will say though, like I think I do think Jim's was 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 nice at pause. It was good. I don't think definitely. it was nothing that blew me out the water and nothing like that, but it was good. It was a good response. But niggas also can't sleep on Jim. Jim dropped some hot projects during the yep. pandemic too. Yep. Word. That. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Me and Mo had a whole argument about he who had a better back shit. end in their career. Cameron and Jim. Shit. So he dropped some Jim shit. has definitely been, he dropped been killing shit. it. But so, I just think with this right here, it could get thick, man. <laughs> I don't know. Man, I'm ready to see. I'm ready to see the shots get taken. I'm really ready to find out shit that I that we didn't yeah. know. <laughs> I think that's, that's the biggest what, part that's about what it. Like, it be. That's the biggest part be. about it. Like, like yo, man, like man, niggas, that, that's what's going on. Cause bro, I thought Drake would have had the baddest baby moms in the world. Like nothing's wrong with Shorty. You know what I'm saying? But like you know, like mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. I, I I wanna I wanna play something for y'all real quick, Back. and this is this is in terms of uh, music, and this is something that's kind of been, it's kind of been a kind of annoying for me. Um, this is a reference to Tyler Creator talking about uh, older music and rap and how we like it. So I'm a, I'm gonna play this clip for everyone real quick. Uh, let me let me I get this. I think I watched this. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We got 17 year olds like, yeah, like ready to die and enter the Wu Tang is my top 10 album ever. I'm like, bro, you just got hair on your dick. You got young boys and babies out here, and that's your favorite. Album. Like, I don't care about people's objective, top nothing. Tell me what is your favorite. I want to know why you think uh, Pookie Dookie's second album is your favorite. Oh, I have memories attached to it. My brother did this when I was young, this and that, did that. In track seven, he talks about this. I don't care about no objective t- Dude, the kids be doing it with me. What kind of stupid shit is that? Everyone is making these lists just to have people engage. Why the fuck are we sitting here arguing about, oh, you don't got Tupac in your top five? Nigga, no. I was fucking born when that nigga was at his peak. Like, who gives a fuck? So my whole thing with this is I feel like (laughs) I feel like in rap is the only genre where we cannot have old shit as our favorites. Like I tweeted this other day is like anybody could say Marvin Gaye, Whitney Houston is my favorite R&B artist all time. And they're not combated with nigga. How you like them? We got SZA or we got her. It's only in rap where we can't revere old shit as our like. That don't mean that somebody's objective. That can honestly be a 17-year-old. Like, even when I was younger, when I was riding, my mom had me listening to older shit. I was riding with my uncles. I was listening to older shit. That's how I became a little big, how I became a little pop. It set, it set a standard. It please. set a standard. So it's like, that don't got to be their ob- objective. That could be, honestly, their favorite. And I feel like we have to get out of that. We can't revere the old shit as our fairs due to our age. Like, if you have a 17-year-old who's doing this due diligence and going back and listening to older shit, and that could just be off the strength of we their parents. We all did it. We all did we it. We all did it with our parents. And I just, I think it's very whack to, 
if somebody has an artist that they wasn't shit, they probably wasn't even alive when when Pac got killed. They could have been born 98, 99, mm-hmm. but music, I think what people have to understand is music is timeless for a reason. Yeah. The same way I revere Biggie is the same way I revere Whitney Houston. The same way I revere Tupac, same way I revere Stevie Stevie Wonder. One, I wasn't no, I wasn't even thought of when Stevie Wonder was at his peak, right. but he's still one of my favorite. But we don't do that with R&B. We only do that with rap. Yeah, nah. In fact, the the old and new thing is getting out of hand. Is the rap is the only place where you're old, you can't be old. But with the Tyler Creator uh, bit, um, it's twofold. I think he was just saying like, get in your space. Have your favorites in your space, in your lane, in your age range. Like you said, there's always going to be people that study and, and know from the older greats. I think he kind of coming in with the with the trolls and the people that's online just trying to give their top five to be engagements and 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 and, and um, be cool to the older people where it's, these younger cats that's coming at where they, they might be young legends when you just tap in and like – like how J. Cole and Nipsey is kind of like in our era. Yeah. Like those are our, like Kendrick, those are like really our goats. Like that's our era. So like I can say. Our era's goats, that's like yeah. our era goats. So it's like, <clears throat> why do I like them? Because I can tell you, I was hustling with with Nipsey in the car. We going to the States hustling and J. Cole, we hustling. And he, that's all we listen to while we going. That's why it means something to me. You know what I'm saying? He kind of just playing on, on the people that's, I think, you know, People that's not of our culture kind of giving lists that stuff you don't even know about just to seem cool. I feel you know I think saying? I think with our generation also, we was fortunate to cross over two generations of goats. Yeah. Like yeah. Wayne, yeah. Hove, and mm-hmm. Ye. Those are like yeah. my guys. I mean, yeah. oh, you see it when I yeah. post my yeah. my yeah. Uh, top five. And then okay, we cross over 2010s. Cole, Kendrick, J. Cole. That's when we was 19, What's your top 20s. Five? All time? Yeah. My top five all time is Wayne, Hove, Drake. Pac and at five I have five is kind of like a in between toss up. I might put big right there, but my four is solidified. That's Wayne, Hove, Drake, and Pop. All right, so my top five and no lists, right? Fab, J Cole, Hove, Wayne, and Nipsey. Okay, I respect That's that. That's my top five. Yeah, I feel you. That's my top yeah. And you know, if we do top my top ten, you know, we start throwing in cams and niggas like yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, like niggas that really get it crazy. But for my top five of niggas that I could just listen to these niggas for the rest of my life. Those, or those like, would be the ones. Niggas niggas are speaking on certain tracks. Like like he said, we used to be trapping. We on the road listening to Nip. J. Cole got shit where he talked about, you know what I'm saying? Being in between college and trying to figure out his life together and mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Losing his virginity and running around with his homie that sold drugs, but he was the good nigga. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. all different type of yeah. shit. And even like the Wayne era, like to me, if we really had to go down in history, like Wayne had the biggest run and probably is like top two most influential rappers. Of- Without a doubt. Yeah. Bro, if you look at all of these hey, niggas man, now, they look like Wayne in early 2000s. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Like if you look at Thug, like his his first come up, he he's Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne, bro. Lil Wayne. Like bro. when he when he started the I came from nothings, that's Wayne. Like, fact. it's crazy. Man. I think I just think, man, we I think there can be a a come together type thing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, bro, everything can exist. Not for sure. And it, it shouldn't have an age limit. Mm-hmm. Now like, you do. I agree. Like what TC oh, said yeah, earlier, um, you do have some of the trolls. Not like you sure. just be like, oh yeah, you gonna say this because it's cool, but like I know some dudes who like re- just just it could be all the strength of their parents. They run like, no, bro, I genuinely like this Ready to Die album by Biggie. Yeah, I wasn't alive, but I genuinely like it. Of course, you're gonna have some of the trolls and shit like that, but dog, you gotta think. Time- if it's timeless, it's timeless. You can't argue it. That's what I always say with music. Music, Michael Jackson, I damn sure wasn't even thought of when Mike was at his peak. I caught like t- like Dangerous and you know. Um, yeah. Towards the end of he that time, I was born around those times. I was like, born yeah. ninety one. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, so all Mike's peak shit was way before I was thought of. But mm-hmm. man, my mom, my dad, like Michael's music will never die. Mm-hmm. That is great, literally great, great fucking literally. music. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have a problem saying Mike is the goat, mm-hmm. and none of us was alive for his shit. Mm-hmm. We call him the king. But that's black people, period, bro. Like in country music, you're not hearing niggas killing each other. These old niggas are touring for the rest of their lives. And I you think Marcus niggas, has spoke about that one time. Yeah, like, bro, ain't nothing wrong with a rapper 70 years old still. Right? Why you can't? Niggas is like, oh, you too old to be going on yeah. tour doing all this. But I you mean, got. Rap, rap, rap just turned 50. Like, yes. Like, <laughs> literally, bro. Like, Grandmaster Flash is still alive, isn't yeah. he? Like, these yeah. niggas, like, yeah. the Furious Five, these niggas are still mm-hmm. alive. Like, bro, my, my, you know who my grandfather says the best rapper in the world is? Who? Curtis Blow. 
I understand but that, it. But that makes sense for him, <laughs> You feel what I'm saying? Because yeah. I had to go back and listen to this shit. I'm like, yo, in that era, he was rapping like yeah. a nigga wasn't really rapping. You know what I'm saying? My, bar- so, my barber favorite rapper is Big Daddy Kane. Like, that's Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane was that nigga. Yeah. Like, you know he what I'm saying? Nigga, like, yeah. right. Big Daddy Kane, rock him. Like, they said Rocky mom says she named him after Rock Kim yeah. because this nigga was the illest nigga He's in the street. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So like that shit just definitely has an error, man. Um, but I definitely think music isn't sticking as it was back in there because bro, if an album come out, you listen to it, and then it's a rap. It's a rap for it, yeah. Unless it's literally like it's what, real microwave. What's type the shit? last best album for y'all that's like, yo, this that shit really stuck? stuck? For me, it would be CLB before then. Donda probably too. CLB and Donda. I about to say like either either um, uh, either Donda or uh, and off rip. I wasn't a fan of Donda, but when I sat with it, all right. So let me Kanye tell you, Kanye really did a great Listen, job. I went to I went to both album. of the shows that he did in Atlanta. Okay, the first show, crazy because it was literally like it's new. He just put that shit together, yeah. and like how you were saying, as far as not knowing who's on the songs, you're listening to the songs, and you're like, yo, who the fuck is on that shit? And then we came back to this shit the next time, everything was completely different. Then he done had the baby come in. He yeah. done had Cardi. These, I think the locks came. Locks, all, like, Jada, yeah. Quavo and all these yeah. niggas come in. So like, that was definitely a big. But I'm thinking like even like bro, those albums ain't even really stick to me. Like Certified Lover Boy, that shit ain't really stick to me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I can't really say what was the last album that really really stuck to me. Maybe like. Chris, Chris, Mike. My fault. I can't even really remember to make the last album that really stuck to me. But just saying, like, I think songs stick, not necessarily like an album. Like, so, like, we not gonna be talking about like. I think we're gonna be talking about songs back like later on in the future mm-hmm. versus like complete albums. I unless it that. was like, like a like a certified lover boy or like. The shit that Twenty One and Drake just put together, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like certain, that one too. That was a I fuck with that one. Like, that, I fuck with her loss. That album was fire. That album. But was I fire. think those two for sure. Like Donda, Donda definitely grew on me. Probably like that month after. Like, like even I still um, play that. what is it? Never. What was Drake shit? That never mind. It. I hated that shit, bro. I I even go for. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, bro. You gotta get on vacation and be out with some baddies on the beach. <laughs> That's what you know what I'm saying? saying? Like, that's like, what niggas be bro, saying, but I, say, I, I, I don't think I gotta feel like it. I don't nigga gotta feel like it, bro. What Drake you said, Drake, be on a boat somewhere. Yeah. Drake was like in St. Bart's or somewhere. He was on somebody. He was like, man, by the time niggas catch on to this shit, we'll be gone. Like, a nigga gotta go to Ibiza and Bali and be out this motherfucking rip. Like, bro, it may be 10 years later from now. Niggas might be on a yacht. And put that bitch on and be like, this, this, this was the vibe. This was the so you vibe. think you think honestly, never mind, can survive the test of time? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Because what you know what in the black culture we're not listening to it, bro. But if you go into like like bro, like I just came back from DR. Like I think we was at like sitting outside a restaurant or somewhere outside eating, and the songs was coming on. You know what I'm saying? So like a nigga not just getting in that shit, but if you go in, like I didn't hear you hear them shits in the mall playing. You know what I'm saying? So like. You go in Forever 21, like that shit may be playing or some shit like that. So you think so, the setting really matters? The setting definitely matters, bro. For that album, definitely matters. You're not about to get in your car and listen to that shit because it's like some, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like yeah. some, yeah. it's like some motherfuckers. It's, shoulder bop. it's, it's, shoulder it's bop. like sparkles and lamb chops coming out and motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moat bottles and shit like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Niggas in all white linen and shit like that. Like that type of shit. Like nigga ain't just about to get in his car and play, honestly, never mind. You know what I'm saying? But. Like it's certain songs on there, like text. When I when I listen to it, I kind of get what you're saying. It's a vibe, bro. Um, what was the one song? I do I do like one of the songs on there. It was called. Uh, uh, what was he saying? He was talking about the girl, the girl pussy on there. Damn, what was that song? It bro? pussy. That that yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, listen, man. I ain't gonna hold you, man. You wavy somewhere. That's that's the listen, way. Listen, man. Album, listen, man. 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 You somewhere. On the that's island. the one off there. You got a you got a pina colada. You got a Long Island. You got some Casamigos or whatever. That joint come on. And you see some beautiful women. You like this. That's, is all right. When I heard <laughs> you know that one, I was like, this is the one off here. This is the one. That's the yeah, one. Yeah. Not even when it came out, but that's why I fuck with it too, because it's like he experimented. Any 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 artist that's experimenting with shit and not just doing any artist that's experimenting with shit and not just doing the. The normal one too, bro. I'm down with it. Just right. like we was just talking about Uzi. Like Uzi's been a rock star, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, but he okay. never really got a chance yeah. to get that rock okay. album off. You know what I'm saying? So he got this rock album off. The shit, bro. And it's not just 
like he just put that shit out. The shit is on the top of the charts. Mm-hmm. So niggas got to be listening to it. You know what I'm saying? Niggas got to Oh, Uzi fans is, is in a big group, so exactly. he going to sell. Like, bro, yeah. Uzi's fans is so, like, they troll TC. Yeah. Like, bro, where's, I was trying to explain, where's the song at, bro? We was explaining this. <laughs> Drop the album, album, bro. I know you got it. Like, we was explaining this to our homie Marcus who be on here. We was like, yo, like. Cause he was saying Kodak and Uzi like on the same level, and I'm I say like they might. Marcus, be you my dog, but you. He you said that on three the years ago. Actually, they, on might, you they, on might, they, might, they might be like popularity wise, but they fan bases are different. It's bro. different. When Uzi dropped, when Uzi dropped, the world stops for Uzi like release. Bro, bro. like listen, Uzi fans are one of the toughest fans I ever seen in my life. When I was. I see it, like I said, I seen it outside, like fans go crazy. You know how fans used to go crazy. You see it on, on TV, but the fans are nuts. Why he got a solid, it's, it's why he is so successful and why he always going to be successful because his fan base is so solid. Anything he dropped, they listen, support it. They support it. And then they, at the end, they support it and they critiquing things. They looking up things. They looking at who was in the studio session. They want to know everybody involved. They found me. They found people that you didn't even <laughs> think be like. like your hand, bro. Yeah, I'm not even like even. <laughs> and I'll be low. I'll be like, I'm not even part of like the whole like, like he did all his stuff in New York. Like the early Uzi days, I was around in the studio and stuff like that. Like the newer stuff, I ain't like hands on like that right now. But. Even then, they be like, I know you got some old stuff. TC, send the old stuff in your computer. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to go on live and go <laughs> snip bass and stuff like that. They be like, I know you got that. But they go hard. They'll find where your location. They'll find where you live. That's find crazy. Your, they, they even have the engineer's mom number. They'll try to find the last place you stayed. They're trying to do everything. Hack your computer. Hack your phone. They go hard. Damn, that's, that's crazy, crazy bro. Yeah, like, it's... It's, it's crazy. Kodak, Kodak up there. Doing that, Kodak fans up there. Kodak just a good artist, so yeah. he always gonna keep it coming. But his fan, like Uzi fan base, will like ride for him. You yeah. tell that. You tell him to do anything, they doing it. Speaking of Kodak, how did how did y'all uh, feel about the reaction people had for him uh, doing the record with Six Nine? You know, being that Kodak, Kodak that me and most actually spoke on it a little bit um, about how clever he did it. In, in terms of the verse, like he's like, bro, we ain't we ain't doing nothing in the streets. This is business, and you do have a lot of artists who. Who could be from the streets, mm-hmm. but they'll they'll do they'll do a record with somebody like Six Nine and just keep it straight like that. He said, "I'm so raw, I got a rat giving me cheese." Yeah, I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you, 100. percent I'm conflicted about that situation because I get one side people saying it's the money and all that extra stuff, but my point is, if you an artist and you came out or come out portraying a certain lifestyle and you that type of person, you gotta have integrity in this other lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? It's about integrity and not always doing things for the money. Like, it comes down to you being a human being. That means anybody can offer you anything and you do it. Yeah, you know what I I'm see saying? that part. You know what I mean? I just think about you being an individual. It's got to be something that that's your integrity, that's something that holds you to you where it don't matter. No amount of money, I'm not sacrificing my character or doing that. I think right now these new kids and these people in general are lost that respect for themselves and just doing anything for money because you know it's tough out here right now people need money so people need uh do anything for bread so that's where i'm conflicted at i mean go ahead get your money do what you need to do but as far as the artist that you're supposed to be a street artist you talk all this i just think your integrity should have been different and with that situation right so that's where it's really so you, tough you, side, you side with boozy on i'm signing I, like i'm <laughs> signing so what like boozy kind of aggressive with how i approach yeah which is cool and all that but i just you get the point i get the point you know what i'm saying where he was coming from like hey get your money you gotta feed your family finesse it like a lot of people don't get a million dollar for a verse you're right but if you that person it's certain things that I would never do. Like, you know how, like, you know, um, Dave Chappelle said he'll never put on a, a dress. dress, a dress. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's integrity. Like, he, you know how much money somebody probably offered him to do something? That's the line he drew for himself. You know what I'm like, saying? Yo, it's I'm a line you that, draw because yeah. you get lost in this industry if you don't do that, you know? So that's where I'm at with it. Got you. Chris? Um, one, I think the streets is finished, bro. It's not no, like, because if that was the case, bro, like, 6 9 wouldn't even be able to... What niggas have to understand is 80% of the people that's listening to music are not in the streets. Facts. Bro. That's what, what keeps 6 9 alive, actually. That's music, music career wise. Music career wise. He, and bro. then he's doing, he's more so in the, uh, this, he's in the, the Latin he, space. Like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Latin space. Crossover, like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it, it's, it's politics. I mean, even if we want to get down to the, the thug and gunner situation, like, it's politics. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, well, like niggas is picking choosing who they wanna exactly 
who they want to rock with, who they don't. But I mean, in all actuality, I really wish like nobody would have ever made music with Six Nine again. You know what okay. I'm saying? Just because like he blatantly he used, did he used, snitch. Yeah. And then I'm conflicted with it because, like, yes, he snitched, right? But he put himself in that position. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like you put that self, you put yourself in that position, and then snitch. Yeah. That's where it's fucked up. At the way I look at that shit is like, it's like, yeah, he put himself in a situation, but also the people who were supposed to be handling him in the situation, they kind of got they want to be in the spotlight exactly, as well instead exactly, of playing their role. It was, exactly. it was mistakes on both sides exactly, of that situation. Exactly. So it was, like, it was definitely a mistake because they was looking at the money, yeah. and it wasn't even that long. Nah, it wasn't long. Saying, and, and it's, it's they it wasn't it didn't long. Last that long. Was six nine even hot for a year? Barely. He barely had a year. Because he and went half. he went in at the end of eighteen. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Like he wasn't even Gummo hot came out like when seventeen. Yeah, he wasn't even hot a complete. So the, all that days. for all that for what? So now y'all locked up, and I think. I understand both sides of the civilian aspect and then the streets aspect. And what I want people to understand is y'all need to understand both sides. Because people are like, oh, fuck them rules. No. like So it could be something as small as, let's take it to a family member. Mm -hmm. Let's say me and my sisters. I have two sisters. Me and my sisters, we kids. We doing some dumb shit, right? We run around. So we know going into it what the cost is. Then when we get caught up, I throw my sister under the bus. That's snitching. Yeah. So it's like it's the same thing applied to the it's the same logic just on the street level. It's like, but the civilians can't understand. Oh no, if I get caught, I'm gonna tell too. No, no, because you knew the risk. You subscribe to a when, you, when you sign up for something. Yeah, exactly. Like we've seen it even in the in the in the school level. Teach out the room or some shit like that. Kids mm-hmm. do some dumb shit. Then they come. Oh, who did this? Yeah, because all of but if somebody get to say something, this room cutting up. But, but if somebody say something, it's like, yeah, oh, I like, can't hey, fuck with you because yeah. you know when we get caught, you gonna throw me under the yeah, bus. Yeah, nigga, all, of, all of us in here cutting the rug, but then when the teacher come back, you want to tell on That's us, nah, fact. nigga. That's like now That's we gotta fact. go to the we gotta go to the weight room now. Yeah. We then, got to, and it's just like personally, eternally, like I have stronger feelings about that shit when it comes to like being with somebody and being caught with some somebody and telling on them. You know what I'm saying? Like me and him then been caught with some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. Kept our head up, stay solid. And it's some cats both, you can't roll with. We both took the same lip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, oh, such and such, his shit was worse than mine. Like, like you said, if you know what you're getting into, then you know what it is. Like, it ain't no backing out after that. So, for me, that's when it really, like, for a nigga to be... My, my crazy thing is... For you, a it's to, the, the, the blatantness behind for it. For a nigga to yeah. portray, like, a certain yeah. this, this, and this. It's and like then once you get in trouble and snitch, that's all that be the craziest part, bro. But for a nigga that's a complete civilian, bro, and... He might have just been with his cousin and got into some shit and he snitched. I expect that nigga to snitch. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like, but the the way the way it's so warped now, like they'll they'll go hard on him like he's was an alpha thug. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like Perfect example. Gunner and Duke took the same plea deal. Everybody only, getting only on Gunner. Getting scrutinized. Listen, Gunner and Duke took the same plea deal, bro. I'm sitting. Shout out to Chef Harvard at Toast on Linux. <laughs> I'm sitting in, I'm sitting in toast, bro, and Duke is sitting there like regular, like with his with two girls in his home. Oh, this just, recently. It's like three weeks ago. Like he's still moving around the air like every year. But everybody on Gunner Head, like you a snitch. All of them niggas took the same plea deal, bro. You feel what I'm saying? But what it was though, to me, look it look at it, it's like niggas had an underlining problem with Gunner already yeah. prior to this that's shit. That's you know what, what it seemed that's like. That's what me. I've been saying this whole time. Like, bro. And they like using way, this to get it out. The way Literally. the way the way uh even like, cause I'm a big fan of Lil Got It, but the mm-hmm. way he go crazy at Gunner, it's like, bro, like, like, bro, I just saw Got It in the airport maybe when I was coming to South Carolina last time. Uh, he was in there with like two little homies and shit like that. But I'm just like, bro, like, he on Gunner head, like for what, like, they not call not nobody. All else. y'all niggas took the same plea deal, bro. Yeah. Um, funk, all of them niggas, like everybody. Everybody was a slime life shorty nigga. All of them niggas, bro, took the same plea deal. But that just lets you know, like, Thug wasn't that's I mean, Gunner wasn't one of Thug's day one homies. Like, he was like a nigga that Thug got cool with and he was his homie. So you think that's why they acting and like that? He blew up. He Gunner's the top nigga yeah. over everybody. Yeah. Nah, that is true. Right under Thug, so it's kinda no, like fact. He is the top nigga on the Even thug. when he dropped his album now, it was kinda like with no features, he's still the man. Like he don't really need nobody. Right. And you got to speak to Gunner's demographic. It ain't just the street nigga, black people. He got a large. He's huge. He, yeah, say, he's huge. Yeah. Gunner's a star. Niggas seen Gunner come up too. That's why. The I, white kids love him. <laughs> 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 he was the first person to play Gunner's song. What song was that? From that drip season. Uh, 
Going through some, going so, that, going through the change. Going, going through a yeah, phase. Yeah, yeah, change is yeah, 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 phase. Uh, it's, it's tough for me. That situation tough for me because I got a relationship with Gunna and Thug. Okay. So it's just, it's, it's crazy though. Like I seen, I seen Gunna's come up. We kind of was like, and I say come up together, but like I was interning. He was just like a runner for Thug, to be honest. Just Thug come in, do his thing, and he just be sitting there. He go get some something to drink or something for Thug and. Doug will fall asleep in the studio and he'd be like, Yo, Slime, you, you mind if I go in the studio, get some reps in? And by this time, Doug be passed out. It'd be like 10, 9 a.m. already. And then gonna go and do, uh, go in the booth for about an hour or two, just get off and just try to practice and stuff like that. So it's crazy. I seen that situation. I did one of Gunner's first merch um, products too for his tour. Kind of helped with that uh, design when I was on my creative direction bag. So this is a weird situation, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. I, let me let me ask you this: being that you in the kind of like in that in that circle, mm-hmm. do you do you understand more so from others outside looking in how it could be hard for somebody who's in that circle to choose a side in terms of gun and thug? Oh, I definitely see. It's 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 the it's division now because of that situation. I mean, okay, it's, it's definitely tough because it's people that be like, gonna had to do what he had to do. Uh, Gunner wasn't wrong and Still people believe that Thug Is not mad at the situation But you know Everybody got their own Little rumors Everybody talked to Some people talked to Slime more than others So it's really it's, That's what I'm saying The game's wide open The streets is crazy Atlanta is really in a A, a rebuilding phase almost mm-hmm. Because that situation Was so tough The DA still on a lot of people you know, you see other artists as is more low, not more. Is that gang gang yeah, stuff is low. Yeah. You know, it's not a lot of you know initials and stuff like that. You see around other people's uh, names and stuff like that right now. People just low, so that it, it definitely took a toll. And then just the split between those two is just tough right now. You know, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I, I just I know that's a one a, a continuous conversation, but I just feel like if you if both sides kind of understand what the other side coming from it's like like chris was saying earlier about with the civilian aspect and it's like but you gotta understand these people who live in their everyday life they don't care nothing about that shit they're not gonna understand it so of course they're gonna be on this oh yeah i would have told too but then it's just all about an understanding it's all about an understanding like you said yeah some people civilians fine always gonna be at the end of the day gonna have to do what gonna have to do for himself so when you 60 years old Looking back at it, it's not going to be all gang gang when you're six years old with your family somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You got to be out and living. So it, it's just a it's a weird space. But like I said, know who you are and know what space you are. And you got you to carry that integrity with you. If you a street nigga, if you a killer, if you a drug dealer, if you a hustler, everybody got their own integrity, own lines they cross. So keep that where it's at. So that's why it's this weird space. But, you know, shout out to both. It's all love. You know, hopefully the situation work out. Mm-hmm. Mo, you want to ask something? Uh, you yeah, that I found I found that shit like very because when Kodak went first of all, I kind of already had knew in my mind Kodak. I don't see Kodak turning that shit down because he don't for for one Kodak don't give a fuck with nobody thing. Let you know he his own man though, <laughs> and he yeah. let you know where he said on certain shit. So I wasn't surprised the least bit at all at uh, none of that shit. Um, some other funny shit that actually came up in the news I wanted to speak on was um this kind of played the most theory like me and him done had this conversation before so he might get on me now about this being that you know the government was talking about like how they've had uh interactments with like ufos and shit they got aliens and shit so yeah. um my whole thing still it is always gonna be bro just sh- show me some shit bro that'd be my thing show me some until i actually see something like what is it what is it to hide because it don't seem like they a threat it don't seem like they're a threat. Them niggas got to be a threat. And, you know, to be real with you, you know, to be real, if I was a think there, because I don't think we're the only things, period, in this. In this. But as far as Earth, if there was a place on Earth that had aliens to meet. We would know about it, right? Not even that. They would be deep in the fucking water. So, that's what the movies you get are what telling I'm saying? us, bro. So, if you think about it, right, um, the last Black Panther movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what's the other movie? Um, what's the movie, bro, with the... Avatar. Okay. These past two movies have been underwater. Okay. So, is I've read so many things. You about think there's it. a connection? There's a connection to it. Like people are saying it's evil as well because people are saying like you know what I'm saying like like hell underwater type shit. You know what I'm saying like because we don't know what's underwater. We only could go but so deep. Exactly. We only could go but so deep. So it's kind of like it's it's kind of tricky, man. It, it's kind of tricky. Yeah, them Titanic. 
submarine niggas found out the hard way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. That water pressure yeah, is, is different. Yeah, that, that water pressure is different, different man. got to be aliens down there with that pressure, bro. If the aliens out here, I don't want no problems, bro. We we listen us as black people we fuck with y'all man. But most most subscribe to the NPC theory. So what, what did you think about the news when you first heard it? I mean, it kind of tie all that shit in together. But um, I go back further, like, cause me me and my me and my brother Dolo was talking about that the other day. We was basically saying, um, even back to them first coming here, like they kind of it had to be something that signaled them to come here because if you go back to like the like when they first started coming, like the '50s, '60s, we we start hearing about like it, like in a. Like so you a think they've been here that long? Not for sure. I mean, yeah, because I think they've been pulling up. I mean, because you think started, they've been pulling up? Yeah, I think it started. Been it started magnifying like when when the Hiroshima bomb went off. So what I think happened is they saw that shit from out of when space. that when that shit went off, that shit it triggered something out there, mm-hmm. and it was like, yo, what's going on? What's what's this? You know what I'm saying? Nah, so they wanted to pull up. They pull up to see what's going on or to possibly help us because I've been watching a lot. Of, I'll put, I'm going to send y'all some links later, but I, 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 some I, I, interviews, <laughs> I watched some interviews and they've been like, if they out there was well, being that they out there and they could have been, came and did something to us. That was they my trying, thing. They trying to help. They trying to, they trying to put us on game about something. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they being suppressed some way. So I was watching something on um, CNN the other day and, uh, this guy, I forgot his name, but he was supposed to be the whistleblower mm-hmm. for this shit. I can't remember his name, but just the way that he was speaking, bro, he was he was very watchful. He was very watchful about what he was saying, and he was pretty much saying in a sense of like, the shit's here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They even had a pilot talk on record, and he was like, "Yo, like they um they pretty much told us to go pull up on this shit." The shit was hovering over the water. Yeah. He said it was hovering over the water, you know, and it's just creating a white cloud of water. He said the shit hovered over water, and he said when they got close to it and they went down to go look at it, the shit took off. <laughs> they said they somehow they saw it on the radar or some shit like that, but it was like, I forgot how many miles away it was, but they was like, bro, it, 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 it wasn't so quick, supposed yeah. to move that fast. Like, nothing was supposed to move that fast, yeah. like how that shit moved. And, I mean, bro, people not just mm-hmm. seeing nothing. Like, I mean, we seeing this shit on World Star, bro. Shit not just shooting across the sky out of nowhere. Like, niggas is seeing this shit. Well, I, I, I've seen shit with my own eyes. So like, like niggas is seeing this shit. Like, like you know? do I think, like, do I, I mean, because what's the movie with Will Smith? Um, Independence Day. Independence Day. Like, do I think aliens really look like that? Hell yeah. Like, I really... So? Hell yeah, bro. I hope not, man. I really think them niggas got ships like that and shit well, like that, bro. For real, for real. Like, no I bullshit. Think, I think it's like different types of them. I think it's like... They, they, it's kind of like animals, a species. Yeah. Different species of them, boy. Like, it, they can very well range from four feet tall to eight feet tall. Like, or some shit like that. Like, you got to think, it's, if it's... If niggas coming from different dimensions and universes, they gonna look different. Nah, that's it's a fact. It's gonna be completely different. I just from hope us. they don't like, look like the alien versus predators niggas. Oh you know yeah, what I'm <laughs> if, if it's some shit like that, we in trouble. If it's shit like that, we in trouble. Like, we fucked, bro. Yeah, we fucked. We but, fucked. I, mean, I, I think it could be something where they ain't really trying to fuck with us, or they may be suppressed. My whole thing is like, bro, we have way too much technology, way too much video, not to get something. It's so always fun. like, just even recently went somewhere, like some Mexi- Mexicans was like, yeah, this shit back here, and da da da. Yeah. Like, my nigga, y'all didn't get no no recording. We record everything else. I Motherfucker, mean, shade room could get videos right, or shit. We ain't right, never thought of, right. but I, we can't I mean, seem to get no video of these aliens, bro. I think about a lot of shit, bro. Even like even like say like uh the Apollo program, right? They supposedly went to the moon 1969, yeah, and think. they stopped 1972. Yeah. Now the way of technology just has leaps and bounds just from there yeah. to now. You mean to tell me? Y'all ain't never gone back since? That's a fact. Yeah, that's I just a fact. saw a video. Why? I just saw what? a video of did the white guy. Up there? Right. This white happen? dude was pressing the nigga that said he walked on the moon. He's like, why did you say you walked on the moon? Well, you see? Like, it was five bands. Yeah. Like, it was nigga, he was just like, nah, cool. he was just trying to get out of there. Yeah. I don't think that nigga went to, he ain't walk on the moon, bro. A lot of people don't think that shit was real. I don't think it was real either. But then I also heard the reason why, for the people who do believe that they went, they didn't go back because they ain't shit up there but rock. And this is another thing I thought too. This is another thing, or something that I heard. A black, they sent the black man up there first. 
A black man was the first nigga to walk. That would make sense. That would make sense. Just in you case something happens. You think let's, they would send this nigga up here first? You think, was you think they would send It would sending, make sense. You feel what I'm saying? They like, wouldn't send an important white man to go up there first. They want to use us as the man. guinea pig. Just, I, I, that, makes that makes sense. That makes sense. The shit, the shit, the shit, the shit that's always stand out to me is because it's like, all right, y'all stopped going there in the 70s now, but now y'all just want me to believe that y'all doing all this shit at Mars and all this other shit. So what what happened on the moon specifically for y'all that to you just bypass that, that y'all and y'all just go straight to Mars? Y'all going to Mars, yeah. y'all telling me what's going on and, and Pluto and all this other shit. Like, That's y'all seeing fact. light beams. And, but why y'all stopped going here in the 70s, though? Isn't that moon supposed to be here? Yeah, the moon supposed I, to be And I feel like we're supposed closer. to be- Mm. You should be able to get to the moon fast as shit now. Technology. Right. Crazy. Oh, no, no. We get there quick. Uh, Mars is like, I, I mean, when I was a kid, they told me this was the time frame. They said at the time, this is like 2000. So it, it might be faster now. Mm. They said from Earth to Mars, was it would take like three years, four years to get there. Shit. Now they get in there. I don't know what the time frame is. They get in there now because Mars is far away. Yeah. It's like what? Four planet? Mm-hmm. Four planet? That's that's the, Is that the planet behind us? Or oh, I'm tripping? I ain't gonna lie. It I is, forgot, right? I, my I, I don't planets. forgot. Let me ask you this. If y'all had the chance, would you go into space? Oh. Fuck no. Nah, no. There's too many variables. I can't, it's too much variables. I, I can't control a lot of shit out there. I can't, so. It's too much variables. My, my Not risk, even water. My risk factor re, uh, meter kind of goes high man, on that can, one. Man, you, know you, know can get on, you can get on the highway in a car and get to a car accident as soon as you need it. But you facts. can control that's getting facts. into that car. Yes. You can control a lot in that car. Man, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> nah, dog. I, I'm scared as hell going up this. Gonna, going. It's too many, <laughs> man. Bro, going, bro, the air pressure, bro. I'll be, it's a lot. Yo, yeah. I gotta make sure everything in my uniform. You can yeah. run to a black hole and it's over with. Word. <laughs> Never coming back. First of all, where's the where's the map? Like, I gotta see where Word. I'm going. I need to know. Bro. GPS on the app Word. ain't working. Out First right. of all, I can blow up before I even leave the uh, Earth that's atmosphere. The, exactly. That's the thing, too. It's you tough blowing up there. The pad. Right. So. Meter. I think I think when we co- when it comes to shit like I mean I done seen some of the crazy shit is it dope yeah like the guy who jumped from the edge of the earth this was like a few years ago I can't remember his name he's like a he's one of them daredevil type but I think he's like a he's like a BMXer or some shit mm-hmm. like that but he he like Red Bull sponsored the whole shit I remember, I watched the yeah, shit I live that, I so he, they put him up and he was literally like at the edge of earth so he's kind of in space mm-hmm. but he's at the edge of earth so basically when he drops when he drops out he won't get taken off in the space mm-hmm. right. this nigga did a drop. From the motherfucking shit. He need a super but, suit or something. Yeah, he did. Oh no, trust me. He, they went through the whole thing before they did this. He did the he did the farthest jump in his. This is for like a record, the farthest mm-hmm. jump in history. But I think when we start talking about like the depths of the ocean, space, we are tapping into shit that we we got some smart people who are on it. But there's some shit we just don't know. So would I take a trip to Mars? Fuck no. Fuck yeah, no. Yeah, it's stuff that no. If you, bro. If a human don't know what's in space or in, uh, uh, in the ocean, bro, it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be that way. That's yeah. how I look at it. Word man. up. And I think we were created body wise for a reason. It's yeah. a reason why we can't go yeah. but so far in yeah. the ocean. And it sucks, honestly, honestly, that our skin is just so fragile. You it's know, very I mean? fragile. Like it's, a fucking paper cut is a bitch. A splinter is a bitch. But that's you know what I'm saying. The, the second body Black Panther movie yeah. told us, like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the niggas that could get down there was different. I mean, think about animals compared to us. Animals are way more... How can I say? Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they can survive a lot more than us. Yeah. Even think about, like, when... You go out into the wild, they eat it right there. They're not prepping it. We don't we can't go out there and just eat a giraffe we'll sick. as is. Yeah, we'll we can probably yeah. fuck around and die. So for I sure, think people sure. really underestimate how fragile the human body is sure. um, to diseases shit like these animals can go out I mean we see it all day a vulture fly down eat something that they've been laying on mm-hmm. the ground but they body can yeah can they do have that. Vulture, they built. vultures have glands that will digest uh intoxicated meats nice. pause yeah. that lions yeah same shit that can digest certain certain meats that are our, our bodies just will literally got throw them up or we might go into shock behind if a, it. If a Komodo yeah. dragon bites you, that should Yeah, kill you're you. fucked. And yeah. they're not even poisonous. It's just that they got so much bacteria in them. Bacteria like, in their saliva. It's a mixture because you better make sure you're within the hospital within like 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right. for I sure. I mean, you can survive, a, you can survive certain bites, um, but it, it's all about timing. Timing. But I think with us and our body just being so fragile, we shouldn't be fucking with certain shit. Oh, for sure. But let me, let me tell y'all, back on that alien shit, bro, honestly, I think they will show us this if... They know that, all right, so the, we know the news controls the world, essentially. So, like, so to create mass panic. Yeah, that's what it's about. That's really what it is. Niggas really will lose their fucking mind. And they know that we're literally on the break of the littlest things really right, right, right. It's snapping points for a lot of individuals. Listen, these niggas come out the sky. What the fuck are we going to do? Exactly. And they're coming out. But now let me just, 
let me just tell y'all, if you've ever, I would just say go to the beach when there's no moon out and it's literally stars out or even just lay out in your yard or something like that. I'm, I'm a person who does psychedelics, so I, I look at the sky a lot. There's satellites that looks like satellites that they say is satellites, but it'd be they like, move, yo, bro, are these hell. stars moving? <laughs> are these sh-? And like, granted, like dead ass, bro, but only when there's no moonlight that I actually see a lot of shit happening in the sky, like mm-hmm. shooting stars, stars that I think are shooting stars. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just a lot just to look at. But, I mean, it's right here for us. We just got to take the time to look at it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's billions of galaxies. Facts. We, I mean, even our galaxy, we're on the outskirts of our galaxy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, I'm not going to be stupid. Than, I think there's another Earth. And I think there's another Earth with human beings just like us. I just don't know where it's at. I this, You cannot tell me there's probably not another, probably like not exact name, like another Mo, another Chris, another TC, another human race on another planet somewhere. It don't make sense to me for us to be the... It kind of be selfish type of thinking to think we the only... Life forms in billions of fucking galaxies, bro. Yeah, we'll be ignorant to think that. Like, come on, that shit don't even make that's sense. Like, that's, that's why I also think about the uh, to uh, kind of bring back up uh, they clone Tyrone. I don't know if y'all seen that movie. For sure. Okay, so who's to say? We I always tell people it's like, well, where you think we go after we die and shit like that? You know what I'm saying? And I always tell people I say I won't know until I meet my maker or until I get to the side. I don't know. Who's to say I might not have been. You see what I'm saying? Even from, like, because you already know what they did with Fontaine. Mm-hmm. Fontaine, when we when he woke up, he feeling normal and some shit like that. Yeah. But that was, like, the kind of, like, the first instance. But, you know, we, they just kept the same thing going as far as the hood and keeping certain characters, mm-hmm. like you're saying, in keep play. Yeah, in play. Keeping yeah. certain characters in play. Like, like with his brother. His brother was somewhat of a stand-up individual. You see what I'm saying? He wasn't a street dude. But he died. Right. He didn't come back as a clone. They already had their clones picked out. But who's to say, like... I don't know. This shit is just funny. Like I could have been a Michael somewhere else. Yeah, nah, it's, 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 I could be a different name because at the end of the movie, they was like, Tyrone, ain't that you? But the whole movie, we knew him as Fontaine. You know what I'm saying? So, it's crazy. I mean, with the alien shit, bro, it's endless now. It's like Drew said, I think if we found out the truth to a lot of shit, people will lose their fucking minds, bro. Yeah, that's a fact. If they found that's out the government was behind certain things, I could see people... Yeah. Oh, for being sure. outraged. And then you're not going to be able to control those people because they don't believe you anymore because you've been lying to them all their lives. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. they control America with scare tactics. That's Facts. what the news is on for. 100%. You know? If y'all watch the session, that's what it is. Like, yeah. to control the media, to control, like, you know, how you, how you, how you digest your news and like, shit like what that. The, like, what they tell us in the media, like, that shit is told to tell them what to tell us. Like, the motherfucking news anchors and shit like that, them niggas just not up there freestyling. Yeah. They read no, the teleprompter. Nah, they read the teleprompter. They're um, being told exactly. It goes deep. Yeah. It, it's even so deep to where, like, I know y'all done seen shit to where, like... Uh, I mean, the Rockefellers control media. It be... It be... It be a lady on a fucking... Like, I done seen this shit. Like, she, she was the fucking... The interviewer for a mass shooting. And then you'll see her somewhere else on mm-hmm. an interview. Mm-hmm. Or you'll see... Somebody saying the same exact yeah. thing somebody yeah. said twelve years ago mm-hmm. about the same exact situation. So mm-hmm. it's like I didn't see shit in the news where it's like yo. This the, the one that really stood out to me was the Sandy Hook shit. Oh for sure. And I remember when that happened. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Was because like yeah. that, right? me and Mo was going them. to work when that shit happened. Saying we watching the shit in the break room. And then as time go on, they was talking about the crisis actors. This is the first time I ever heard of the term crisis actors. And I'm looking at the dad before he goes to speak, and he got this smile on his face. He laughing, and they. Yeah, flip the switch just like straight that. into acting mode. Yeah. Straight into acting mode about his daughter and shit. Like, like the Sandy Hook thing for me as an adult. I'm 21 at the time. Was the one when I as I got older. That was the first checkpoint for me. Was like, okay, it's some it be shit. some weird some shit, weird shit, shit going on, bro. Because I'm like, damn, bro. Like all these kids got killed and all this, but a lot of these shootings could be planned. For sure. A lot of diseases man made. Sure, bro. Um, it's just I can see people. Control, bro. Yeah. When you get into conspiracies, you just gotta, you gotta understand like what's the real, what's the real goal of of like doing said acts, cause it's all about control. Mm-hmm. So when you understand that, and then you understand the depths that people are able are able to go to up to upstand that control and that power, then you a lot of shit make more sense. So I'm because a- if you just if you just going off the hip like yo, this is what's going on. The average person be like, bro, like you, you out your mind, like you bugging, like you know what I'm saying. But so I'm gonna tell you a lot of people some shit that a lot of people may not know about right now. Bill Gates said it's another pandemic coming. 
No time frame. I think frame. I saw that. I think I saw that. Yeah. Don't know the time frame. He said frame. it. He said it, but he didn't really mean but to say it. But that also like, coincides with that these niggas is releasing thousands of mosquitoes that have diseases. Makes well, sense. Bill Gates is doing this. Bill Gates, and he's also the one that told us about COVID too before it came. Yeah. What well, year? <laughs> He was talking about COVID they like... They're doing that mosquito shit right now. No. Yeah. He was talking about COVID like what? But he was talking about COVID in like 20... Like 2014, yeah. 15, Damn, 16. Damn, that's like, early. And world, like, early. world conferences. Yes, like, yo, something's shit, like, coming. Yeah. Like, there's going to be a pandemic that happens. Like, but see, I, I, I got... My bad, you Go ahead, go ahead. See, <clears throat> my whole thing is, again, looking at the dynamic of how things are being played out. Mm-hmm. If you really want to look at 19, going into 20... The movement of Black Lives Matter was in the forefront. I mean, everybody was talking about reparations, talking about change, talking about... 1890 really was the two years that it So to really think about the injustice of what blacks have endured for so fucking long, guys. So fucking long. Yet we're still dealing with the same shit that, that we've been dealing with for centuries. You see what I'm saying? But on top of that, let's not shut the fucking world down because... We're literally one more fucking killing, one more fucking nigga getting shot unjustice, unjustly for niggas really for to anarchy, bear. Like for yes. real, real, real. I mean, you're talking, you're talking, yeah. you're, sure, you're, sure. you're talking, this is the holy city that we live in. Understand, there's no building higher than the highest church in Charleston, South Carolina. You see what I'm saying? So understanding that if these niggas in this holy city decided to fucking get it back in downtown Charleston and really was setting shit on fire, mm-hmm. breaking windows, niggas saying here, this is black owned, that's not black yeah. owned. Especially niggas with capping. the historical like shit here. Come like, on like, now. Yeah. So, hey, slave roots. Hey, hey. Slave, slave foundation. Just, yeah. so, just the one of Section Street, yeah. So just to really look at the dynamics, to say, hey, you niggas are getting out of line now. <laughs> Here's let's, a whole, let's throw this, let's out throw this shit out and <laughs> shut down the world. Was the pandemic right off of the George Floyd shit, right? 100%. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. I was. I it was, was all hand in hand. So this was February. Yeah. Oh no, George Floyd happened when? This George was the Floyd. end of February. Yes. March. Yes. Yeah. And, so, and then the other, the other. I don't want to mess up her name. She was also in that. Breonna too. Taylor. Breonna, Breonna Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It was a lot that it was really alive like, for 2020. I mean, come like on April. now. Yeah. No, the shutdown was no, March. Before okay. it was March. It was my March. Son was born in eight, my son was born in May. Okay. And that's when I knew it. Shit was like completely shut down because I. I couldn't even. It was nobody couldn't come see my son in the hospital. And right. Shit. Yeah. So it was like completely closed out by May. Yeah. Let, let me let me ask y'all this in terms of, do you think? Because I want to get back to the Bill Gates point in terms of another pandemic coming, and this all circles back to the the population control and shit like that. Do you think that they just gonna have like have five alone we live? They're just gonna have these certain, certain checkpoints throughout the timeline. Like, bro, we gotta throw this out here. I think in our lifetime, bro, we about to see a lot of crazy shit. Like, I think we about to see a lot of <laughs> fucked up shit. Like, for real, for real. Like, as far as, like, because they, they talk about population control all the time, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, the world is too populated, bro. Like, it's to the point to where, like, niggas are trying to find other means to make food because... Yeah, I mean, I've been hearing since a kid that China can't have that that thing about China not having more than two kids. That been a thing since ninety no, no, seven, ninety eight. It's real, it's real, bro. It's real. But and I was coming, a kid. But it's coming to us now. Yeah. Now there's talking of of controlling how many children you have, um, and then also it's the whole thing. Also, like they always say, never be an organ donor, and especially for black folks because I never when, was when when they see that you're an organ donor. They, it's less likely that they want to save you. They want to save the organs. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And that's a tough situation to be I in. I never thought about that. Yes. I seen something the other day about, um, I think a black person's plasma is, I forgot how, I can't remember the measurements of how much it was, but it was like $1,000 per they talking about the melanin. The melanin, melanin, my fault. Yeah. Not plasma, melanin. Mm-hmm. But our like, melanin is very bro, valuable. Even even our organs, bro, mm-hmm. are more expensive on the black market mm-hmm. than white people's organs. Because they melanin enriched. Yes, bro. Mm-hmm. Like when, bro, I, when our sur- people are going missing, bro, motherfuckers ain't just going missing, bro. I do believe that. We're the supreme being. Like motherfuckers is being, <laughs> we are motherfuckers being taken and we and they taking our shit, bro. Yeah. Like it ain't just like oh niggas just want to fucking who wants to just kidnap a black person. Bro? I mean, bro, just think about our makeup. Like we can be in the sun, white people can't. All day. we have certain advantages, just scientifically proven that we are. Yes, we're all human beings, and we all have the mm-hmm. same makeup. But our DNA is far, 
far more superior than any other race on the planet. Yeah. That's just what it is. And that's why when we go make a child with another race, we're the dominant trait. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just what it is. Exactly, and I think, exactly. Drew, just to speak to that, I think that's why I kind of understand in terms of Umar be talking about making kids with our own because Facts. of the shit that may be coming. Mm-hmm. You see Facts, what I'm saying? Bro. Because like we've been surpassed as far as the... Uh, the, minority. the minority in the country. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. Mexicans, Mexican, Mexicans didn't surpass us. Like any, I remember That's hearing. Crazy. Funny story, real quick. I remember this was 2013. I was having, a, I was at my brother's house, and he was having a conversation with his homeboy. And he's like, "I'm thinking, I never thought about this." He's like, "Brother, y'all do realize it's not a lot of us." I'm like, "What you mean? It's like black people all over the world." He's like, "No, bro, it's not." We don't have a large. It may look like that due to what we watch and what we see, how we dominate certain shit. But in terms of black people, it's not a lot of us walking around here. And like it's that. only getting slimmer, bro, because like you said, Doctor Umar said about uh, people comes in their whole day timeline. And then right? as the line you, goes down, you, like you crossing your shit, yeah. like you go have this baby with this white woman, that means your whole lineage is wiped out now. Yeah. Because it, that child might go have a person with a white person, and, and, and then you they completely white. Over. By that time, the milk it's is over. done. That's like done. no disrespect, if you look at Pat Mahomes' daughter, I'm about to say the same thing. <laughs> like because he already he already mixed. So you look at Pat Mahomes' daughter, it's over. She if she have a a, a child with a white person, it's over with. Look at Jason Tatum's son. All of that, all yeah. of Deuce, the above. Deuce I just about to say, white, Pat you know what I'm saying? Like, and he black. He got his parents. His pro- Lamar, uh, Lamelo, uh, yeah, whichever, Lamello whichever ball, ball guy. All of them, all yeah, of them are. Yeah. All like them will mix. will Lamelo's child yeah. have the strong enough genes to become that? Right, because no, he don't have clear. the full black gene. Uh, no, nah, because they they're they're choosing mates of already interracial children. Depending mm. also who the father might be. It plays on the psyche. Yeah, too. That's, that's another so. layer See, too. Also, yeah, the world right. is getting lighter, bro. Yeah. Because it is. Mixed, right? it is. Like, how many actual dark skinned people? That's why people are so fascinated with dark skinned people now. That's mm-hmm. why if somebody see a you beautiful China, dark skinned person, yeah. like, oh my God, like, yeah. you're so pretty because it's not too many dark skinned And white people know that they're. They're weeding out, mm-hmm. so they 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 champion the interracial, mm-hmm. bro. Even down the commercials, mm-hmm. no oh. bullshit. Now you say interracial families, bro. Listen, when I was a kid, it was black family, white, white family. family. Now, post 2010s, especially 2020s, That's I see these commercials, and it don't matter what the what the uh what the sexual preference is. Right. That couple is mixed. So well, people- yeah, but also you gotta <laughs> understand it's it's the society that we live in today of. That you have to have inclusion. Oh, I get you it. Trust me, saying? I get it. But I, it also plays the other side of what oh, we're no, talking about. Oh no, I get about. it. Yeah, I yeah, get yeah, it wholeheartedly. Yeah. There's no disrespect yeah. at all. I'm just yeah. pointing out what I've seen since I was a kid up until now. Yeah, Go sure, ahead, Chris. What sure, you about bro. to say? Now I was just about to say, even in like you like you said commercials, like even in movies and shit. Now we're seeing like, I just finished watching All American again. You know, the mom is white, mm-hmm. Billy Baker's black. You mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying they got mixed kids. So it's just like. Shit has changed, bro. Cause I just, I just remember like being young. He's like, yo, I want a mixed girl. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, you know everybody want like, a little exotic. Shit, my baby mother, she's, exotic. she's fully African. What other exotic? One hundred percent African. So it's kind of like. And then I started thinking about like, yo, do I want a kid with a white girl? Like, nah, I can't do it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> nah, like that ain't me. Not nah, shout out to our homies that got kids or white people. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, it's, no, it's just all for good. Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just it like be. for my lineage, like nigga, I can't do it. I need that. You know what I'm saying? I need that. It's, uh. it's a certain the way I value us as far as a human being, our makeup. I want that to continue on because it's going to get to a point. I mean, we see with history books now, mm-hmm. they're trying to just wipe out slave. Well, for one, they wanted to change they, they, slaves yeah. to workers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they want to completely eradicate the shit. Uh, they mm-hmm. want to make it seem like yeah. it was beneficial. It's to benefits. Us. I want. I want to get this off my brain while I was fucking. I don't know Go who do was you think, talking bro? about this shit, but um, damn, was it Method Man? Bro, one of these rappers was talking about, okay, how they're changing history. So it's like, yo, before the Black Panther movie came out, when you Google Black Panther, who you see pop up? Niggas holding up the ears, afros, and all of that shit. They've changed all of that shit Mm -hmm. now. You go to that was in, that was Kanye was talking about that. I that think was it was, if it wasn't Kanye, it was Fifty. It was Kanye because he was talking about how they how they switched the whole algorithm for it. So yeah. it was Kanye. You definitely yeah. right. So now when you go type in Black Panther, you're not seeing none of our history pop yeah, up. Yeah, you no don't more. Huey P. Newton don't come up no more. You're not seeing any of our history pop up no more. You're seeing this Disney shit pop yeah. up. So they're saying this was white people 
creating this shit to deter from what originally what we were. Oh, for sure. See, this is it's the whitewashing of the world. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to be held accountable and stand ten toes yeah. down yeah. for what the fuck they've done to our people. And yeah. that's the crazy shit about this shit. Honestly, it's a nasty world. But this this also goes to show you, like we just saw. Well, I just saw a study to where it was saying. Um, just playing the part of black folks in ge- general wanting to have children. Yeah. It's a lot of people in this room. I mean, shit, even me and Mikey Vaz had a conversation like, ah, I don't know about procreating. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's not even about me, this nigga don't make enough money or, or whatever is whatever. It's just about the suitable the mates choice. and Super the choices mate. of that. But that's a crazy thing because that's two individuals right here are unicorns in this room. You see what I'm saying? That not only doesn't have children, but also contemplating if we even want to have children. So oh, three of us. So yeah, you see what I'm saying? So off of that alone, three out of out of the, the masses of this room has no children versus the two that do. You yeah, see what I'm saying? Too, yeah. So if society is pushing harder and harder, like prices of living going up, but not making the money make sense to live, we're not going to think about procreating. Yeah, you yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah. White folks can procreate because they, they, they already know it's all about the credit at the beginning of life. They're you see what up. I'm saying? Right, they they mama up. and they done put a business at three years old in their fucking name to where now they they when when they get in their shit bracken, okay, yeah, they got a 700, uh, 700 score at, at 10, 12, 13 years old because they already got the generational wealth. Hey, you see what that, I'm saying? That's what I was going to say. Yep, that generational wealth for sure. Like, just to piggyback off that joint, man. Like, I used to be like, I didn't care no purpose, but like, like you said, the whitewashing is crazy with Pat Mahomes. I really looked at, I'm like, oh, they, he, his dad was black, black. He really, yeah. his family really has no black, won't have no black. Like, look lineage. at his brother. Look at Pat brother. He's Pat brother, a yeah, he look, he look white right but now. His dad was a starting point. Yeah. yeah, his dad was a starting point. Exactly, exactly. So I know he. Hold on. You got something to say for sure. Nah, I just want to get into it about, about uh, it's a book called What Would the Rockefellers Do? Mm. Mm. And, um, I've heard of that. Great book. But it pretty much teaches you about um, pretty much sustaining life for your future family and not just yourself. Like, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about six generations down Facts. the line. Okay. So it speaks about the um, the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts. Um, mm mm-hmm. Pretty much at one point in time, the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers were pretty much hand in hand as far as like money, what they own and shit like that. Um, but damn near six years after, well, like six generations after the, the first Vanderbilt nigga died, they was broke. Because one, like we was talking about credit. So the Rockefeller set his shit up to where like his family had to, had to, uh, complete certain steps to get certain things. You know what I'm saying? You had to be married. You had to go to college. You had to get this to get this amount of money. You know Wasn't what I'm saying? Just it down. Wasn't just handing it down. So if you set up things versus to just giving things, mm. if you're just giving it away, it's eventually going to run out mm-hmm. because people are just going to be frivolously spending. Mm-hmm. Innoc- they- Innocent they- Cooper is a Vanderbilt. Mm. Niggas don't even know that. I know He's that. supposed to be dumb rich. He shouldn't even be on the news. Yeah. Damn. They're he probably is anymore. though. He probably is, honestly. No, he, he has money. Yeah. But I'm saying as far as like... He's supposed to already be set up. Well, yeah, like, gen- not, yeah generational like, wealth. We don't know who the you. fucking Rockefellers are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't see these niggas. Yeah. The only Rockefeller that I really knew was the chick that... uh Mary that J. J. Electronica. That, yeah, that Mary J. Electronica. That's the only public Rockefeller that I knew. But other than that... I didn't fuck? know none of them. And they control all the money. everything, yeah. bro. All the money. Yep. They control everything, They control everything. So, like... Just to like, you know what I'm saying? As far as like, we're talking about procreating, man. As, as far as like having a kid. So like having a kid now, like me and my girl, we got shit set up for my son. Like when he turns 18, like mm-hmm. he should be a millionaire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like giving him the advantage that white people have been giving their kids the advantages for the past yeah. 50 years, right. 60 years, All 70 right. years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to think the Vanderbilt's got rich in the fucking 1800s, yeah. bro. No yeah. facts. We just hit in the 2020s. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's how much money has been passed down through. And plus as years. black people, like, like, bro, in my family, I don't know nobody that that has six figures. Yeah. Me neither. Exactly. And that's six. Well, no, I did. Like one squandered it. Like though. at one point, like at one point in time, like <laughs> yeah. they might have had six figures, but we talked about that on the show. Before. But yeah, yeah, to yeah, have yeah. six figures and just have to yourself, that six figures wasn't enough to spread to his family, family right? And make other people make money. Make, that, make that's, that's where it comes to. Like 
one person in the family got to be the nigga. And I'm trying to be the person in my family to change. Like, it ain't it ain't even just thinking about my son no more. It's thinking about my son's so, grandkids. Facts. Grandkids, to facts. look back and be like, yo, Grandpa Chris changed this shit. Like, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, I love that. He didn't make it. He didn't do it for himself or his kid, but he set it up for no. us to be straight further down the line. And that's what black people got to think about, bro, because we got to start changing. Like, than us. I think it's changing now because I was, I was telling somebody else the other day. I was like, yo. I never seen this many black people have money. And we live in Atlanta, bro. So like you're seeing black people with money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In Charleston. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I get what you're saying. You I feel what, what I'm saying? saying? Like you seeing the white people ride around in the Range Rovers and shit like that. Yeah. But in Atlanta, bro, a Range Rover is a regular car. Like we see oh, yeah. black people hop out Rolls Royces, I remember, McLarens, I going Ferraris out to and shit like when that. The like Panamera was like the thing. Niggas was driving Panameras like like Honda Accords. That's bro. what I'm saying. Oh, and it's just like and living it and and like I kind of think like moving to Atlanta was like one of the best decisions in my life because it opened me up to actually see that black people was getting real money mm -hmm. versus to just being somewhere small and just seeing like a nigga that had the money was a drug dealer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying or like yeah. something like that. But like you in Atlanta, like you seeing people. Lawyers, real businesses. You know what I'm saying? Marketing mm -hmm. people, fucking yeah. dentists, motherfuckers. On it, all different type of shit. So it's open your brain up to seeing. You seeing black people living like white people. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like bougie ass black people. So, but just to say that, but just like black people are are turning over a new leaf. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. And for I just sure. hope that we can continue, continue because, that on. You know, yeah. in 20 years, if people do the right thing, like maybe we can kind of kind of overcome shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Nah, just to piggyback what he was saying, just I just wanted to say that that's why it was good. Going back to the earlier convos, going it's good to leave. The city, city for a while, to see the shit. you know what I'm saying? To see it, because mm -hmm. like we we knew it, we see it on the internet, we mm -hmm. felt it, but like like I'm originally from New York, so I go to New York and I see rich people or rich black people that's outside of just hustling a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I kind of got that best of both worlds. I come down here, you kind of be like, is it? Uh, that was the same for me when I moved from New saying? York. It's kind of yeah. like, is it? Is it like what's going on out here? Like they just not getting no getting tours, no love. But right now it's changing completely. Like. I love what Charleston doing right now, but people starting to see that black people get money. I think it's really helping the city that oh, black people getting money with businesses, they own entrepreneurs, not just selling drugs or yeah. doing things. It's, nigga, I got car dealerships that black people own out here. It's just a beautiful mm -hmm. thing, and I think that's inspiring people out here now in Charleston just to do the just to want to, and then like and just to piggyback one more thing that's that was hurting people procreate because people didn't know where to get the money from. You Fact. know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, you you don't want to start a family and you're trying to be the one to start the generational wealth yeah. in your family. So it's like, I don't want nothing. Legacy, two things about money, what you put in, and then your family. We all can procreate, but it's about that generational wealth. And yeah. like he said, people are, it's so much people getting money now. It's not just that, but it's so much black people are getting money smart and educated yeah. about money. We black people always can figure out how to hustle and get money, but people wasn't smart about it. That's I think very now true. we in that space where where we learn and getting financial education. Yeah, that's making us you know get to that next level. And it, I will, and I will say that twenty twenty also opened a lot of businesses an opportunity for niggas to really get their shit off. Like people, and I, and I and I mean honestly, like you look at the food and beverage industry, it's a lot of failing industries that's happening now due to the pandemic because people got a fucking sense. They saw that this job really wasn't what I thought it was. Or really, you was dealing with a lot of bullshit every mm -hmm. day. And now that you live in... I should have bossed up and just did this on my 100%. Own. They opened up businesses. They opened up small little boutiques. They opened up... Or even not even that. Taking the fucking chance on betting on yourself to do what you really right. want to do. That's what even if that is. takes Uber and Uber Eats. Whatever it really has to do. But your 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 conscience, your mind has to be at peace in order for this shit to work. And... For me, like I deal, you know, I work with children. I be around children. I love my nieces and nephews. You know what I'm saying? And granted, for me, I still think it's one of those things. Like I never, I'm not doing none of the shit for myself. All of the shit is for what's to come outside of me. You know what I'm saying? For my nieces and nephews to say like, hey, Uncle Dash, he was straight. He made sure that we were straight. You see what I'm saying? Because I didn't. For my my pops and the, and others that line, I mean, my daddy was born in 1950. So, you know, my daddy's in his 70s now. He's walked the picket line. He's been thrown in jail. He's 
integrated the public school systems in the South. You see what I'm saying? He was part of Orangeburg Massacre up in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Wow. So it's even a blessing for me to be here. So, like, for me, it goes way deeper than just, you know, just the average black man just trying to get to it. Nah, bro. We've been, we're, we're fortunate to be here today. That's the first thing. That's like, you got to give thanks that you even fucking hear your presence to, to mm-hmm. even do the stuff that you're doing. But also, that being your driving force to make sure that you're putting out good work and you're putting out good audio and you're putting out good photography pictures and you're putting out good videography work. You see what I'm saying? It's more passion into everything that is our baby, such as holy city for your, you guys so when you sit here and you're saying these things and and how passionate oh yeah you know i want to be hands-on like i would hope the listeners really take this to really feel where y'all coming from because this shit is passion for us mm-hmm. we sit here every fucking sunday to, to put this out on monday you know what i mean this is a beautiful thing that we have going on sitting That's here fact, in this room right now you That's know what i mean fact. this is these are examples for everybody to really look at to be like hey man these niggas started from a point and nah, this ain't no Drake shit started from the bottom, bro. We really started from the fucking bottom. For real, for I ain't started on no Nickelodeon, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I did not start there. Mm-hmm. I started in the motherfucking streets of West Ashley and downtown Charleston. You see what I'm saying? And now we hear Bracken and we get into it. So it's really tough to really be, you know, hard on myself to really be like, yo, damn, what am I going to do? What's next? Because I have no choice to but to figure out what's next. You exactly. see what I'm saying? And, uh, the, the time aspect for us is different. And I've been reading this book that's been speaking about time and the thinking aspect, and it's kind of opened my mind. That you basically kind of find like a balance in between. Like you, you was talking about earlier, and Drew was talking about like how, uh, how you find time for yourself. And it really speaks to, matter of fact, I got the, I got the title of the book right here. And I've been reading. It's just been open my mind to kind of like just basically, yeah, take time and just um, just just find a balance about yourself. It's called uh, the power of now. You know, a God of spiritual enlightenment, and always kind of we get so caught up in thinking about the past and the future, and not really appreciating what's going on yeah, right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. You see, what I'm saying like all we have is the now. All we got was yeah, you're right. You really should, we we might you don't, be sitting you don't, up. You don't get the future without like right like now. they yeah. something that stood out to me was like, bro, in this morning right now, do you have problems? And you'd be like every day. Yeah, but in terms, in terms of, like, in the actual moment. Like, your kids could be running around. For example, your kids could be running around. The music is playing, shit like that. Yeah, tomorrow you might have to deal with a bill. Or you might have to deal with this. But in, the, in this actual moment, now, yeah. your kid is running around happy as hell to see you. But... Your mind is like, bro, I got to do this on Thursday. I got to do this on Wednesday. And I think... You didn't even get there yet. You didn't even get there yet. Yeah. And I think in, a, in combination with Drew was talking about in terms of, like, your purpose. I mean, I, I said on the podcast before... I think when I look back at certain moments in my life as a kid, it makes me it makes me realize why I'm here right now doing this right now. You see what I'm saying? Okay, like I could point to when I was eight playing with this or twelve playing with this or fourteen doing this. Bro, this is what I was supposed to do. So it's like and this is documented forever. So like you said, like your grandkids look like, oh shit, like he was talking about this on this date, twenty twenty three, like on this you this is forever. The internet is forever. This is always documented. So I think when you start to get older and you realize what your purpose is, bro, it's all, it, it has a, a purpose and it was by design because for you, for number one, because you have to be the one to get into it. Because if you, I remember Drew told me this uh, at a time last year. He's like, bro, like, I always seen you doing that, but I can't make you see it. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's certain things that if you're not going to see it for yourself, you're not going to do it. You see what I'm saying? So I think it all boils back to that also as well. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm telling you, bro, this shit is is it's forever. And I mean, I'm not in this shit for a week, two, a year. Shit, niggas been putting years Come on, now, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like the dynamic of how I move, bro, it just it speaks through me. It moves through me. It moves through my language. It moves through my body. It moves through everything. You see what I'm saying? So but in that process, you got to appreciate you the work to. you're putting in at that you time because it's like People if you always in. sitting there reflecting and just looking to the future, you're not like, bro, like I should be appreciating this yeah. shit right yeah. now as well. Right, not, so I'm going to keep it 100, bro. I'm kind of like that person. Like uh, mm-hmm. I don't really take things in until like, people tell me like me too <laughs> and and you know what's crazy is coming to coming to charleston like does that to me because it was the origin that's why it's the foundation not not only that it's people that i you know people in charleston that just see us on social media and shit like that or just you know what i'm saying a nigga just think like such and such and such but then like 
it's not really how it is, you know what I'm saying? Or like a people, somebody will tell you like, bro, like keep doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? But in my head, I'm like. No, I'm nigga, that's every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'll be like I'm just trying to make it. Like, trying nigga, to make it. When yeah. I wake up on Monday, like, I fly back home tomorrow, bro. Like, when I get back home tomorrow, I got to get right back to work. Right to the work. Because, nigga, rent is due the next day. Like, mm-hmm. I got to pay my son daycare tomorrow when I get mm-hmm. back. Like, that's you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't, you don't never really get to see yourself in your glow. In the moment, yeah. Exactly. So, like, like, People, I, like people, are like bro, you doing your thing. Like keep doing your thing, bro. Like I, I was like I was in the country yesterday. Um, he's not my cousin, but you know, in the country, people grow up around. He called yeah. me a cousin. Like mm-hmm. he just got out. That's the thing. Yeah. He did ten years. So like people was outside that I haven't seen since like I was like eight, nine, middle school and shit like that. So you know, everyone's on Facebook and social media and shit like that. So motherfuckers would see you, niggas would be like, bro, like. Doing your thing. Keep doing your thing, bro. <laughs> or a nigga be like, bro, like I need some of them clothes and a nigga and this could be a nigga that I didn't even know that he even knew about yeah. that we was even pushing clothes. You know what I'm saying? So shit like that, like be the battery in my back when I come back here. Mm-hmm. Because you know, you always harder on yourself than you know what I'm saying? What you Facts. what you need to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like him, he's real hard on himself, bro. And I'm I'm more so the nonchalant person. I'm the mm-hmm. person that's like, yo, this shit going on, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get through it. He's the type of person. He dwell on that shit and let it kind of get to him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm only knowing this because I'm that's my best friend. Like, yeah. we know how each other mm-hmm. operate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know what I can say to him to get him out the funk. He know what he can say to me to get out the funk. But just, like, it's always good. Like, I'm going to sit here and say, like, yo, y'all keep doing y'all thing, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, appreciate keep that, doing man. y'all thing. Consistency is the best thing in anything. Like, yeah. if y'all would have stopped doing this shit three years ago, bro, nobody wouldn't even been talking about this shit no more. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? Man, facts, man. All of y'all people pay attention to this shit right here because this is going to be the first shit that really go. It's over in motion. I already got hella confidence. You know, I'll be DM, I'll be hitting. Yep. I'll be trying to repost, do my little one-two step because I'm like, yo, I see. My whole thing is I'm in Atlanta and seeing how things work is no reason why Same it can be happening here. I'm just talking about on the independent level, entrepreneurial level, people getting success off the content, doing what we doing, doing what y'all doing. And... Again, y'all putting that work. So I just like y'all really putting that work, putting them shots in. You can't, nobody can say nothing to y'all that y'all haven't worked for this. So that's why I really like anything we could do or help, or, you know, anything in that nature, we here willing to do that joint. Just Respect. like, you yeah. trying to think of some promotion marketing. I'm trying to get some, you know, we could talk on, on here and get some artists on here and stuff like that. Respect. Just, just do little things to help each other out. And then one thing I wanted to tell about y'all is if we all work together yeah. and get one or two people to that point, the well, floodgates like, were open. People like you know, somebody yeah. to lock, you know how Charleston was. We had we had that convo on Clubhouse a few years ago. Exactly, but the bro. conversation kind of it kind of. I do was, remember he that. People trying yeah. to make it seem like we was on some gatekeeping shit, but yeah, it's not gatekeeping. Bro, it's not Ooh, gatekeeping. Yeah, I, I remember on, that. I wasn't on that uh, Clubhouse call, but I saw yeah. the, the the aftermath on yeah, Twitter, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it was like, Ooh, it's a, I'll say this because I spoke on it. It sounded good in yeah. the moment, but the aftermath was like niggas ain't really trying. Well, to I think it was the, I think it was the voices probably who was there at that current it, moment it, it, that it wasn't the right people to really be speaking going the manner because they still have that crab in the yo, barrel mentality. It's, it, it's certain, it's certain, yeah, it's certain people in here that oh, it's certain people around here, you know, what I'm saying that still kind of got that yeah. fake gatekeeper crab in the barrel mentality. But that's neither here or there. I say moving forward though, what we doing? This got to be better. Yeah, it just got to be better because. Yeah. That crab in the barrel is not gonna work. One or two people open up the gates, bro. Everybody gonna come looking in. Yeah. It's like, just like how Chris Caitlin doing her thing. There's other people doing their thing, opening the doors a little bit. She's willing to help anybody help together. All the platforms help each other. One shout person, out to Chris too. yeah, yeah. Shout out to her. One person open up. I seen it. One person, one person get popping in Memphis. Everybody looking at Memphis people. Yeah, looking at the outlets, looking at rappers, looking at influencers. One person popping Charleston or, or South Carolina. Everybody gonna be looking at who's these influence, who's the other rappers, who's this, that, and the third. And like I said, we already got rappers, we already got basketball players, we already got actors. Trust me. Every listen, I tap into some of the actor shit. Every nice actor you know from Carolina, by the way. In in, in some way they from here, like from for Carolina. sure. Like, I yeah. just thought about this. Y'all gotta get Charlemagne on here. Listen, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm gonna tell yo, Charlemagne. You, you gotta you gotta get on here, bro. Listen, listen. Uh, yo, you gotta get Charlemagne on here because it just literally clicked in my head. I'm like, yo. 
I'm like, damn, it's nobody that never reached down to pull nobody. And Charlemagne's doing that right now, this very second. By I'm going to have a conversation with y'all off camera after the show. For about sure. That. Say less. That, yeah. that, but that conversation. So this, but yeah. is, this is me. I'm not here. This is me seeing from the hindsight. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen nobody reach down and try to do anything. So to see that happen, I'm like, all right, at least somebody tried. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm like, damn, what, like. And, and, and I've spoken on this on the podcast before. For me, it's always been the resource aspect. Mm-hmm. Like, my 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 focus has always been more so on the resources because I told Mo this all the time. I'm like, bro, you give me and Mo the access. I'm only talking about the access. Mm-hmm. I know this shit is going gonna, is gonna to mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. reach further than I ever dreamed That's of. I know that because I'm that confident in our abilities in this room. Mm-hmm. That's always been my thing is the resources and the access. Because once that happened, like you said, it's the floodgate. You give me an opportunity, I'm going to fucking take that shit. In. Ain't a nigga going to say, oh, I don't fuck with where just meant to this podcast. Like, no, no, them, Mike and Mo and Drew, them niggas, yeah, they, they do it. So for me, it's always been about the access. But what I also seen, too, is on the flip side of this goes back to working together. A lot of people, because some people focus be the money. That's the easy part. Mm-hmm. It's the access that they be controlling. It's like they don't want you to have certain accesses. And that be my thing. I'm not so concerned about the money because with the access comes that. Yeah. Because once I get that, that is cool. What the access look like? Because the so access you, is gonna take you to places that money can't even a, get you. Exactly, oh, sure. bro. Exactly. And that was all. That will always be my main thing. And it's like, bro, it's nothing to tell somebody to. Yeah, I can holler at such and such. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah, dog, I'll share your shit. Or because me personally, me, I, I don't ask somebody to do it. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. Because I know my shit is gonna hit the certain people that's gonna fuck with, it and they do it. They're gonna do it off the strength. And it's like, bro, if you say you're gonna do something, do it. Cool. And then, then there's the other side of the coin. It's like, you know, they kind of standoffish or, you know, they, they just focus on their thing. And that's cool. But don't do that. And then also be on some, oh, yeah, we we we, we a team and we do this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like that. I'd rather you just be on your thing. You do your own thing. If you're looking out for you, cool. On the other side, because if somebody asks me a question about something, I don't know. I might pass them off to Mo. I might pass them off to Drew. Yeah. I might pass them off to TC if I don't have the answer. Yeah. I just ain't going... Leave you high and dry. Yeah. And you still using yeah. a resource. You That's still, yeah. 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 Because my whole thing, I can, I can tunnel you to somebody else. I can pitch you to somebody else. You see what I'm saying? But nine times out of ten, I might have the answers. I'm just gonna leave you high and dry. But I think, like TC said again earlier, it's about a collective effort. Oh, for sure. I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna trip y'all right quick, right? I never really understood the whole crab in the barrel mentality until I really been out on the water. You know what I mean? Like I'm a nigga that be in. That's a bar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I never yeah, really right. understood this shit. And I'm trip y'all. I went to check the crab check. I got a trap right now out in the water. And I went to go check this shit, which I ain't checking in like a few days and shit. I had four crabs in the shit. The smallest crab, my nigga, eating completely. <laughs> eating completely. Right. Four so essentially I have three crabs in the right, trap. Right. But to think the smallest nigga that entered this cage, when all the food was gone, he became the food. Mm. See what I'm saying? That's a bar. Mm. That's that's the world. That's the hindsight. Like I'm passionate right now. I got tears coming out my eyes because that shit really had to look at. Like I had to really look at this shit. Like yo, that's a lesson that you learned. One hundred percent, bro. Because like even in even in the big cities, like when somebody makes it, right? What usually happens to to Top niggas like the niggas get Taking killed. Out. Something happened. David Banner said, "I never forget this." David Banner said, "You know where I was get killed at? If I was to get killed anywhere, and they said where Mississippi." Boosie said the where same thing. From? Niggas yeah. always get killed in their own city. That's so where I would like, get killed at. Mm-hmm. But I think that I think what's so hard about black people getting out of that mode is because, bro, it's like survival mode and no one's helping anyone else get out. Right. Facts. So if if you're the only one that makes it out. You going to feel like, man, I went through hell and high water yeah. to get here. But the thing that's going to make you different is the, the thing that's going to make you different is turn around and pulling somebody else up. Facts. Because once you do that, it's going to start a chain reaction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And before we know it like like that's just like let's just put it in in drug dealer terms, right? They always say, like, yo, you got to feed your team, mm-hmm, right? Because mm-hmm. if you don't feed your team, then you're going to become the food. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the crabs. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And that's so what it like, is. We see in the movies all the time, like, niggas' right-hand man turn on them because, mm-hmm. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nigga not being fed properly or being treated properly mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, like, it always comes into certain, like, certain things. Like, I don't want to be the only nigga with the money. Yeah. Because that's putting all the stress on me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm you saying? You're target. Like, 
I'm the target and I got to think about anything we do like I'm the nigga with the money that's always coming out of my pocket versus to where all right there's six of us in this bitch like everybody know how to fish everybody know how to fish so shit Drew can be like bro hey I got this avenue open for us shit we can make six million today mm-hmm. all we got to do is put up 300,000 a piece versus to him being like Damn. I gotta put up. I gotta put up this whole three thousand. Yeah. I may only have six hundred thousand myself, but I'm putting up half of my stash trying to make this shit versus to where Amish communities, white people, Asians, like they all, do that. they all do that shit, man. When it comes to like even Mexicans, bro, they they move into one house and everybody and their bubble, money up, yeah, and then, and then we bubble up. Yeah. Jews, like, bro, they own everything in their own communities. Like they don't fuck with nobody else. You know what I'm saying? So like. I was reading this shit about... Um, I think we also been... T- just to insert something. I think that also plays into our mental because we're, we're, we've are we're been taught throughout time to accept everybody else mm-hmm. and not put us first. Facts. Facts. And there's nothing wrong with putting us first and still be cool with everybody else. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to put us first. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that, that, that plays into a whole bunch of things. The dating aspect because mm-hmm. that plays on the mental. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, love everybody. But... Like you said, but I think Jews, it's, it's mostly Asians. It's mostly religion for blacks, though, in Christianity. That's a part. That's a big yeah. part of it. That was one of the foundational pieces, Facts. and that's why I always say, bro, it's nothing wrong with being for your people. My white, my white neighbors know I fuck with my people. It's nothing against y'all. I'm still y'all talk cool, to y'all, but you know I'm still, I fuck with my but people. I fuck with my people. You see what I'm saying? And I think a lot of us get caught up in that. You know, we gotta love everybody thing. But you got those who love everybody else, but they shit on our own people. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the shit. That's the cycle that has to get broken. Because it's like, bro, it's nothing. I feel Umar when he say that. It's like, bro, it's not even about white people or Asian people. No, I want to put us first the same way they put their people nah, first. Like, that's I love what it's Dr. about. Umar, man. You know what I'm saying? Up. Like, it's not about being against them. I don't want to see y'all die or get killed or none of that other shit. But I want to see us stop getting killed by y'all. And I'm still going to boost our people up first. That's what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. White people do it. But they trying to make him into something because like, oh, he just pro-black. Man, they've been generational since the beginning of time. And they did it in a nasty way. They got their shit in a nasty way. That's just the facts. Not That's what real, it is. For real, yeah. For real, for real. So when we try to at least try to even the playing field, we get all these things put in line, whether it be laws, uh, shady business tactics, and, and all other shit. TC, let me ask you something. Is this something in the music industry that you feel is, um, I wouldn't say conspiracy theory, but do you feel like um, as you have more time and you see certain things that you might not have believed when you was younger, but you see it play out in real time? You don't have to speak to none specific, but do you believe that's a thing that people can believe? Like, the music industry really do we have in like some, like uh, it's it's yes to some degree yes it's a it's a it's certain things that just the the certain agenda that's agenda yeah, yeah that's why I'm speaking agenda more. Agenda is just more popular right now than anything. I just think it's not even a conspiracy. It's the fact that that certain certain type of message or voice that's in the music gets pushed more than certain things. And that's just the facts of it because it's beneficial for the people that's not in our culture. You know what I'm saying? That's just a fact. I mean, I see it on both ends. So, like, it's, it's parent companies and, it, and it's, like, baby companies. And we in that, like, we in a black-owned, so generation now black-owned. We in that same space where, like, little face records back in the day and QC and stuff like that. And it's a level above us. So, like, yeah, you signed us as a major label. RCA. You are you in the game for sure, but it's another parent. There's only four record labels that own everything. Sony, Warner. Universal. Universal and um, Interscope? Is Interscope no, they, in there? They, no, under, they, they under. Atlantic under. is underneath Warner, but it's mm-hmm. one more. And then those four people. Is it I think it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I I know Universal is one of the big ones. Sony, four, it's, four big right, right. it's four big companies that and, they have the subs under there. And they split yeah. the profit share of what the music is made all year. And oh, all. that's crazy. So, like, whoever so owns... Yeah, He's all, Universal. Yeah, one of those people. So, like, it's... So, streaming. So, it's a certain amount of streams that happen each year. Certain, You know, it's a certain amount yeah. of streams of all artists. It's four companies that split the profit share. So, if it was Atlantic... <laughs> so, everybody's <laughs> underwater... Well, any that any artist or label that's under Warner, say you signed to Atlantic, you signed to Warner Chapel, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Atlantic is under Warner. You under yeah. Warner, right? And you've got artists. Say like 
Cardi B, Ed Sheraton, Uzi, right? Big players that year. They make they go crazy yeah. in the streaming. So that those streams or those three artists is calculated within the whole streaming aspect of the whole streaming scale. And then if Warner has a bigger percentage of streaming, so it is a hundred percent. But Warner artists did uh thirty eight percent or forty percent of that, and then it got split the other way. And it gets split that forty percent goes to Warner, and then Warner breaks down that money. Sheesh. You know what I'm saying? So it could be a trillion dollars that goes out to so it may music industry make a trillion dollars. That trillion dollars gets split with four companies. You know what I'm saying? It just trickles again, down. And then it trickles down like that. That's know? crazy. So that's just, I mean, it is what it is. That's how all businesses is. A lot of these companies, is only certain companies that own everything in this world. So that's how it's just market share and profit share. And once you know that, you learn. You know the music industry. I had to learn that before I learned anything. You know what I'm saying? Once I learned that, I said, okay, this is how this is really broken down. So we just a piece of the pie. So how can you just be aggressive and get strongest piece of the pie? Right. And then, you know what I'm saying? Who you align yourself to. So like we Atlantic, you know what I'm saying? We were with the whole Warner family. You know what I'm saying? So we over there and then we do what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? It's the big parent company. It's the mom company. And then you got the, the kid kind of like the, the kids. Baby yeah, the babies. You know what I'm saying? So we the babies, but we up there. It's, yeah. it's bigger to be the baby than nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, everybody facts, else facts. don't get no love. So. We unfortunately like one of the companies that have a good love, but yeah, is a certain agenda just to get that dollar amount sometimes. Mm. You know what I mean? That's some game right there for sure. It's definitely That's some game, man. That's game. definitely some game. Oh yeah, it's free game. I got a lot. That's a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> popping out this year talking that talk. Talk man. your shit. Yeah, definitely, man. So um, uh, what do what are y'all looking forward to as far as like um, cause I I think Mo, you had anything else you wanted to bring up? No oh, man, I'm good, bro. Yeah, then I wanted to ask. Um, uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. Uh oh! Did y'all see the uh the fight? Oh yeah, yeah. the fight yesterday. Yeah, the fight, the Crawford fight, man. Crawford, man, you a beast. You was boxing, boxing out there. Man, listen, that <laughs> boy looked the same saying? at the beginning of the fight, at the end of the fight. Listen, it was some fence. No, I did not. Nah, I stopped nine. Okay. Nah, stop twelve rounds. Ten, ten, ten. It stopped oh, at the ten. Right, okay. Okay. Listen, I was outside. Listen, I, I I did a little boxing back in my day, Paul. I need to get back in it, right? But Crawford was it was one of those master classes. Master I'm not classes, gonna, I'm yes. Not gonna yeah. lie. Pure dominance. I was shocked that uh, I, I went into it giving the edge to Errol Spence because mm -hmm. that's how big of a fight this was. Mm -hmm. Like both of them I had people who telling me, bro, I don't know who I'm gonna pick. Yeah, bro. But the way it ended, it was like Spence shouldn't have been in that fucking ring, yeah, bro. Spence had a, he got a re when I, he got a regroup, bro. When I saw when I saw the lines for the fight, when I saw it was they, real close. No, they had they had Spence, when I the one I seen them. They had Spence plus one twenty three. They had Crawford minus one one fifty. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, oh, okay. the bet. When I, saw I was that, looking at the parlay. I was looking like Yo. when I saw that, I was like, Vegas knows something we don't know. Well, yeah. a lot, they know something that the casual boxing fans don't know. Nice. And they don't they don't trust they don't trust Arrow. Yeah, that's what I. That's what that's I what damn sure when it's half. I like, bro, and you know they got a rematch clause. He is gonna use it. Yeah, but of course. But he need to re. Know. He got to regroup. Them eyes will be completely different come the next one. Man, by the by by round by round seven, if you wanted to do a live bet, Crawford was like minus eight thousand. You couldn't. You probably wasn't gonna make it. Was. He wasn't gonna, gonna make shit. He wasn't gonna make shit. He landed fifty percent of his his punches, bro. And sixty percent of his power. That's unheard of. Listen, you posted this thirty-eight percent, twenty-eight percent. It's dice. You he good. Beat, he beat Brass. Like, like, and he beat was it wasn't right. getting touched. And even if he did, like I saw on the slow mo for the uppercut, Arrow hit him right here. Yeah. But it was like he didn't even feel that shit. Because he already hit him with the jab that the, he the been counter. hitting him with the whole time. He hit him with the counter. And Arrow so, Spence never seen no shit like that, man, bro. Man, bro. Footwork and everything. This is the. It really was because it was like one two, poo, poo. and one, everything. Two. Arrow was trying. It was like he wasn't getting through. Wasn't it was like he he hit him with some certain shit, but it wasn't effective as. Like the jabs was really yeah, doing jabs, him in, yeah. Yeah. and then if he got hit with a counter, it was he was getting knocked down. He got knocked down in the second. Yeah, so I'm thinking, all right, cool. Like I wasn't really tripping, mm -hmm. bro. Them knockdowns in the seventh and the ninth, yeah, ugly. The seventh one, he, he, he would already start breaking them down. He would start breaking them yeah, down exactly. from that. From yeah, that from it was the, good. the fifth round, he started bleeding from the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so good. it was like, yeah, damn, Arrow. Like, I never seen Arrow Spence look like that. Yeah, he was red in there, but the whole time, Bud looked untouched the whole looked time. Untouched, man. But shout out to him, man. He's definitely pound for pound. He came out of Eminem. That's why I was like Floyd wouldn't win. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I, it was like a list of like who wouldn't. But I want to see um, um, Shakir and Sun fight. Um, yeah, I want to see them. Oh, Shakur and Haney. Yeah, 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 I want to yeah, see them yeah, two yeah, niggas yeah, fight. Yeah. They had a video. Of That's them, overdue. They had yeah. a video of them two niggas in the club the other night. Oh, okay. And the niggas sent the he sent the bottles out. He was like, yo, sign the paperwork. Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> I'm All like, right. who who you think will win that? I ain't even gonna lie. I think Devin Haney will win. No way. 
I might, I might have to go Shakur. I might go Shakur on the edge. I'm, I'm gonna go underdog. After the last fight, bro, I'm gonna secure man Haney. Hey, listen, man, you got made me nervous, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah. Secure, hey, Shakur. Shakur's a dog. It's a dog, man. Listen, I, ugh. listen. Hey, again, shout out to Terrence, uh, Terrence Crawford. I've been watching nice. the All Access, and his confidence is something that I respect a lot. I'm big on you being confident in your craft, and, and he said it. He yeah. said, "No, he gonna leave this fight." That hurt. HBO all, all access shit. That shit make you like really look into the fighter. Like, all right, yeah. Like, and he's just very confident. He never and wavered, and he's just hit. Like he's steadfast and like proving a point. Like even when I watch him on Gillian Wallow, same tone. No, he's gonna him. leave this shit. Like y'all gonna see. Y'all gonna see. He kept saying it. Y'all gonna see. What's Errol, his record right now? He undefeated. He's thirty. He would be thirty nine and zero. Yeah. Damn. So this is Errol's first loss. Yeah. So yeah. even even in his press conference when he was engaging with the crowd, like. Y'all, this is sure. what y'all really want. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. He told him, he's like, "Hey, bro, like both our families, you know, if it get there, it could be some losses. <laughs> so just you vote, you 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 cheer for your fighter. Yeah, they will cheer for me, and we gonna have a great show. And like <laughs> Terrence was very, I don't see nobody. I think he can, and he's thirty six. Yeah. He can fight well into his forties, bro. Like he's like dog. This is technically like his prime at thirty six. That's unhurt. Like you said, fifty percent." Yeah. Sixty percent power punches. Like I think he can retire around that 47, 48 and no mark. Like Floyd, he's fifty. You and think no. he got that many fights left in him? I think he does. He bro. Only, he and this at this shape, and that's what yeah. doing two fights a year. So that'll be what five more years. He's thirty nine. He's thirty nine and no, bro. So I think he could type the 45, 46 and no, bro. Damn. That was a fucking clinic, bro. <laughs> yeah. That was a fucking clinic. Wow, I ain't never seen no shit like that. He took some. He took him to bed. So, um, uh, what's your what what, what kind of future goals y'all got to set for Holy City, man? Before we get up out of here, man. Uh, anything y'all want to touch on? Any if you can't if you can't speak on some things if you can't, but just in terms um, of you know conversations y'all might have had about how you trying to push a brand forward. I think so. Most like we have this conversation probably every few months. Like, bro, we gotta we gotta get to it because uh, it's different if we was pushing some shit that people didn't fuck with. It's completely different. Like if you, if That's you, you gotta have the realization. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We gotta like, change the tide. Exactly. Like you know, people. We just putting this shit out. People not fucking with it. But it's never not a time that we have shit, bro, and we don't sell it or sell out. So that be like the underlying factor. Like damn, bro. Like we gotta keep going. You know what I'm saying? It's like you I can't. Think y'all had one of them pieces. I had one of the cop or something, and it, and it, it moved quick though. I mean, I think the same day y'all promo that shit. That shit was gone. I was like, God damn, yeah, I wanted yeah. that shit. That shit went fast was it the, as a bitch. Was it the Hornets shirt? No, it was something green. It was something cold. green. It was it was a it, it was something green. I, I know Are I wanted to get it. Was it, green I, it was it was it was, a, it was a piece for sure. It was a clothing piece for sure. Nah, just you know, just going like he said, just uh going full time with it instead of part time. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing, like not treating it as a side hustle. We kind of was treating it like a, a side hustle to be honest. Like we make money on it, we good, we make we split the bread. And then we cool. And then we not really paying attention. If we need to make bread, we gonna put out these pieces and do it. But now moving forward, like in the future, like uh, uh, looking for a stable flagship store, and then this more consistency, um, just dropping and having more collections. Um, we got a few collections. Um, we got like shirts on the way right now. We got uh, summer sets on the way, and then we really getting ready for winter. Our biggest piece is always the winter time. That's we got uh, sweatsuits going. We got the good hoodies, and we working on this jacket right now. Um, those are you know. Working on that right now, just to, in the future, just a flagship and just going full time with it. Got you, got you, man, got you. Um, Mo, you got anything else for these guys, man? Hey, man, we pretty much touched on everything, man. Pause, but yeah, for sure. Man, man. I just want to say shout out to y'all, man. Thank you for the opportunity. No problem, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate y'all. Coming um, we've through, been man. talking about this shit for the longest. Like every time I come down, I'm like, Yo, TC, we. Got, but it's really rare that me and him are here at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it really is. is. That's what it really be. That's is. what mainly what it is. We're never here at the same time. So yeah, because I, just... I remember you had DM me early in the week yeah, about, and I didn't hear from. I was like, well, we'll probably do it some other time. And then Mo yeah. told me this one. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even know. I didn't even no, know y'all was coming. Because right, no, I hit, I hit he, Mo last he night. Yeah, me yeah, and yesterday, actually, and I was like, I mean, I'm gonna play it by ear because I know you say y'all had to, y'all had to get on the same page. That's why I sent it to them too earlier. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. I didn't even when I was here by myself. I think that was Monday you hit me. I hit him was like, he didn't know he was He didn't even know I was coming yet. Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't okay, even okay. buy my flight gotcha. until like Wednesday. Gotcha. I was like, I was by myself, but I was like, we need to be a gang. So I was like, nah, facts. I'm, um, 
I could do it by myself, but it needed to be both of us. So we just got on the same page. I hit you. I was like, he was like, Sunday's 10. I was like, damn, 10 a.m. I was like, let me hit my man, see when he's going to be on. And mm -hmm. he was kind of like, wasn't sure yet. But then when he was like, he's officially coming out, I was like, yeah, let's go. Because I'm leaving. Nah, it's so later. funny. I night. told this nigga TC, because um, one time I was down here and uh, I hit Reggie. Yeah. I was like, yo, bro, I'm trying to pull up. And um, I, I don't think he hit, he didn't hit me back until like it was over. And I told TC, I was like, damn. You think niggas ain't want me to pull up? Nah. Like, <laughs> and I was, nah, like, I was, I was like, like, I was like, you think niggas ain't want me to pull up, bro? But I'm like, nah. nah. I was like, I was like, nah. I know how to be, especially if they got a certain. Time but nah, like I said, I love this shit, man. Like, I've never held a mic and spoke. Nah, we want to. You know, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. bro, between of us, like, we got a lot of information, a lot of, a lot of history. Of you know what I'm saying? A lot of knowledge. So like I said, I just appreciate this. Chance to get us on here, man. Hopefully, it's not the last time that we oh, here. Sure, you know man. what I'm saying? Hopefully, nah, nah, we got some. Nah, nah, like, once we, we done, we done did it. Now, see, I know we're coming back. Like, yeah, man. So, um, shit. Hopefully, we can do this shit soon, man. And um, shit. Everybody watching, man. Be on the lookout, man. We we still working. We not gonna yeah, stop. Yeah. It's a marathon, man. Yeah, man. It's a marathon. Marathon. We'll continue. Look out, man. Holy City. It's your boy TC, man. You know what it is. We here. Let the people would um know where they can shop at. Uh, check us out, man. On Instagram, it's Holy City Shop, H O L Y S H I P. Excuse me, S H O P. I'm I'm messing up, bro. My fault. It's Holy City Shop, H O L Y C I T Y S H O P. Yeah, edit that out, man. Yeah, edit that out. <laughs> I, I fucked up, man. Holy City Shop at all social media. Yeah, all man, platform. check us out. And then the website is Holy City dot shop. You go right there. We got just a hat that's on there right now. But like I said, in a week we about to drop this T-shirt. A few t-shirts and then the end of the month we have a collection and then in september we got a whole pop-up coming with you know the uh the fall winter line so look out for that i want to say this too like if it's anybody out there if y'all go to, outside of 10 like i said we really don't we usually don't have everything up on the website but if it's something that we have before something that you want you could always reach out to us and if you know what i'm saying if we can make it for you we'll even go ahead and do that for yeah, you yeah, possible yeah. you know DM what i'm saying us, dms is open DMs is open. That's for everything closed. That's how we get most of our sales through DMs, bro. For real, for real. <laughs> nah, that's a bad man. That's a bad man. But yeah, man. Shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for the opportunity. No problem, yeah, no, yeah, no big up, big up. Definitely do some. Long overdue, man. I'm glad we got y'all on here finally, man. Respect, yeah. yes, sir. It's a lot of free game on here. A lot of you know, a lot of layers of conversations on here, man. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I go back with these dudes. I go Facts. back with Drew. Like we just, it's it's crazy between. Just drew y'all. We we, uh, we had JT come on sometime. Like it's a lot of history, mm -hmm. just from the city that be coming through here. Nah, so real, it's real, like bro. you know, for real, for real. You that know, that has always... a blueprint of the city. Yeah, you know what I'm nah, saying for sure. the like, city. We, we the... all are like integral pieces to like you know what be like, shit that's real. shit that's happening. Trends, all kind of shit, man. Like oh. we can we can talk all day about all type of shit. But yeah, like. We can talk about it all. Trends, the waves, <laughs> a lot of things in Carolina. Club scenes, trust me, my man Drew is a legend. Yeah, like, <laughs> and, I mean, and, and, and the Drew, club party I mean, scene. Drew don't pop his shit listen, enough, yo, too. Listen, like, yeah, listen, that's all like that, too. It's like history stories about this nigga. You just know this nigga had four kegs, a lot of liquor bitches. I'm like, yo, you know, I'm like, yo, I, I, I just met this nigga hey, from that. Who's the last name Dash, man? That's what you're supposed to get down. Man, I had my Thanks. first memory of Drew, I think, was... If it wasn't Purple Tree, I think it was Purple Tree. That was like my first memory of it. If I could feel like, I think it was Purple Tree because, like, you know, at Purple Tree, at that point in time when Purple Tree was open, they wasn't just letting nobody in there. At so all. we was cool with like Josh, LA, like the GFC niggas yeah. and all of them niggas. So them niggas used to get us up in there. But uh, I think that's the first time I like started seeing you. I can't remember if. Purple Tree was after Titanic or before Titanic? It was around the same time. It was, it was, after, same time. It was after Titanic. It was after yeah. Titanic. Okay, so Titanic is my first okay, like yeah, place yeah, like yeah. being, I think, like seeing you because before that- It was, like, two, it was two can, then we went to Purple Tree, uh, no, Titanic, and yeah. then we went to Purple, Purple Tree, Tree, and then we went to- uh, that's, well, the, that's the big three, man. That was yeah, the big man. three. That was yeah. the era too, bro. I'm not yeah. even going to lie. It was like- one thing I always I, I always tell them, like, bro, like, I wish Charleston was a city to where, like, you know what I'm saying? When you come back home, you know you could go somewhere and you're going to see everybody from the city in that spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't got nothing like that, bro. This is like, that shit depressing. I'll be like, yo, when I come home, like, I'm the type of person, when I come home, I try to reach out to everybody, bro. Yeah. Like, I try to, you know, everybody's not in the same positions, but, like, everybody know, like, I'm pulling up with niggas just to holler at them yeah. in five minutes. Just like, bro, I just pulled up to come see you. 
So like even going out here to the clubs and shit like that, it's like you run into people, but it's just like I don't know. Something in Charleston has to shift. I don't even know what it is. Like something has to shift here. For... It has to get back to being fun. Yeah, that's and this it it's is. just yeah. really it was fun then. Like it we was had fun a good. Then, you be fly. You have a good time. You drink drinks. You take something if you want home. And boom, That's you know it, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. On to the next week, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not a whole like, I mean, yeah, it was the rah rah. Yeah, niggas got the shit backing in the club and shit like that. But it was still more of like, really, it was a fun time yeah. in Charleston. Like, bro, I can really. It, it got back to the fun after the rah rah. Right. Right. I feel like I can remember like how I only seen one fight in Purple Tree. <laughs> and that was when Sad was fighting yeah, um, yeah, them yeah, niggas yeah, from, yeah. from fucking yeah, James yeah. Island. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I ever seen a fight in Ten Ten in Titanic or any of the other clubs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was just coming out. That's when niggas was dancing with bitches. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it wasn't like niggas leaving parties full drenched in sweat. Like, niggas not coming in there. Like, oh, standing outside. Like, when I was here like two or three weeks ago, bro, I pulled up with my man to Posh. Like, we didn't even get to go in. Y'all didn't get in Posh? That's supposed to be niggas, tight. Niggas started fighting outside. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Niggas started fighting yeah. outside. One of the niggas fighting had a strap on, the strap hits the ground. It's type of, it's type of, I'm yeah, like, bro, let's yeah, just get the yeah. fuck out of here, bro. Like, it's not even That's crazy. worth this shit. We, we was about to try to go in again. A nigga come gets thrown out the door. He's bloody. I'm like, bro, it's 1230. <laughs> like, it's 12, like, bro, in Atlanta, you don't see no fights in the yeah. clubs, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like... Cause then it's a little difference too, because like mainly when you go to the club, you're with your friends, you're with your group of people right. versus just being in a mix. You know what I'm saying? But that just lets me know like shit just ain't changed here like that. If niggas still want to come outside, fight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be arguing inside the spot and do all of that. Like some shit got to change, man. But I, I hope to see Charleston level up, man, and, and see some great things come up out of here, man. I definitely so, think man. it will happen eventually, but oh, yeah. that's that's in time, you know, yeah, time. in time. Yeah. But yeah, man. So you know, we're gonna get up out of here, man. Once again, man, I just wanna shout y'all out for Big Up Holy City, man, in you know, the building. Big Up Holy yeah. City, Chris and TC, man. No. Shouts out to everybody doing their thing around the way in the city, the Charleston, beautiful city, man, doing their thing. It's a good summer going on so far. And you know, like we say every episode, man, you hear anything on here that gets you in your feelings, you feel this type of way, always remember. We're just some messages. We out. Hey. <laughs>